Welcome to the live broadcast of the 55th annual Republic Bank sponsored intersecondary school games. We're coming to you live from the Karani James Athletic Stadium in St. George's. 25 schools in competition, including for the first time the Gateway Christian Academy. There is also the inclusion of two new events, the Heptathlon and the Octathlon. Uh, it's going to be exciting three days of events, keen rivalry on the tracks. The defending champions are the Grenada Boys Secondary Schools in, and the St. Joseph's Convent, Grenville. Who will it be in 2023? Well, we have a team of competent commentators and so to bring you all the action on the field and on the track. And on that note, I would like to turn you over to our commentary team. All right, well, thank you very much, sherri and thank you very much again to all the viewers. And, uh, well, they say records were made to be broken, and I have absolutely no doubt that a few records will be trashed over the next 72 hours. Uh, we're looking forward to what will possibly be one of the greatest intercall games that will, and it will go down in history. All right, uh, we witnessed a few of these memorable moments, moments who a lot, f a lot of folks would tell you that this journey would be a journey that would have been etched in history and will continue to be etched in history. The glory days of folks like Brian Pitt at Pencil Reddit, George Goatee Robinson, Eugene Licorice, Jeffrey Neptune, Leon Dakota, Dave Antoine, Dylan Oliver, Robbie Celestine, um, Big George and Trevor Modest, Sean Lambert, Josh Botang, Rondell Bartholomew, Ali McIntyre, Hayes Land Regis, uh, Rhonda Henry, and the list goes on. Also the gateway to some of our international superstars. They would have walked through these gates here, the Intercall Games, Kirani James, Lyndon Victor, uh, Dylan Felix, Arlene Francique, Anderson Peters. A journey for them which no doubt they will remember. Here we are, as Sherry Ann said, as the 55th secondary school games, intercall games, powered by Republic Bank. Um, we've got the national anthem being ready to be played, so we're going to pay some national pride, and then we're going to come back and bring you all up to speed with everything that's intercall and more. Let the games begin. What? what? Well, on a day that uh, our meteorological office has predicted that we will have some mixed weather patterns, uh, we should be maxing out to a high 20, dropping to um, low 20s uh, later on this evening. Uh, with me this morning is Antoine, John Antoine. And uh, Antoine, good morning. My name is Jason Skeet. It's a pleasure to have you with us. And uh, welcome to 55th Intercall, Republic Bank Intercall Games 2023. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. And it's Bernard. Bernard. But Bernard the, Antoine. the John is okay. If there's one thing that we can tell you here as we start, it's a beautiful day. The, the weather is just fine. It's, it's, and the setting is all there prepared for a good intercall 2023. And one of the things that we'll be expecting, um, right throughout the season with the mini meets and so forth, we have seen some rather sterling performances. And the rest period, if you want to call it that, the two years of inactivity and the four years of of uh, some sort of a hybrid or um, sporting events here and there, nothing properly organized. But for the first time in, in quite a while, we are back to intercall as we know it. Yeah, you, you mentioned the weather, but uh, wha what do you think would be some of the possible outcomes? Because um, with uh, the, the weather being predicted to be um, generally overcast for most of the day, and we had some rains over the last few hours, um, very late last night and the early hours of this morning. Um, how do you think that's going to affect stuff, especially out in the field when it comes to the field events? The, it depends on the field events. Rain definitely would impact the jumping, all the jumping events. And to a certain extent, the winds will affect positive or negative. The javelin, for example. The, you do have some... If the rain is heavy, 
you would have some you would have some issues with the short put and the gripping of the of the discus itself. But for the persons on the track, the 1500 meters, which is scheduled for later, they don't mind the rain at all. Yeah, they well don't mind the cool weather. Mm. And that, that of course, could not, not just the 1500, but uh, some of the sprint events. Because earlier on, on the first day, we were looking at a couple of uh, qualifying events for the 400 meters. Uh, uh, some junior boys, some junior girls. That, that too, um, should really aid them. This kind of weather condition should really aid them. Uh, definitely. And uh, just to bring you up to speed, um, for the morning session, we have 17. That is one seven. We have 17 events. 11 of those events are finals. And in the, after the six preliminaries, and all the prelim preliminary events in, in, in the morning session at the 400 meters, 400 meters sub junior boys, sub junior girls, 400 meters um, junior boys, senior boys, senior girls, and junior boys and junior girls. So that's the morning session. And for the afternoon session, we have twi 23 events, all finals. Wow. We are in for a remarkable afternoon. No more, can you say, day one and day two is mediocrity, and then we'll go to day three for the big hullabaloo. That is not going to happen. Every day is like a final. Every day. Um, the defending champions and the boys, the Grenada Boys Secondary School, um, have you had any opportunity to see them as they prepare, um, look at them at their annual sports meet, and what are your predictions for their, of their performance that we can expect? I did. I, I did. In fact, um, viewed all the schools. One thing that seems to be a constant theme this year, there are no clear favorites. There are no clear favorites in any event. And South City Rising Stars, which is a club that is closely affiliated with the GBSS, they have had a stellar year. A lot of the athletes have done quite well. So one would expect the GBSS to do quite well in 2023 also. But again, in times past, you could have predicted who was going to win event number one, event number two, not this year. All right. Um, now, let's take a quick look at some of their rivals because you mentioned that, uh, you know, the GBS has been associated with the South City Rising Stars. Um, when you look at, because you would have had the opportunity to visit all the secondary schools or most of them at their sports meet, who do you think that uh, would be occupying the, the, the top bundle, not to give anybody the opportunity to say that they're a clear, fav clear favorite, but who do you think would be occupying that top bundle of, of, of schools right there? Let's say the top five. The top five. Mm -hmm. Male. Male. GBSS. SAS. PBC. Looking for McDonald College this year. Looking for McDonald College. And uh, the Dark Horse Surprisingly, in the sprint events this year, but I predict with pass through St. David's. All right. Um, the so defending cha these are your five. The defending champions, the Gil St. Joseph's Convent, Grenville, they came through like a bullet last year, like li li last into call season, I should say, like a rocket, and it shocked mostly everybody. And um, what do you think of their chances this year? Have you had the opportunity to see them, and how do you think they look? Again, the all the schools... What you can say, what, what, we, what we have noticed with all the schools this year, that the schools that are affiliated, especially closely affiliated with the clubs, they are well prepared. They are well coached. And just like the boys, I don't think they're any clear favorites. But they are one or two real standout athletes this year. Name them quickly. Well, I can say for one, Shafona. And let me give you a quick, a quick rundown of that young lady. Um, she represents Anakin High School, and she's affi affiliated with the South City Rising Star. 12.28 uh, seconds in the 100 meters. 24.68 in the 200 meters. 56.43, that's a good time, in the 400 meters. And in 800 meters, 2 minutes and 21.57 seconds. Long jump, five. that's a complete athlete. Right. And we should hear, as the day progresses, as the, the, the integral progresses, we should hear something about Shafana. 
All right, well, she seems to be participating in mostly all the events, especially the sprint events. Uh, we're going to get into the details of that as we go through the course of the day because many folks will tell you that uh, sometimes when you get to a certain point in your career, you want to be able to zero in and identify a two or three and not, and not stretch yourself too thin. Absolutely, especially with the... the she has some grilling events. The 200, 400, 800... These are serious <laughs> events <laughs> that are really, really, really taxing. So one would expect as 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 the as the time progresses. In fact, Shafona is also one of our our selectees on the Carifta team this year. Okay. Um twenty five schools competing, one new school coming into the play this year, the Gateway Christian Academy. Uh you had any opportunity to visit them and see what they, they, they look like? Unfortunately I did not I, I did not um I, I did not look at Gateway's uh, um, sporting event this year. What I can tell you, though, some of the athletes, again, are affiliated with clubs. The club's structure in Grenada is growing. Right. And with that, the, f the filtering to the schools from the clubs have l sort of a level of playing field in a lot. So one expects a bit of... We should see, we should see Gateway themselves today, maybe not in a, in a sense of winning, even that could be a surprise, but not in a sense of winning, but representing themselves quite well. All right. Thank you very much, Bernard Antoine. Uh, myself and Bernard Antoine will be here for the next few hours taking you through the Intercall broadcast. Good morning to all our friends right around the world. Uh, friends enjoying the pay-per-view broadcast. It is the first time that there's a pay-per-view broadcast for the Intercall Games. Not the first syndicated broadcast, but the first time for a pay-per-view broadcast. Uh, we'd like to say a very special thanks to our sponsors of Intercall 2023 and um, our, our sponsors for a while, actually, the Republic Bank, Republic Bank Grenada Limited. Also, good morning to our friends at TNR Communications. They've been working exceptionally hard to bring to you the kind of quality and standard that you're going to experience for the next 72 hours here at into call 55 into call 55 in the year 2023 all right my name is jason skeet bernard antoine is with me we are going to be joined as we go through the next couple of days we've got joseph cador uh leslie smith is going to be joining us and a whole host of others uh, so make no mistake about it there will be a packed uh, commentary booth for you and uh, as we go through the couple of days we're going to be speaking with a couple of officials and of course ministry officials government officials uh, sporting officials um, we're going to be chatting with them as we go through the course of the day now let's take a quick look down on the field and let's see um, we know that the track uh, was repainted a, a few days ago and um, you know a lot of work went into the final preparation for uh, these games in particular specifically knowing that it was going to be a pay-per-view broadcast and uh, the quality had to be stepped up um, let's take a quick look at the track uh, Bernard what are, what are your what are your thoughts traditionally what the athletes would tell you is that this track in here it's a fast one so this is a track that, um, that sprinters love to be on. And one would expect today that we should have some good performances. We should have some. One expects that, quite frankly, um, with the height as in right around track and field, right around the world, we, we would have seen maybe the rest period would have done at least right around the world some good because you, the performances to date have been rather spectacular. And uh, with the fast track, with the weather as it is now, the wind, the wind speed is very low. One expects some good running on the track today. Your concern earlier with the for the field events, um, if the rains would stay away, we think we would not have, we would not have much of a, 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 an impact on what takes place on the track. On, on the field. Yeah. All right. Well, we're hoping for good weather, great weather we're hoping for, actually. And um, according to our friends at the Met Office, as we said earlier on, we're going to max out to uh, um, 30 th 31 degrees, but uh, be it, it's going to feel like about 32, 33. All right. And um, so that's not too sticky with the overcast conditions, um, like a, what, a 50% cloud cover as you go through the course of the day and a 61% chance of rain. So there might be a little drizzle here and there, especially more to the northern side. So that, that, that could be all right um, for down here, basically. 
But um, as, we, as we say, it's, it's going to have some kind of impact as to what we can expect on, on the track and in the field. The, the field is, the, the, again, the concern really in terms of the rain is really for the field events. W they, they have scheduled the, the some of the longer distances. They said in the 1500, the 1500 meters, the 1500 meters today, and whether it, it rains, that's not going to affect. That's not going to affect them much. We expect this morning. We expect this m th this morning that the competition to be quite keen, and we supposed to start with the head. Supposed to start with the head girls this morning. The 100 meters hurdle is open. All right. Well, as you said, uh, yep. a host of events started for today, and 17 of those events in the afternoon will be all finals. Fi all finals. So we're looking forward to what will be a day of uh, storytelling, because no doubt the end of the day today will start to paint the picture of what we can expect over the next couple of days, and it would give sc the schools themselves um, a, a better idea as to what they need to do, how they need to do it, and aid in their, their whole strategy moving forward. Absolutely. Wha what has been rather interesting in the, the development of track and field in grade, we are beginning to see, distinguish ourselves, if you want to call it that, in the multi-events. Uh, uh, um, the, the we, we can think about our Lynn and Victor. And so this, this year, again, they, in the HEP, it's a multi-event, the hurdles, 100 meters, then we have the 200 meters, 800 meters, high jump, long jump, short put, and javelin. You, you are beginning to see more and more schools participate in, in events like this. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, good for, it's good for the sport. All right. Um, Grenada has been placed on the map in, in recent years. Over the last two decades, Grenada has been placed on the map with the emergence of uh, Arlene Francique, uh, Kirani James, Rondell Bartholomew, Lyndon Victor, Kurt Felix, and in more recent times, Anderson Peters, Josh Boateng, of course. Um, so th th the world is really paying close attention to what Grenada has to offer, especially at the premier track and field events, Intercall 2023. Um, what, what do you think scouts are going to be looking for, really? In the past, we, it's arguably, we need an intercall games was rated second only to Champs Jamaica. Mm -hmm. Might be a little bit of bias here, but the product was a good one. And uh, we don't expect anything different in 2023. We more than anything is what we do expect is the competitiveness. All right. Well, uh, competitiveness, there'll be no short of, there'll be no lack of that, I can tell you for sure. All right. Uh, we've got to get some of the, uh, the color schemes, of course, so we could uh, be able to easily identify a lot of these um, schools, a lot of the schools. And uh, 26 schools actually, not 25, 26 schools, 25 plus the new one, 26 new 26 schools uh, participating in Intercall 2023. Um, let's take a quick uh, throwback. Uh, I don't know where sherry Ann is, but we can take a quick throwback to sherry Ann. And sherry Ann, if you're there, you can jump in and uh, let's uh, get some feel as to what's happening down on the ground. You're somewhere down there. You can always uh, jump in and speak with us. Uh, <laughs> Where should we read in and Sherry and with t 26 schools, uh, again, this, this really augurs well. This really augurs well for our school system. It augurs well for our young people. And we, we hope that this, this continues, that the support. And, and again, I cannot, I can, cannot help but go back to the budding um, club st structure that some of which feeds directly from the secondary schools. What are some of the major clubs in, in, in Grenada? I know of uh, Speed Zone and um, there are a couple others, but uh, who are the major ones One that, that has been playing you know, a real significant developmental role in, in, in our athletes? MVP, MVP um, it's, it's a huge club. Um, Albert Joseph. 
Mm -hmm. They one of the new clubs and um, that have really distinct well two new clubs have really distinguished themselves. Fusion. Fusion f feeds um, athletes from primarily from PBC. And the South City Rising Stars, of course, they the long standing clubs like, like St. David's Track Blazers and, and Ace. They are but the, the, you you can see the growth of these new clubs and and what it has the impression it's making in this in the school systems when you finish line actually that's another club that that has been doing quite well recently finish line and finish line in fact um where are they based where was finish line based st george uh, most of the athletes come from st george's convent like, like Fusion, most of Fusion's athletes come from PBC, um, St. Davis Track Blazers, a lot of the athletes that come from the St. Davis area, not just the St. Davis secondary, uh, Catholic Secondary School. And the, the South City Rising Stars, a lot of the athletes there would come from GBSS and Anakin High School. An MVP, they, they, they take athletes from just about anywhere, but again, you have a, a mix of athletes from the, the St. Joseph Convent, um, Anglican High School, and certainly among the, among the female. And that's one, that, those are some of the clubs that have been really distinguishing themselves in, in recent times. And the growth, the growth has been rather, the growth has been rather an interesting thing to see. In fact, you would, Building up to the sport, you would have gone to the to, to one of our premier grounds um, for training and so forth, and it's a, a mass of young people that you, that you will see there. This augurs well for the sports. It's, it says a lot, really. All right. Well, um, we anticipate a great day of uh, track and field and uh, a great day of... Uh, Intercall, grade three days of Intercall Games 2023. All right, um, we've got some uh, uh, a schedule now that would bring us right up to speed with uh, some of the, the events of the day. And uh, the first event of the day that we're going to be looking at, as you said, is the, the girls' 100 meter hurdles open. And Jason, we, we also now equipped with the colors of the school so we can probably go through those to keep our our viewers and listeners um, in tune with what's happening so the Anakin High School traditionally they have been in white they continue to be in white and their competitors number be, would be from a 1 to 70 so numbering from 1 to 70 Anakin High School Beacon High School Royal Blue and Sky Blue and their numbers is seven, 71 that is 71 to 140 and then 141 to 210. Beacon High School in Royal Blue and Sky Blue. Bishop's College coming out of, out of Kericho. Bishop's College in Red and Royal Blue. Red and Royal Blue for Bishop's College. Their number in system will be from 211 to 280 and then 281 to 350. That's Bishop's College, Red and Royal Blue. Boca Secondary School. Boca Secondary School their traditional gray and white, very distinctive. Um, traditional gray and white, Boca Secondary School, numbering 351 to 420 and 421 to 490. One of the newest, well, not one, the newest school in the block, the Gateway Christian Ac Academy Secondary. Gray, and this is an interesting color, baby blue and white. Gray, baby blue and white. And 701 to 7. Seven zero. So seemingly they have a, an interesting um, contingent of, of, of athletes here from seven zero one to seven seven zero. The Greater Boys Secondary School GBSS in the traditional green four nine one to five six zero. You can't really miss them. Miss them really. The Greater Christian Academy, Colombian blue, black. And white, Colombian blue, black and white. Christian, uh, the Christian Greater Christian Academy, then the Greater Seven Day Adventist Comprehensive School, white and green. Grenville Secondary School, the traditional orange and black. Happy Hill Secondary School, you don't, you can't really miss them. Purple and 
white, Hillsborough Secondary School, like a Kerrico, yellow and forest green. Yellow and forest green at Hillsborough Secondary School, like a Kerrico. J.W. Fletcher Catholic Secondary School, orange and purple. McDonald College, McDonald College, maroon and white. Presentation College, royal blue and white. St. Andrews Anglican Secondary School, SAS, navy blue and white. St. David's Catholic Secondary School, red and white. St. John's Christian Secondary School, royal blue and yellow. St. Joseph's Convent Grenville, white and red. St. Joseph's Convent St. George, green and white. St. Mark Secondary School, beige and maroon. St. Rhodes Modern Secondary School, royal blue. St. George's, St. George's Institute, one of the newest schools, turquoise green and black with white and gold. Where's the college? Traditionally yellow. Westerhall Secondary School, the Florence's green, you cannot really miss them. And Westerhall Secondary School, royal blue and white. Yeah. All right, well, thank you there very much, uh, Bernard and Twine. You, you brought us up to speed with all the colors, and uh, as you say, some of them in their traditional colors, obviously, we'd understand why, because uh, you know they've made their mark in those colors, and uh, Nothing would, would, would change, really, um, for them. All right, so um, we are now at a point where we're getting ready to start uh, the events. We will keep you up to speed on that. In the meantime, we just want to remind our viewers that uh, this is a pay-per-view event, so feel free to message somebody and uh, share the link with them. Let them know how they can apply, how they can uh, you know, be a part purchase purchase um, the, the link for the, the Intercall game so they can be right up in on the action. All right, uh, tizic.com, let them know that uh, just go to www.tizic.com uh, and they can order their one-day pass or uh, a three-day season pass, all right? So um, a three-day season pass, things starts at 25 US dollars and then, of course, individual days today, tomorrow, and Thursday, 7, 7, and uh, on the final day, $12 US. So um, those are the quick details. So feel free to share them with uh, your friends and let them know, hey, why not? Check in on the pay-per-view and, uh, you know, support the... Intercore Games 2023, the Republic Bank Intercore Games 2023. There have been a lot of stalwarts who we would have uh, been able to be a see, to see, to see, to enjoy over the years of Intercore. And uh, my mind goes back to one of the stalwart officials of these games, always colorful. He transitioned uh, about, uh, about two years ago, I think. Always colorful, always exciting. Um, you know, um, very energetic. Um, you, you can see him at, at, at the starters list with, with, with his pistol. You, 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 can, you can feel his energy from miles away. We're speaking of no other person than that uh, famous Chuns. Remember, you remember Chuns? He, uh, if you were in into any area of track and field, you must know Chunks. In fact, everybody does. And it, it's, 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 he has, he had become one of the stables in track and field in Grenada. And uh, mm -hmm. when you look around and you don't see guys like that anymore, y you miss them. In events like this, you miss them. Because you would know once they're here, things are happening. Once they're here, things are not just happening. Mm -hmm. He was passionate, as you said, Jason. He was passionate in what he did. He enjoyed what he did, and uh, it was demonstrated in how he brought this out. How he brought this out, it, it was demonstrated in all that he did. We have some good young officials coming up, and they would do well if they take a page or two from Jones. All right, well, may his soul rest in peace, and may, may he his rise soul rest in peace. And may he rise in glory. We are getting ready for some action, ladies and gentlemen, so not too long from now, we should, we should see some action. We just want to remind you again that this is Intercall 2023, come over the kind compliments of the Republic Bank. Uh, we are at s the Karani, Karani Track and Field Stadium and in St. George, Grenada. 
And for our morning session, just to repeat, if you're just joining us, for our morning session, we have 17 events, 17 events. 11 of those events are finals. And we have six preliminary events, all in 400 meters. But for the afternoon session, there will be all finals, 23 events on, on the afternoon session. We are in for a long afternoon of track and field. So wherever you are, we want to welcome you. We want to welcome you to the sights and sounds of Intercult 2023 from the Karani James Stadium in St. George, Grenada. Jason? All right. Well, we'll be also having the uh, female long jump junior as the finals, the male short put, a couple of finals events, the, the female discus throw, the male high jump, and uh, the female heptathlon, um, hip hip uh, 100 meter hurdles open finals. The, uh, uh, we've also got the 400 meter dash, uh, the preliminaries in the 400 meters dash for male, female, junior, senior, and the sub junior. So those are some events there, um, you know, some preliminary events. And uh, the 400 meters, the finals are going to be this afternoon this as well. This afternoon. So um, th th this, this day one I is going to shape up into some level of excitement as we go into the afternoon. But more so, um, these preliminaries, especially for the 400 meters, they're going to paint a story because um, everybody now is looking at Grenada as the, 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 the catalyst for 400 meter athletes we have distinguished ourselves rightfully so we, sh we should be recognized as the 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 400 meters stable if you were to call it that in, in fact um, a lot of our athletes have, have have begun to take to these middle distance events and distinguish themselves and distinguish themselves mm -hmm. the the period the with the morning period and the preliminaries, there's sufficient rest time for the athletes to come back in the afternoon, Jason, to do the, to do the finals. Mm -hmm. We expect the junior 400 to be extremely competitive. And if you were to ask around the, the people in the know for this year, 2023, where is your money? Where is uh, who will walk away with the 400 meters senior? It's up for grabs. This has been a competitive season <laughs> among the seniors that we have, both in the 100, in the, in, well, not both, but in the 100, 200, and in the 400. But so we think that all of these 400 meters, especially the under 17 boys and under seven and seniors boys. It should be extremely competitive. But they, 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 as you said, a picture would be painted early in the preliminaries. Let's see what's happened. Let's see what happens there. Um, in the afternoon session, we're also looking at um, the, a couple of finals events, as you mentioned. Uh, the male long jump, the, 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 the female javelin throw, uh, the female high jump, um, the 60-meter special invitational for sub-junior boys and uh, the 1500 meter run for sub junior boys 1500 meter for junior and senior so um th th those some of those final events in into the afternoon period also the, the high jump for the senior and sub junior boys and the, the short put for the junior boys all those finals are going to be um decided this afternoon on day one don't miss day one it's it traditionally it, it a person would have thought that day one was a day, uh, day for preliminaries only. Not this year. Yeah. I know, Jason, um, we have two s special races in t today. And for the organizers, the, the really hats have to go off for the organizers. Two 60 meters, special limitation, sub-junior, special limitation for both male and female. And uh, that's a nice touch. That's um, that's a that, that's a that's a really nice touch to include um to, to include athletes who are not able bodied fully able able bodied to have an event with a showcase like this and a stage like this. This is good thinking. Yeah, well, Paralympics is uh, the next big thing, and so this would be the perfect stage for them at the the recently held um, annual sports awards a few months ago. Um, a, a lot was made of the, the athletes that represented Grenada at the Paralympics 
and um you know so I, I'm, I'm quite sure that a lot of folks will be looking forward to that and ev even the folks involved in the, the whole preparation of the paralympics and all of that they too will have their eyes set on uh, the 60 meter dash for male and female yeah, very much so. in fact um, during the the, the greater nationals they also have an had a nice piece carved out for para um, para athletes to perform there and, and they did with distinction and very 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 popular events with the, with, with, with the crowds and again I, I i like this touch i think this is a th this is a really good thing to to have in an ev event like this well, we were scheduled for a, a 9 o'clock start. It is now uh, bordering on 5 minutes before 10. And uh, we have not seen any definitive action on the track as it relates to an event getting started. But uh, no doubt, I'm quite sure that uh, they are working on that. But in the meantime, um, the long jump junior girls, the short put sub junior boys, and the discus for senior girls, um, those are some of the events that will uh, throw off the morning session on day one um a any any particular um athlete from any particular school you think that you're looking at uh, because you've seen them it's there is a very interesting athlete um st joseph convent in fact she dominated the, um the 400 meters in st joseph convent so so that should be a, a good clash with um, when her time comes around with with the athlete from the names escape me now with the athlete from St David's Catholic Secondary School, but there were two outstanding athletes in in, in the 400 meters, and that should be a good rivalry. And let's see what let's see what that that brings there. Similarly, the 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 400 meters senior boys. Now traditionally, we. We did not have as competitive um, uh, as we are seeing this year amongst the seniors because there were so few and far in between. But somehow this year, we have a very competitive uh, crop of senior athletes. And this really says something to us. And, and, and hopefully, hopefully, the we could get a taste of what our Carifta team would look like because the number of these guys that would be on showcase today, they, they would be forming part of our Carifta team. And we, we, we have a 4 by 400 meters male uh, in, the, in the Carifta team on the 20. So th this, this would be, they would be on show today. All right. Um, let, let's, let's look at the, um, the long jump junior girls the long jump junior girls a record that has been standing since 1994 by mary claire mitchell of st joseph's convent grenville 5.58 meters now um 5.58 meters now th that's that's some distance for uh, uh long jump junior girls and uh, the record established way back in 1994 you see that going down today not today <laughs> not, <laughs> not, not today but the we we have to recognize where our limitations are. The they are not sufficient, in, in, in my opinion, um, jumping pits ar around the, around the island. And, and so, if you are in St. George, for example, and you are you are jumping athlete and you want to do a long jump, you would have to come to the stadium here. Uh, whereas um, in the not too distant past, there, there, were, there, were, there was a jumping pit or a jumping area in the Tantine area that one could have used. Right. So th that 5.58 meters, that's a, that's, a significant, that's a significant distance. That's not going to go down today. All right. Bernard thinks it's going to hold up. Talk to me about uh, the short put sub junior boys because this record was established not too long ago 2016 uh, trent simon from the grenada boys secondary school 15.42 meters um what, what are your thoughts on that A again 15.42 meters um, 2016 i i am not seeing this to be on the any threat to it either have, have you seen any of the um wh what do you take of who, who do you you know have you seen any of the short put athletes um, I at, at some of the sports and, w and what are your what, what's, what's your takeaway from them 
I followed the shot put this, this season. Um, they created nationals. And at this level, the distance were not in this ballpark. All right. Not just yet. <laughs> um, another long holding record, 1996, by Kathy Hopkin of St. Joseph's Convent, St. Andrew, in the Discus Senior Girls. I, I, um, I, I wish I can be surprised. 36.64 meters. Jason, I wish I can be surprised. But I think that's another safe one. Let's hope that we, we get some surprises today and, and some athletes dig deep and, 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 and erase these records as it were. But 36.64 meters, there's a reason why it's still standing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that, that, that particular discus had a rocket attached to it. All right. Um, high jump sub-junior boys. Um, Jason Alexander, who uh, attended the PBC, he... Uh, established that record back in 2014, uh, 1.77 meters. Uh, you, you think that's gettable on a day like today? Not at the sub-junior level. In fact, um, some of our junior athletes, uh, this is the ballpark they're running, not at the junior level, 1.77 at sub-junior level. That is safe. Okay. I, I, I wish somebody surprises us today. Um, you, you're calling a lot of these records safe. Um, wh what, what has changed? Because um, you, you would think that um, you know, this would be the benchmark for a lot of the athletes so that uh, they would aspire to get to that. And uh, wh when you start to call it safe, even after, in most cases, 20, 25 years, um, wh what's your takeaway from something like this? It depends. It depends on the, the, the event. Um, the field events in particular uh, from my vantage point they were they were save and accept the, 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 the traveling which 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 um St. David's track blazers uh, distinguished themselves in the, the training methods and, and all that on the coach Paul the the field events the equipment the facilities does not lend itself for, for regular practice as, say, the events on the track. However, I think that there are a few track events, the records in a few track events may be under threat today, Jason. All right. Well, you're anticipating records that the track events will be broken, but uh, the field events, well, that's telling a, ho a whole different story, really. Um, Jonathan Jeremiah... The Discus Sub Junior Boys, a record established back in 2015, 39.32 meters. You, you would think that's, that's safe as well? It's, um, yeah, 39.32 for uh, Johan Jeremiah, actually. Johan Jeremiah, record established back in 2015. Johan Jeremiah. It, uh, would take, it would take much for that record to be broken today. All right. Uh, the possibility of anybody in the 100 meters running uh, 10 or under 10, be, uh, even up to the senior level? Under 10, not today. But good low 10s, one expect. In the th there, there, is a young, there is a young athlete. Um, let's see if I get his name here. There's a young athlete from the GBSS in the 100 meters. The... It's uh, he'll be juniors. The name would come and we will come back to that. I expect this this young man to distinguish himself. One or two of the the, the, the records could be on the track today. All right. Well, let's wait and see how that goes. Uh, we're nearing ten o'clock this morning, and uh, of course we've got a quick break to take. We're going to take that in a minute or two, and then of course we're going to come back and uh, try to get things started here at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium. It's Intercall 2023, the 55th uh, Republic Bank-sponsored Intercall 2023 at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium in the beautiful Spice Country, Grenada. And uh, for, those of you, uh, for those of you visiting Grenada, uh, please feel free to join us down at the National Stadium because this is where the action is going to be for the next couple of days. Uh, we have made contact with Sherry Ann Noel. Sherry Ann Noel is down on the field. Sherry Ann, uh, let's uh, throw it over to you. 
Thank you very much, Jason. We are here with the coach of the Presentation Brothers College, Lloyd and Kato. Um, Kato, you're here with your team. It's, it's day one of three. Um, we've been seeing the performances of some of your athletes during the recently held National Champs. And so um, speak to us about the crop of athletes that you've brought to the Intercall Games in 2023. Uh, first of all, let me say how exciting I am to be here at the Games this year. Uh, coming back to three days, it's, it's really exciting. Uh, we've been preparing for this uh, at least a year ago. We've been building a program at the college whereby we could get athletes that would be coming. I believe that's our goal this year. Uh, the goal is to come to, to execute. We have character athletes in our team in the name of Rika Telemac, Aidan McIntosh, and also Adrian Mitchell, who would be traveling uh, just uh, a week from now. So we're looking forward to this year's competition. We have enough boys in the, in the camp, as I said before, to, to be competitive and to challenge for the trophy this year. So it's exciting. I'm really happy to be here. I'm happy to be at the Intercon. And hopefully over the three days, we can have injury-free performances and great performances in terms of times. Um, over the years, we, we've seen the improvement of the Presentation Brothers uh, College athletes in terms of the, the track events. Um, are you fielding any athletes in the field events? Yes, of course. Um, as I said before, the goal is, is to compete for the trophy. And to do so, we, we look at holistic development as, as it relates to the field as well. We have Jelani Barnes, who trains also with track blazers. We have, we have um, a host of athletes in Noah Cummins. We also have uh, Stefan Strong, who is it with MVP. So we have uh, a lot of field event athletes who would be very, very competitive today. We have also Caleb Alexander. So we're looking to be competitive in all the field events and the track events. So uh, we're just hoping for the best, as I said, and hopefully everybody can remain uh, injury free and be confident enough to execute a great performance. One of the events that would be looked forward to today, um, uh, based on previous interviews, is the 400 meter. Um, you have a couple, you have the names of Telemark, you have Aidan McIntosh, and so you have two of the favorites who run the 400 meters. Um, what are the expectations in terms of um, how prepared is Telemark? Because uh, he seems to be the competition. For um, first of all, let me say that um, to, to, for the viewers that uh, Telemark wouldn't be doing the 400 at the Games this year. Um, as I said before, you were selected for the craft um, this year, which would take place next week. And we're just being a little bit careful in terms of how much mileage he, he produces at, at the Games this year. So we're trying to limit uh, the, the amount that uh, so you would see him in the 4x4 for sure, but you wouldn't see him uh, today in the 400. He would take part more in the short sprints. So, however, we, we still believe that we have uh, competitive enough boys. We have Aidan McIntosh as well, who would um, com compete in the 400 today. And we're looking forward to him giving a good performance and remaining healthy, because that is the key, being healthy and being able to perform. So Aidan would be there. Uh, Raquel, we would see him tomorrow and, uh, and on, on Thursday. So that is, that is what we're looking forward to. But besides two of them, we have other guys who would come in and be able to be competitive in the competition today in the 400. It's, it's good information, but a bit disappointing information for some because people are really looking forward to him and his performance. But on, on the same, congrats to all those who you have participating in the character and we want to extend, you know, best of luck to you and the team. Thank you very much. Uh, we look forward to it as well and I uh, look forward to him. All of you won't see him today, just look forward to him in, uh, in, in the character games at Bahamas this year and we're hoping to bring at least a medal back home to Grenada and personal best, of course. Thank you. Thank you very much. We were speaking here with the coach of the Presentation Brothers College. It is now time for us to go back over to our commentary team. All right. Well, thank you very much, Sherry Ann. And, uh, of course, uh, one of the questions I would have loved to find out from the coach of the PBC, I mean, they had a close call in uh, the last um, Intercall Games. Um, a lot of folks thought that they were going to just nip the GBSS and, and go all the way through um, his chances for, for this year. I'd love to get to know how he feels about that. Um, anyhow, um, Sherry Ann is always down there, so I'm, I have no doubt she's going to come back at w with him at some point because uh, they two uh, are seemingly to be one of um, the schools that uh, Bernard and Twine has said that uh, you know you can look out for in, in the boys category. Um, we are 
Just bordering on time for a quick commercial break. Don't forget uh, the Intercall broadcast being sponsored by the Republic Bank, Grenada Limited, and uh, the broadcast being facilitated by TNR Communications and uh, the, the folks at TNR Communications. Um, feel free to check them out because they too are uh, a very competent bunch of, of, of folks making sure that you get the, the quality and the class of uh, intercall games and th that uh, you're receiving. So um, Bernard Antoine is with me. Joseph Cadeau is going to be joining us shortly. Uh, Jason Skeet is my name. We've got Kenroy Batiste who's going to be here at some point and a, a couple others who will, you know, make their, their presence felt. Les Leslie Smith is supposed to be joining us, if not today, tomorrow, definitely, God is willing. So um, a, a, a nice crop of, of, of folks. First time I'm working with you, uh, Bernard. First time I'm working along with you. Yeah. It's my, it's my pleasure to learn from the pros. <laughs> uh, oh, how can you go wrong um, I'm learning from yourself and, and, and Joseph Cador? You... You, you you can what you have to do is to soak in the, the education and and that's and that's what i intend to do the, the what we have seen though what we have seen right throughout the season and 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 i listened to the, the coach from the pbc talk about one of his start the telemac mm -hmm. many a persons would have been looking forward to the the competition this year with telemac and and the at least from the St. David's Catholic Secondary All School. All right, so good. Hold that thought right there. We're going to get to it because that in itself is something that, that would require a lengthy bit of a discussion. All right, quick commercial break coming up. We're going to do that, and then we're going to come right back with some more right here at the Karani, J Karani James Athletic Stadium from Spice Country, Grenada. Have your family or friends ever needed cash now, but you are nowhere close to give it to them directly? With the cardless cash feature from Republic Bank Online and your mobile phone, it is hassle-free and convenient to send money to anyone, including yourself, using the Republic mobile app. Simply log into your account, access the cardless feature, enter the amount you want to transfer, and using the access code provided, the cash can be withdrawn instantly from a designated Republic Bank ATM without a card. Republic Bank Cardless Cash is convenient at your fingertips. To learn more about our cardless cash features, visit republicgrenada.com for more details. Special terms and conditions apply. Republic Bank, we're the one for you. Home is easy as one, two, three. Thinking about your new home? Think easy. Think a Republic Bank Home Easy Loan. Think affordable. Think convenience. Think Republic. Home is easy as one, two, three. Republic makes home easy. Wow, that was such a breeze. Own your home with ease. So whether laying that first brick or purchasing an existing home, we've got you covered. Republic Bank will get you those keys hassle-free in no time. Home is easy as one, two, three. Apply for a Home Easy Loan today for a chance to win a cash prize. Getting your new home is easy with Republic Bank. Republic Bank. We're the one for you. Terms and conditions apply. Building or renovating your home or business? Why not use clean, renewable energy? Install solar panels to power your home and office and see your energy costs go down and your savings go up. Using renewable, solar-powered energy protects our environment, reduces our carbon footprint, and slows the devastating impact of climate change. Republic Bank can help to finance construction and renovations that make use of renewable energy. Visit any Republic Bank branch and ask about renewable energy financing options today. Republic Bank, we're the one for you. Have your family or friends ever needed cash now? But you are nowhere close to give it to them directly? With the cardless cash feature from Republic Bank Online and your mobile phone, it is hassle-free and convenient to send money to anyone, including yourself, using the Republic mobile app. Simply log into your account, access the cardless feature, enter the amount you want to transfer, and using the access code provided, the cash can be withdrawn instantly from a designated Republic Bank ATM without a card. Republic Bank Cardless Cash is convenient at your fingertips. To learn more about our cardless cash features, visit republicgrenada.com for more details. 
Special terms and conditions apply. Republic Bank, we're the one for you. Home is easy as one, two, three. Thinking about your new home? Think easy. Think a Republic Bank Home Easy Loan. Think affordable. Think convenience. Think Republic. Home is easy as one, two, three. Republic makes home easy. Wow, that was such a breeze. Own your home with ease. So whether laying that first brick or purchasing an existing home, we've got you covered. Republic Bank will get you those keys hassle-free in no time. Home is easy as one, two, three. Apply for a home easy loan today for a chance to win a cash prize. Getting your new home is easy with Republic Bank. Republic Bank, we're the one for you. Terms and conditions apply. Building or renovating. Back to the Karani James Athletic Stadium in a beautiful Spice Country, Grenada, on a 31 degree maximum Tuesday morning. Tuesday, the 28th of March. Intercall Day 1. Intercall Games Day 1. Sponsored by Republic Bank Grenada Limited. And uh, Jason Skeet, together with Bernard and Twine, to take you through the first session of uh, the, ac the action on day 1. And we're getting ready now. We're seeing athletes making their way onto the field. So some action, no doubt, will 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 start in just a minute. And uh, folks are eagerly anticipating what will be keen rivalry and uh, exciting competition. Bragging rights for the most part, and bragging rights that will last for the next 12 months. Into call 2023. Yeah, John, you, you, uh, Bernard, sorry, you were speaking about, um, you know, the, these two athletes uh, who you think may have some kind of rivalry. The, what we would have noticed for the season so far, the athletes from Presentation College, the athletes from GBSS, and the athlete from St. David's Track Blazers, one was expecting throughout this intercall you will see some rare competition among these, these young men but apparently this is not to be I'm listening to the coach on the presentation college earlier he intimated that that Telemac one of his star athletes uh, in the 2 and 400 meters would not be running any of the those events during this meet he will take part he said in the in the relays so that that rivalry, we are not going to see that um, unfold today. Uh, disappointing, you might say? Disappointing indeed. In, in, in fact, um, for the under-20 boys, the Samuel Green we, ex we expected in, in the 100 meters, Emilio Bishop um, in the 100 meters. All right, well... Uh On the track, it's the 100 meters hurdles open. Okay, yeah, the Hep Girls 100 meters open. Uh, Kishana Roger in lane three. Khadija Bristol of the Happy Hill Secondary School in uh, four. Andy Ann Courtney of uh, Boca Secondary School in five. And uh, Thalia Desant of St. David's Catholic Secondary School in six. So. Uh, Athletes from SAS, Happy Hill, Boca, and St. David's in the Hep Girls 100 meters hurdles open. Up and off, and uh, Courtney. Courtney seems to you know, already established her, her presence. Uh, she will come through. So uh, it uh, 
seems to have come from lane five in, in, in Courtney, representing the uh, Happy Hill Secondary School, I think it was. No, that that was the Hillsborough Secondary School. Hillsborough Secondary School, sorry. Hillsborough yeah. Secondary School. Hillsborough Sec from lane four. So that's the start of action action on the tr on the track, and the first of of, of the, the in the multi event this multi discipline event for girls, and there we see the in lane four the athlete from Hillsborough Secondary School winning this particular discipline. Yeah, well, you've got to get into a rhythm, especially for the hurdles. The hurdles is more about rhythm and uh, making sure that once you find your rhythm and you get your step, clearing these hurdles becomes almost um, uh, robotic, so to speak. Uh, you've got to you know, get into your rhythm. And uh, she took a while to get into the rhythm, but uh, maybe within the last 40 meters, she kind of you know, got into that rhythm, a rhythm that she should have been in very earlier on. But uh, with any serious challenge coming, it, it would have been not as easy as, as, as she made it out to be there. I, yes, you're, you're absolutely correct. And, th and that was the heat number one in the girls 100 meter hurdles open in the multidiscipline event. And uh, as you know, there's seven, seven events in this, in this particular, in this particular, seven disciplines in this particular event. All right. Well, heat number two. Heat number two, Destiny Langine of uh, the Anglican High School is in three. Letitia Williams of the St. Andrews. Anglican Secondary School SAS is in four. Denisha Scott of St. David's Catholic Secondary in five. And uh, Shamir Joseph in uh, six for St. John's Christian Secondary School. So lanes three to six being occupied in the uh, heat of the Hept Girls 100 meter hurdles open. Uh, let's see if we can maybe find a little bit more rhythm there. Um, it, it, it also requires someone with a little bit more length so that you can clear these hurdles and you know um, find your rhythm a little bit earlier. Um, long legs play play a role. Normally, traditionally, um, the, the taller sprinters with a uh, you know kind of a try to get into an event like the hurdles. So they are on the status orders. Lane number three is Destiny Langine of Anakin High School. Leticia Williams from SAS. Denisha Scott, St. Davis Catholic Secondary School in lane five. And in lane six, Shamari Joseph, St. John's Christian Secondary School. It's a multidiscipline event. The, the girls pent. It's a heat number two. the flags tell a story because uh, the story that the flags are telling in the background is that uh, the wind is not really heavy and uh, generally you would want to have these kind of conditions especially um, in, an, in an event like this you, you, it, you, you use a lot less energy and uh one of the most uh, um, technical events is it's hurdles very technical it's raw speed with level or degree of control. Mm -hmm. So we are off to start on, on the track and on the field. Uh, Intercall 2023. All right, so. Um, how many events uh, are in the, the heptathlon? Talk to us about that. Traditionally, it's seven events, and the uh, events are the 100 meters hurdles, which is what we are, we are witnessing now. Then the 200 meters, then the 800 meters. And there's high jump, long jump, short put, and, and javelin. And um, in recent times, we have been, that is, Grenada has been distinguished, distinguishing itself 
in these multidiscipline events. All right, well, credit to Kurt Felix and Lyndon Victor, the inspiration many folks would say. And uh, in the girls, well, let's see, someone will emerge in the not too distant future and uh, lift the nose, lift the flag of Grenada. And uh, who knows, we may just, this may just very well be uh, the birthplace of another female in a category like this. All right, so we're getting ready for start of heat number two. Please start the I'm, I'm looking at uh, Langine of Happy of uh, Anglican High School, but Joseph with those long legs. Yeah, Shamari Joseph. Remember, we spoke about those long legs and uh, got into rhythm. She didn't. She didn't have the best of starts. She really didn't have the best of starts. But um, finding your rhythm early and uh, using your length. Clearing the hurdles without uh, any disruption or very little disruption always aids in the process. So that was Shamari Joseph there in the, uh, with a time of 16.85 seconds. 16.85 seconds. Remember in an event like, like, like these, you're already racing against the clock. You get points. Points are awarded based on the times that you would have posted. And you, at the end of the seven events, the highest scorer emerged the winner. So it's Shamari Joseph of St. John's Christian Secondary School, 16.83 seconds. Destiny Langain, Anglican High School, 18.65 seconds. Denisha Scott, St. David's Catholic Secondary School, 19.55 seconds. And in fourth position, Leticia Williams of SAS in 19.64 seconds. All right, keep your eyes on Shamari Joseph as we go through the day because uh, she seems to uh, be uh, a little bit more focused than the rest from what we're seeing on, on camera. She seems to be a little bit more focused. So keep your eyes on her. 16.83, not bad. Not bad. The, the beautiful thing about events like this is that you, it, it's like a wave. There are events that one athlete is stronger in as compared to another athlete. And so they, there's always a jockeying of positions before you get to the, before you get to the end of this, this, this event. The different disciplines offers them, speaks to the, the individual strength. And, and obviously, there are some athletes that are stronger in certain areas. And, but it's collectively, when that's put together, then you get the multi-event champion all right well uh well, thanks a lot there bernard and twine he's uh, always on top of things the equivalent of this is the uh, is the oct octagonal for boys so the, the oct for boys uh, up next seemingly on the track we've also got a couple of field events that uh getting ready to take place the the javelin for the sub junior girls the discus we've also got some high jump um activity getting ready to leap off down on on the track so uh we're going to make way down there to sherry ann in just a little bit and sherry ann is going to bring us up to speed with um everything that's happening down there she's uh running around and uh keeping us informed sherry ann Well, why is Sharon is queuing up? Let, 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 let me just bring you up to speed with the athletes who are lined up for the 100 meters, 100 meters open for boys. It's Jared, Jared Stafford from GBSS, Javier Junior Williams from SAS, Shema Fleming from Boca Secondary School, oh. Zelon Cox from St. David's Catholic Secondary School, and from Hillsborough Secondary School is Brent Edmund. So on the track, momentarily, 100 meters in the oct for boys open. Heat number one.
and you would have seen some shots taken there for in the shot put. Um, young man is warming up there. It's a nice crop of young men sitting, waiting for the start of the event. That will be the shot put male sub junior. Shot put male sub junior. That's what we, uh, the group of young men that the camera is now showing. And they are uh, allowed to do some practice throws before they, before they settle into a rhythm and have their throws. So event number 34 in terms of number, the oct for boys, 100 meters dash open. Jerry Stafford in GBSS in lane number two. Aviel Junior Williams, Sass in lane number three. Shema Fleming is from Boca Secondary School in lane number four. Zeland Cox, St. David's Catholic Secondary School, right of lane five, and Brent Edmund, Hillsborough Secondary School in lane six, Jason. All right, well, we're getting ready for that. Uh, we've got some field events taking place, and uh, we're going to bring you up to speed on that as well. Into call 2023 at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium. So it is GBSS in all green uh, and with some white on the side. So green and white, it's GBSS. Avia Williams, SAS, it's blue. With some white, little tweak of white. It's well, actually, there's no white in this. It's all blue. Uh, Shema Fleming from Boca Secondary School. He's in lane four. And in lane five, St. David's Catholic Secondary School is red and orange, or red and yellow, rather, Zeeland Cox. And then out in the green and yellow, from Hillsborough Secondary School at Akeriku, it's Brent Edmund. Brent is in lane five, lane six, sorry. Uh, you're going to speak to us about the octathlon in uh, just a little bit and uh, break down that that um, event for us. Um, we're getting ready for the start of the first heat in the boys' octathlon. And uh, keep your eyes on uh, Shamar Fleming of Boca Secondary School and uh, uh, Jared Stafford of the Grenada Boys Secondary School in lane two. Ah, well, this was quick. 11.66. Williams of Sass uh, pulling through in uh, lane number three. Uh, was a heat, but um, he ha had, had some work to do. Um, nice clean start from everybody from, from, from the get-go. It was always tight. Everyone was up good, stretching. Good rhythm. So, uh, Aviel Jr., Williams of SAS, 11.66, and everybody there running under 12. Um, keen, keen race it was. Competitive, competitive. Um, it's an open event, and 11.66 seconds, the, the top performer here from SAS. So, that's the first of the, 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 the multidiscipline for this particular event. We'll give you a bit of a a bit of a breakdown on the the event in, uh, momentarily. Yeah, uh, talk to us about that because uh, a lot of folks would want to find out what really is the octathlon, and um, you know how if if my my children are involved in athletics, how they can you know 
get involved in something at this uh, in an event uh, of, of this nature. Heat number two in the boys of Athlon, 100 meter dash open. Rondell John of uh, Boca Secondary School, he is in lane one. And the starters list just disappeared from us for a brief moment. So uh, no doubt we're going to get that back in just a little bit. But um, with 11.66 in, in the first heat, you would think that um, obviously this would be uh, some point of concern for the athletes, the athletes participating in, in the second heat because 11.66 is uh, not bad at all. All right, so uh, Rondell John of the Boca Secondary School in two, um, Caleb Lane of PBC in three, Jordan D. Lewis of Sass in John in one, Lane in two, Lewis in three, uh, Jonathan Newton of GBSS in four, Shane Lett of Happy Hill Secondary School in five, and uh, Kay Lewis of St. David's Catholic Secondary in six. So one to six lanes occupied, and uh, with 11.66 being established in the first heat, hmm, what are we expecting? What are we anticipating? Not heavy wind at all at the athletic stadium today so uh, the athletes no doubt would pay attention to that because uh, it's a, a good day if you're a sprinter records are in your sights so the banners are quiet in the background Things in Davis Catholic Secondary just came through at, at the tape. Now this for a heat. Hmm. Is this competitive right here? Very competitive. Let's look at it again, Bernard and Twine. Uh, I think Boca Secondary School Rondell John was was really pushing out there in lane one, but. Uh, he he had it just in the nick of time, but he was beaten just at the tape. K. Lewis of St. David's Catholic Secondary School, 11.85. Uh, slightly slower than the first heat. The, the first heat was 11.6 something. 11.66. A day about. So, it's this. So this is this is the result of heat number two of two, in the arc for boys. 100 meters dash. They will they will compete o over these events over two days, and we are going to keep a running score for you. Uh, th this event is, is based on points, on times or distances, right. and really they are competing against themselves in, in in one sense, and then at the end they are competing against each other. All right. Well, uh, let's uh, throw down on the field. Sherry Ann Noel is there. Sherry Ann, you've got it. I am right here, Jason. I'm with the coach of the St. Joseph's Convent, uh, St. Andrew. We have Shane James and the SJC St. Andrew are the defending champs in the girls' division. So I thought it fit in to bring in the coach at this time. Um, um, speak to us about the, the crop of athletes that you brought out today and um, how compact is that team? as the defending champs. Um, well, good morning, everyone. And as you said, my name is Shane James. Um, well, I bring out a lot of athletes to defend. I'm coming to defend our title. We're not giving up easily. And we have athletes in all different areas you could think about. So we are ready to defend our title. So who 
are speak to us about the, the the preparation process for today and who are some of the athletes that you know viewers and and spectators uh, right here at the stadium and those on the live should be looking out for well firstly preparation was um i don't want to say 100 percent but because everything about the challenges um, in terms of athletes, I could look out for you could look out for athletes like um, Zania Belfon, who is doing the long jump, 100, 200. Also, that's in the junior category. You have Jaden Batis in the senior doing the one, the two, the four. Sub so junior, you have Brendiana James, Samara Noel. Just a few who you could look out for for this interval. Ongoing now, we have the the discuss through. Um, do you have anyone in that particular category, and what can we expect from from that from that throw? We have two athletes in the discuss show, senior girls. We have Monique Noel and Kimberly Belfon. And once they execute what they have learned in training, I believe that they should do well and be in the top four positions. What are the distances that they're throwing? I believe that's a surprise. <laughs> I don't want to say nothing on the distance as yet. Because we never know what could have give you a distance. And on the day we never know what could happen. So I don't want to give you a distance as yet. So all in all, you are confident that the crop of athletes that you came down with in 2023, this this is basically just day one. We'll do it for you and the, the trophy will be returning to St. Andrew. Without a doubt, um, we come to defend. And if you want it, you have to fight for it. We don't be giving up easily. So. Yes, we are ready to defend. Thank you very much. That was the coach from St. Joseph's Convent, St. Andrew, Shane James. And he spoke to his crop of athletes. They are the defending champs. It is only day one, so we'll see what happens at the end of day three. Now back to our commentary team. All right. Well, thank you very much, Sherry Ann, and enthusiastic coach there for St. Joseph's Convent, Grenville. No doubt he has all the reasons to be there, the defending champs. And as he said, you want it, you've got to come get it. He's not going to just give it up just like that. Um, a little bit more from Bernard and Twine, and then Joseph Cadeau is going to slip in, slide into the chair. Joseph, uh, Bernard? The next event on the track is the 400 meters. We have a number of 400 meters, and in, uh, for the 400 meters junior girls, uh, it would be the top, the, the first place finisher, plus the, the, the next four best times. So we have four heats, four heats, and it would be the top finisher, plus the four best times. In heat number one, we, we have an athlete from St. Mark's Secondary School, Jada Moraim, Zinique Roberts from Greater Christian, Greater Christian Academy, uh, Amaya Chandler from Boca Secondary, Shafonia Houston. And Shafonia Houston is the one to look for in this, in this event, Cadeau. Shafonia Houston from Anglican High School, from St. George's, uh, St. Joseph Convent, St. George, Kayla McIntyre, uh, Shani Sylvan from SAS, Tony Lewis from Greater Christian Academy, and Talia Nayak from Grenville Secondary. Well, good morning to you, Master Antoine, and good morning to you, all of our listeners, wherever you are, across the, those of you here at home, across the different parts of the region. It's yes, indeed, we say thanks for being part of Intercall 2023. And Antoine, it is it is prepping us up. The build-up is here for what we anticipate is going to be a really great day of intercall number one. So far, no disappointment. The first two events on the track, they're highly competitive, highly competitive. Um, they, 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 the young men, the young men seems to be, and the young women in the multi the multi-discipline events, they seems to be all geared and wearing, raring to go. Um, posting some some competitive times among themselves. And I'm happy with the growth we've seen with Intercall over the years. And certainly we say thanks to our sponsor, Republic Bank, and the additions of uh, these multiple multiple disciplinary events, the HEPT and the UPT. Uh, certainly it's really, really augurs well for the sport, the growth and the development. And it shows that at least the sponsors, 
they are getting their money's worth for the for the investment very much so they're grueling events um, over two days uh, you have to be fit to be competitive in these multi-discipline events and uh, we have mentioned before uh, we, we have we have had uh, at least on the international stage the Kurt Phillips mm -hmm. and Lyndon Victor. Lyndon, Lyndon Victor, in fact, was the, is, he is the reigning Commonwealth champion. That is that is correct, and I think it would be with it augurs well for the sport. In the in the past, we've had persons saying, "I want to be a Josh Botang in the, in the shot put and, and the discus. I want to be a Kirani James. I I want to be a Kishara George." We were hoping for the day when you hear persons can say the conversation can be, I want to be a, a Lyndon Victor, I want to be a Kurt, a Kurt. And certainly the hope is that stemming out of these, the intercall games, that athletes will find a new appreciation for that which the, those disciplines they actually offer. Very much so. Getting ready on the, on the field is... Again, for those of you that's viewing wherever you are, certainly, um, if, you, if, you, if you are following in the call for the first time, uh, for those of you that, because it is, it is a pay-per-view event, um, certainly, um, Antoine, persons might be looking at the stadium and they're probably thinking, well, why is it there seems to be so, there's not much support for the event? Traditionally, and I, I know that the organizers have made attempts in recent times with a mix of it, as you hinted to it, 17 events this morning were in session one, which is, which is a mix of events, um, a mix of events. And now you, we, you have these other disciplines, hoping that you can get a compliment on this. Yeah, so, but I mean, but I mean, it, 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 it only shows that it is growing, and the hope eventually, though, is that as we go through the couple of days, we can assure you that come tomorrow, come well, when we get to Thursday, it's going to be a floodgate. I mean, the bleachers, there will be no space to contain the students. So, giving you that, that, that an appreciation, it has nothing to do with a lack of an appreciation for the games, but it's just a culture that is growing where persons tend to stay away, but the organizers are attempting to fix that. From the Hillsborough Secondary... Tiffany Charles. That's the introduction there of the girls. From the Grenada SDA Comprehensive. Senior. Utisha McQueen. From the Grenada Christian Academy. Kellyanne Julian. From the St. Joseph's Convent, St. Andrew. Kimberly Belfon. And rounding out your field from Bishop's College. Ashley Hosford. Your field for the girls. Discuss throw senior division. The game's record for this event, 36.64 meters set in 1996 by Kathy Ann Hopkins. In, ca in, case, in case you missed it, it was the girls discussed throw for seniors that were being introduced. Uh, the record stands at 36.64 meters set in 1996. A record uh, has been there a bit, maybe today, Intercall 2023, may just probably be the year that the record gets touched and or probably more so even shattered. Uh, but it is yet early times and we certainly hope as we go through um, the day. But we get it ready for yet another event on the track, event number 49. It's a girls 400 meters dash. The lane assignments, uh, Jada Moraine, St. Mark Secondary, Zanique Roberts is in Grenada Christian Academy, Amaya Chandler for Boca Bishops, for Boca, Boca Secondary, Shafana Hostin, Hostin, and certainly she goes in as one of the favorites, Antoine, for the Anglican High School. Uh, there is Kayla McIntyre, St. Joseph's Convent, St. George, uh, Shanae Sylvan for St. Andrew's Anglican. Uh, there is Tony Lewis and... Completing the lineup is Talia Nayak. Lane assignments for event number 49, the girls' 400 meters dash. Going into this heat, Antoine, um, and Shafana from the Anglican High School, um, she certainly goes in there as a favorite. She does. And look for both lanes four and five. And remember, um, they have four heats, 
It's the winner of each heat plus the four best times that make it to the final this afternoon. So look at lane four and five, and five Shafonia Houston from Anakin High School, Oak White, and Kayla McIntyre, St. George, St. George, St. Joseph Condon, St. George, in the green. In uh, the green, green and white. In the green and white. Slight overcast here at the Kiwana James Athletic Stadium. Certainly provides just a bit adequate covering for the athletes. It's a cool morning. Very cool morning. Event 49. 400 meters junior girls. Again, keep your eyes on lane four and lane five. McIntyre in five for St. George's Convent. Hosted a Chiffonia in lane four for the Anglican High School. Chiffonia is also one of our Carifta uh, selectees, and one is expecting Chiffonia to represent Greener well at Carifta this year. And quite a talented athlete she is. I mean, on the track, in the field. Hmm. All wrong athlete, as you would say. Yeah, quite, a comp quite a complete athlete. Yes. The 50th edition of the Republic Bank Intercall Games as they go on the status orders. Early days yet. Session one. And they're off. Clean start. We got to keep our eyes focused on lane four and lane five. Chiffonia for the Anglican High School, McIntyre for St. Joseph's Convent. As they make their way down the back stretch. Let's see how this one pans out. It is Anglican High School, Chiffonia, that is, of course, making the early charge as they hit the top of the 200 meters. Certainly holding form. Nice stride. And she certainly, as we as we 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 did I intimate, um, well, that's was intended to be an easy one for her, as she hits the 100 meter mark. Not much of a challenge from this one for her. I think she probably would just, just take this one, Antoine, as a little warm up, as though to say to that. As predicted, um, a walk in the park, as they would say. Uh, the a little competition for the minor places? Yes, I mean, I think it works both ways. One, it just gets the, bu the blood pumping. And certainly, it's just to stamp her authority to remind the others that I'm not just here with name, but I'm here in person, and I'm here to deliver. Yeah, it looks like um, Talian Nayak in second position there, and um, Kayla McIntyre for third. These are unofficial, unofficial placing. But certainly, there was, there's no doubt who the winner is in this heat. It's Shafonia Houston from the Anakin High School. Indeed, and we seem to have, is this the strangler as it is? I'm just trying to, it's always good though when you see athletes are making the effort to complete. Finish the race. To finish it. It, it, yeah. it goes beyond, it shows the maturity in the athletes that I've, I've started a task and it's important that I complete, even at this very young age, it's lessons, as from my, from my old my alma mater says that athletics, intercall, sports, it is education away from the classroom. So much to be learned. Absolutely. And in, in, in fact, um, there are many articles written on the value of physical education in sport. Many a young persons will tell you that they, 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 they the success in life had a lot to do with the discipline that they exercised uh, during, the, during, during their athletic season, whether it's netball, football, track and field. It's, they learned quite a lot, in fact, on the track and on the field. Some form of physical education, it, it, it augurs well. And we have the athletes that's getting ready for the high jump. They have been introduced to us.
We can tell you in that final, that, 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 that previous event, that Chiffonia, she stopped the clock officially in the time of 58.41 seconds. And Nyack in the time of 1 minute, 04.89. So, hosted 58.41 seconds. As we continue now with the introduction of the athletes for the high jump. Shaim Phillip from the Boca Secondary, Kristen Cambridge, and rounding out your field from the St. David Catholic Secondary, Cameron Antoine, your field for the boys high jump sub junior. We're back on the track for heat two. Heat two of four in the 400 meter junior girls. Running out of lane one, St. Joseph's Convent, Grenville, Kenaya Phillip. Lane two, Grenada Christian Academy, Shabina Lewis. Lane four from the St. Davis Catholic Secondary, Kamaya Tellisford. Lane five from the Hillsborough Secondary, Akela Roberts. Lane six, representing the Happy Hill Secondary, Makeda Joseph. And running on the lane seven, representing the Bishop's College, Deanne St. Bernard. Those are the athletes in the start list for the heat two of four in the 400 meters junior girls. Event 49, the girls 400 meters dash. And we've just been given the int introduction. And certainly we are expecting as we look at the middle of the, middle of the track, uh, Telesford and Roberts, uh, representing St. David's Catholic Secondary and Hillsborough is secondary, happy with secondary as it is. It's heat two or four, event number 49, the girls 400 meters dash. And one of the things where we see in Antoine, and she shows, you know, it speaks, it augurs well for the growth of the games. Um, the multiple rollout of events, simultaneous rollout of, of, of events, um, while there's the 400 taking place simultaneously, there is the athletes getting ready for the long jump. So, keep your eyes on the middle of the track, lane fours and fives. St. Davis Catholic Secondary School is a favorite in this one. 400 meters in the girls' division. It's in the call 2023. Of a faulted start there. And um, we see whether or not it's one of those punitive infringements. But what is the response from the officials on the field? See the likes of Mr. Ralph Lord. I heard earlier this morning uh, yourself and Jason were talking about some of the perennial um, figures of athletics in Grenada. And certainly as you, you scan the f canvas the field, you still see some of their presence here beyond those that have passed on. And they are called back, they are called back once more. Um, we were introduced earlier to the field and this is, this is really refreshing for the boys high jump sub junior. 21 participants in this event. 21, a high jump event. Indeed, indeed, indeed. The athletics is growing and there's an interest not just for what happens on the track but also on the field. As they await the girls, 400 meters dash, junior. 
and it, yet again we have a faulty start I'm not saying a false start because nobody seems to be to have been penalized in the first two faulty starts so let's see what happens in this one going back to the field event with a with high jump 21 21 young men uh, participating in this one this really speaks volume I think we and what's drive given that, driving that sort of energy and hunger for these multi, for these events we talk we talk about the club structure years ago you would school guys just ran because that's what they knew now you have a greater free quadra, cadre of qualified coaches at, at varied levels you have athletes that are now into clubs where you have folks that are literally teaching them the taking them from the basics and grow them and now guys are realizing that the high jump is not just about me hurling myself over a bar but being able to appreciate the technique and being able to, to being able to, to, to execute okay we, we back at the track the 400 meters girls 400 meters girls let's hope for a clean break this time nothing does worse than having your mental space affected Again, this is the fourth. Is this officially off? I think now they are officially off. It's the girls, the heat four of two, the girls 400 meters dash. Um, as you look at the athletes, as they motor their way down the background, you have GW Fletcher is on the inside, St. Davis Catholic is, is there, so too is the Anglican High School. Um, let's see how this one pans itself out. Event 49. 400 meters, junior girls. Let's see as they make it down. Uh, heat number four in the out of there. We have Telesford, um, who came into this one in just a minute. But no, there's a shift. We're looking at Atlee. They're out of lane number two. Um, that is Unique Roberts, uh, who's certainly um, on the outside of lane, lane number two. Uh, who's going to just take this one to the line. Roberts out of lane number two. And St. David's Catholic um, taking in, taking second place, Antoine. Yes, define the odds. Yeah. Um, we had the hands-on favorite for this one. We had uh, Telesford come here. Telesford from St. David's Catholic Secondary School. But we had some good running there. On the on the inside, from uh, Sabina Lewis. There's some good running there from Sabina Lewis from the out of lane two. Yes, out of lane two from the Granville. No, the the, the Grenada Christian Academy. Christian Academy. Yeah, GCA. Yes, Grenada Christian Academy in the, in the blue. And, and some may probably say a bit of an upset in the in, in the context that uh, if you look at the entry times. It, it should have been, it was an expected toss up between Telesford in lane four and Roberts out of lane, out, out of, out of lane five. Uh, but you always find, and I think certainly the question comes down to Antoine as where they are mentally to be able to position yourself, not just on paper, but come the day, come the hour, can I deliver? And certainly we hear, we've seen um, that Lewis came in there to take, to take the first, the first position in heat number, f number two which is he two of four, the girls 400 meters a dash. It's a winner plus the four best times. The winner first plus, plus the, four, the four best times. And, and as such, you can't always take yourself out, out of contention because you're never really quite sure. Um, we are seen simultaneously um, an athlete there from St. George's Institute, one of the newer schools to the game. One of the newer schools. In fact, um, they're... They held a sports meet, one of the, the, the later sports meets to be held. That was quite interesting. Not in Tanti, not in, the, in, in the, the athletic stadium, but in one of the small villages. And it's quite an interesting meet it was. It is the discus throw. It isn't necessarily... Sh short one. Sorry, the shot put. It isn't necessarily um, an, a, a discipline that is just power. It has quite a great measure of technique to it as to 
So keep in mind, multiple events taking place on the field. Uh, we've just seen the there's a shot put in progress. And uh, there's this. It is a short put for sub junior boys. Sub junior boys. boys, yes. And quite an extensive was 27. 27 athletes. Um, and again, we continue to show these non traditional areas. You see, because normally when you come to the track, you know there's the coming to the draws. But now it shows there's something happening out there that augurs well. At next 10, 15 years, five years down the line, we may just be able to say, listen, we've not, we've not just broken through on the track. And well, we have on the field, but in the non-traditional areas, long discuss short put. Maybe what you're seeing there, though, is what you're seeing is the likes of the Josh Botang in more recent times that have given some credence um, to those to those events. Absolutely, and, and they, they have 27 athletes doing short put at a sub junior level. It's a good thing. It is a good thing. We get ready for the next event on the track. It's event 49, we continue heat, three of four. Uh, the lane assignments, Maya Noel occupies lane number one for St. Joseph's Convent, St. Hutchinson John's Christian Secondary. Then we have Tamaya Thomas for St. Andrew's Anglican Secondary size. Shania Peters for Westerhall Secondary. We have coming in with the fastest time, um, in the middle of the pack, Akira Moraine for St. David's Catholic Secondary. Then there is Hills, Happy Hill Secondary, a minute four. That's for Kyler Alexis. Abigail Williams. She occupies McDonald, um, for, uh, McDonald College in lane number six. And Ashara Joseph, lane number seven. And Sitton in lane number eight for St. For J.W. Fletcher in the person of Alexis Smith. So that's the girls, 400 meters dash, juniors. You had just to remind um, Antoine, just the other day we were introducing sent, um, G.W. Fletcher as a newcomer to the games. They, have a, they are established now. They are established. They, they, they are showing the way for, for the, the Gateway Academy and the St. George's Institute now. They're the new kids on the block. It's not as difficult as, as it seems. <laughs> 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 They probably tapping themselves down and say, that was us years ago. Now we're in the big league. We're big boys now, big girls as well. So ladies and gentlemen, the competition is in full swing. And uh, the third of four heats in the girls, 400 meters, juniors. Let's keep our eyes peeled from the middle of, middle of the track. Lane four and five. Maureen from St. David's, from, from St. David's Secondary. And Alexis. Intercall 23, the 50 50 edition. It is session one, day one of Intercall. The 400 meters is in just about getting started, but already in progress is the high jump, which is within our view. And it's a clean, no. Uh, it's actually, I <laughs> it's quite unusual to have so many fourth stats in a 400 meters. And we had three fourth stats of 340 stats in the, in the last heat. Now here we are with a fourth stat in, in this heat. 400 meters, that's not, that's not common. It's not common, but it would be interesting to find out what is it that's given rise to it. Whether or not it's a technical issue or if it's just agitation it, it, from, all, from all where it's, we sit it doesn't seem to be as agitation from the field uh, but either way we hope whatever the, whatever the issue the issue or issues are uh, that it resolves itself it, itself as this is session one and 17 events again as we get ready for session two later on yes Yes, and it's going to be quite ex the excitement is 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 going to height that one. All finals in the afternoon. All finals in the afternoon. So it's heat three or four in lane one, St John's Christian Secondary School. Sass is in lane two, uh, the green iguanas from the from the Western Secondary, Secondary School in lane three, St David's Catholic Catholic Secondary School in lane four, Hillsborough in lane five, McDonald College in lane six, Happy Hill 
is in lane seven. And the lane eight is open. But the, the athlete in lane seven. That's from J.W. Fletcher. She is the J.W. Fletcher. So that must be Alexis Smith. Yes. So yeah. they had some slight change with the, the order here on paper. But you mentioned some of the the supporters this on the bleachers. They're probably telling themselves, well, oh, I'm here all by myself. Where are my friends? Like Friday would be a total different story. Yeah. <laughs> well, Friday's celebration. By Thursday, now so I can imagine the place would be... Thursday. It will, it, will, it will be packed, no doubt. So that was a false start. And, uh, well, the field, the field have been given a, given a card. So the next false start would be out. I can remind you there is events happening, varied events happening simultaneously as part of Intercall 2023, the 55th edition of the Republic Bank Intercall. We wait at the start of the 400 meters, heat three or four, the girls 400 meters in the junior category. And so for start number two. Mm. Okay, something is something is amiss. And, and to, to quote you, um, uh, Joseph, uh, we need to find out what's causing false start in a 400 meters. I mean, a false start at any level, it throws you off. There's always a question of what's happening mentally. Um, we probably need to get an appreciation. See that one, there's a meeting of the uh, congregating of the officials. Um, can only one can only assume that it is to probably try to get a, an appreciation as to what are some of the challenges that they are experiencing. Yeah, so you said it is it is unusual to have so many false start uh, or rather faulty start in uh, four hundred meters. So maybe that's what they are attempting to sort out among themselves as officials. But ladies and gentlemen, we are awaiting a continuation of the girls' 400 meters for juniors. They have had two heats, and we are in heat number three. It's the first finisher in each heat, plus the, first, plus the four fastest times amongst all four heats. The time, the record, the game, the game's record, set back in 1998, uh, 56.40, set by Kishara George, and the record, I guess time will tell whether we will find an athlete yet to challenge it. Maybe this year, 2023, is the year that that happens. as we await the start. Heat three or four. The girl is 400 meters. The top finisher in each heat advances, followed, followed by the next four best times. Overall, so in this case, the, the Second, the two fastest finishers 
they go through automatically to the final. Intercall 2023. Again, we say thanks to Republic Bank. As we go through session one, day one, or the 55th edition of the game. Let's see where the athletes are mentally as they get ready for the start. And we can safely say it's a clean break. Keep in mind that the top finisher advances automatically because the top two might they go ahead on, on, on time. As they go down the back stretch, we look at Smith from the JW, JW Fletcher. There is McDonald College and the person's person of Abigail Williams as out front and making for it. As we continue to keep our eyes on the clock. Well, we continue to fall out of, out of lane number one from St. John's Christian secondary. It's Noel out there in lane number one. And She's going to just about take across the finish of the line just about this time. All officially, it is Noel from lane at number one and Abigail Williams from McDonald College from lane number two. The unofficial, unofficial um, finish there for heat three or four events number 49. Again, I'm going to say this. It just it just shows you shows the maturity, and the spirit in which the games have been held. When athletes are seeing the need to finish the event, um, and not just walking off the field prematurely, um, it really, really sh it sh it speaks well for the growth for the growth of the games and the maturity. So what we've seen. And for those of you that's following us, this is part of, of Intercall 2023, a TNR uh, production. And again, remind you that the coverage of the game is coming to you by pay pay per view. Day number one, you probably could WhatsApp a friend, let them know that you're on the live. And again, Antoine, a new dimension for the for the championships. It's pay pay it's pay per view. Yes, and to reach a wider audience, I imagine and uh, persons in the diaspora, uh, uh, persons who are interested in, in track and field, local track and field, it, it, it augurs well for the future. It augurs well for the future. And certainly it, we, we have to commend the production team, TNR Communication, for ensuring, for providing us the, the clean, top quality um, production that we've seen unfolding here for the 55th edition of Intercall 2023. 26 schools? 26 schools. 26 schools. So the, the winner of that event, 1 minute 01.66 seconds. We're going to bring you an update in just a bit as to some of the activity that's happening in on the field. So after the first round, um, in the discus through senior females, um, you have from leading at the field, it's Jamelia 
Nicholas of St. David's Catholic with a distance of, uh, through of 33.24. Avanel Nicholas, 24.84 from and bringing up the, the third the position is Natalia Stafford uh, from the Anglican High School, 24.66. So we continue to monitor multiple events. We're getting ready for a continuation of event number 45, the girls' 400 meters dash in the junior division. The lane assignments for the upcoming event. Lane one, Ricayla Charles occupies lane num number two. Alexander. Those are the artists in this one. The final heat, heat 4-4 four four in the junior girls, 400 meters. Top finisher automatically qualifies. And the next four fastest times across the four heats. On your mark. Clean break. Four hundred meter dash junior girls heat four of four. Grenville Secondary, St. George's Convent, St. George's, Anglican High School, St. George's Convent, Grenville. They're coming on the two hundred meter mark. Two hundred meter mark. St. Mark Secondary, McDonald College, out front. We just saw the completion there of the last flight of events, the of, of prelims, that is, for event number 49, the girls' 400 meters dash. And certainly, um, again, we continue to recognize that. So what we're looking at now is the replay of that previous heat, as we see out of lane number five from St. Joseph's Convent, um, Camille Phillip, in fact, she came in with the second fastest time, came in with the second fastest time uh, behind that of Emma McIntosh of the Anglican High School. Uh, but again, she held, she held, she held former Antoine um, to come away with the victory. Um, you saw the McDonald College kind of snuck in on the on the outside there to take second place. So we look at the official. Um, results from the Heat 4 5. Kamali Phillip of St. Joseph's Convent St. George stopping the clock. A minute 01.83. Peaches Panthru, who came in to split them up. Um, the McIntosh Phillip little con conversation in 1 minute 03.31. And Emma McIntosh of the Anglican High School, she took third position. So the table is set for the finals of this. Girls 400 meters junior, and distinctly, there's a distinct difference in terms of the time. Shafona Houston at 58.41, and then the next, the other times, the next best times 
uh, or one minute plus. Again, while we get ready for the 400 meters, that's the 400 meters dash in the junior boys. We continue to keep her appetites watered by some of the other events that's happening on the field. We have in progress the the boys, the high jump, and certainly we also have shot put in progress. But the lane assignments for the, we get ready for event 50, the boys 400 meters dash, uh, that event is on screen. Again, reminding you the record, 45.30 set back by the man himself back in, in just 2009. I, I think it, um, we can say that that record is probably safe today. We'll tell, we'll tell. <laughs> this is the junior boys. As we await the lane assignments. Junior boys, record in this event, 45.3 seconds. Set back in 2009 by our Olympian, Grenadian Kirani James of the Grenada Boys Secondary School. Heat one, running out of lane one, representing the J.W. Fletcher Catholic Secondary, Shem Smith. <laughs> lane two, representing the St. Andrews Anglican Secondary, Deron Sincere. Lane three, representing the Happy Hill Secondary, Nathan Hilaire. Lane four, representing the St. Davis Catholic Secondary, Keelon Moses. Lane 5, representing the Westmoreland Senior School, Sebastian Plantagenist. Lane 6, representing the St. Rose Modern Secondary, Shamar Andrew. Lane 7, representing the Bishop's College, Jamie Matthews. And running out of lane 8, representing the Grenada Christian Academy, Rickelson George. That's your start list. These are the starters for Heat 1. Of four, the 400 meter dash, junior boys. Um, it's on paper, Kado, this should be uh, quite a competitive race. They all seem to be coming in with similar times for this one. Should keep a nice speed for lead number four, coming in at a time of 50.11 seconds. The boys' 400 meter dash in the junior category. Early days yet, in the goal, 2023, day one, session one. They await the status orders. A gentle breeze blows across the stadium as they are off for the start of the 400 meters dash. Uh, let's keep our eyes peel. Um, from Grenada Christian Academy, you have young George that's motoring away down the back stretch. Bishop's College is also there on the inside from Randy Jones, also in the mix from the JW Fletcher. We have young Shem Smith. Let's see how this one pans out. It's 400 meters. It is a combination of speed, strategy, and poise. As they hit the top of the 100 meters, we are in the middle of the pack there from St. David's Catholic Secondary. It's young Moses. And Moses followed by the athlete, Mish Smith, from J.W. Fletcher. Uh, but it's a, he looks over his shoulders as he completes the and crosses the, fin the, the finish line. And... It's for Keylord Moses of St. David's Catholic. He came in with the fastest time. Um, but what was the, the, the event number 45? Event number 50, sorry. The boys 400 meters dash. So I, I think this went as expected. The, the Keylord Moses was expected to win this one. And then the others, they all had similar times coming into this event. And this is how this actually panned out. Again, very often when you, you look at the, the, the 400 meters, 
and there are some athletes who they have the luxury as, we've, as you see on the international level where guys are now sprinting the 400 and the 400s uh, but it's there are those who take a more tactical approach to it where they position themselves they start maintain position themselves and then they eventually strike but as you see the official the, the official times of this one kilo a bit slower that is entry time into the event he came in with a time of 51 um, but he stopped the clock at 52.34 and um, you have Nathan Hilaire of Happy Hill Secondary 53.37 and Shamal Andrew of St. Rose and taking in occupying the third position. Yeah, with about 20, 25 meters to go, um, I think it's fair to say that Moses shut the engine down. Yes, I mean, I think he, he understands, he understood what needed, what need, what needed to be done. Um, he, he's already won. He goes through automatically, conserve energy. Let's wait for round two as we get ready for put our eyes back onto the track. Heat two of four. And this one is certainly we be looking at what's happening out in the middle of the pack. Um, Quanel Peer, uh, he comes with the fastest time from the Grenada Boys Secondary, 51.51. And his world secondary, um, Khalil Lendo, in a time of 53.40. So that's, we'll see how this one pans out. Heat two of four. And certainly um, the excitement awaits. Lane three. Representing the St. Rose Modern Secondary, Izion Fraser. Lane four. Representing the Grenada Boys Secondary, Quanel Pierre. Lane five. Representing the Hillsborough Secondary, Khalil Landor. Lane six. Representing the Boca Secondary, Nicholas Frederick. Lane seven. Representing the Grenada Seventh-day Adventist Comprehensive, Joshua Fullerton. And running out of lane eight, representing the McDonald College, Cameron Jeffrey. That's your start list. Heat number two of four. 400 meter dash. Junior boys. A reminder that 53.96 is the time on the bubble. If you want to qualify for these finals, 53.96. Event number 50, boys 400 meters dash. St. Mark Secondary is there. Sass is there. St. Rose Mountain Secondary, GBSS, Hillsborough, Bishop's College, McDonald College. Event 50, heat 204, the boys 400 meters. And it's an all-even start. 400 meters dash. Let's see how this one unfolds as they make their way down the back stretch. McDonald's College, Cameron Jeffrey, taking the early push for this one. Boca Secondary, Nicholas Frederick, is also in the hunt. Let's see how this one unfolds as they they approach the 200 meters, 100 meter mark. It is Nicholas Frederick from the Boca Secondary. Frederick, who's motoring away out there in lane number six. Um, GBSS Quanel Pierre is trying to make a push for it. Um, but it's an easy win there for Nicholas Frederick from Boca Secondary, followed by unofficially from Quanel Pierre of the Grenada Boys Secondary School. This one now uh, is a more competitive one. And uh, let's see what the time looked like. It is good, though, that we've seen the more... Interqual has had its perennial um, com competitors. As we look at the replay, um, and it's Frederick, the young Frederick of the lane number six. Um, seemed a bit labored, though, in... His, his style of running. Yeah, it's 52 seconds. That's the, that's the fastest time to date. 
but of course um, Moses Moses really eased up in the, in the first heat so about 52 seconds that's good running again folks they, the athletes they come in with varied with with various with varied styles some are just happy to qualify they're just happy to qualify while others are probably more conscious of the clock yes but so again to date we can see the f the first three at least from this heat um, plus the winner of the last heat uh, the ones who would be on the bubble so to speak that's where your first that's where your top four would come from so far the first three in this heat and the, and the winner the first heat we continue to see things as they unfold down here at the Kumani James Athletic Stadium is Republic Bank into call 2023 and the live broadcast being facilitated by TNR Communication. It's a pay-per-view um, production and certainly you can WhatsApp a friend so they can start garnering some interest as we you continue your support for your favorite team, your, your favorite athletes, family and friends over the next couple of, of days. So this is heat number three or four. Heat number three or four. Heat three of four, 400 meter dash junior boys. Running on the lane one, representing the St. Mark Secondary School, Anson Aberdeen. Lane two, representing the McDonald College, Javad Nelson. Lane three, representing the Presentation Brothers College, Caden McQueen. Lane four, representing the St. David's Catholic Secondary, Tashawn Purcell. Lane seven, representing the Happy Hill Secondary, Delaney Patrice. And running out of lane eight, he three of four, representing the St. George's Institute, Ruben Lau Batista. That's your starting lineup. These are your starters for heat three of four. 400 meter dash. Junior boys. We see how this one peels up, pans out. Um, Tashawn Purcell comes in with the fastest qualifying time of 52 seconds. Adon Daniel. 53.34 lane four and five but let's not put out let's not count out McQueen from the presentation but his college that's a clean start and they are 400 meters dash junior boys early day still let's we give ourselves times for the race to develop St. David's is there There is Purcell in lane four. Daniel in lane five. Running on the outside is Labastita for St. George's Institute. Well, as they head to the final 100 meters, it is out of McDonald College. Javed Nelson. Naved Javed Nelson. He's been stretched there on his outside in lane number one by Anson Aberdeen. Aberdeen on the inside. He's probably just trying to. We'll wait for the official results from that one. Um, and this one developed a little bit. <laughs> and that's what we keep saying. There's always the, the, the anticipated results. And then there is the what unfolds and presents itself on the day. We're looking at the results and, and the replay. McDonald, McDonald's College's Nelson holding, holding his own. But there we see Anson Aberdeen in lane number one making a push. And so too, as we did say, McQueen from Presentation Brothers College. I think on official, we'll wait for the official results. Offic officially, it always was in fact Anderson Aberdeen from St. Mark's Secondary in the time of 53.80 um, seconds. Jovet Nelson, McDonald's College, 53.89. And Caden McQueen of the Presentation Brothers College, 54.37. Your top finishes, Antoine. So as it stands, um, 
our top four, uh, our top four finishers. Our top four finishers is um, uh, three from lane, from heat two, three from heat two, and two from heat two and two from heat one. Uh, so nobody uh, from heat number three would have made it into the as the fastest losers. Now heat number f this heat number four, one of the star one of the projected stars of this game, Ethan Sam, the GBSS, is in lane four. He's one of those that has been spoken of highly. And I think he's also on the on the, on the character team. He is on the character team in, in, in uh, quite a few events too. Wherever you are, those of you here at home, it is Intercold Day. Intercold 2023, the Republic Bank Intercold Championships. We're coming to you live here from the Kiwani James Athletic Stadium, the picturesque uh, Kiwani James Ath Athletic Stadium for what is session one, day number one of Intercold 2023 at Sydney, the day. Um, it's a day that has provided, has been provided with just sufficient cloud cover uh, and it's sort of so certainly augurs well um, for track and field and we've had the luxury of events on the track while simultaneously we have some 27 athletes that's, com that's competing in the high jump and there's also the short put that is in progress but we get ready for the next event on the track the boys 400 meters dash that's heat four or four the ones to look at four we keep our eyes on sam in lane number four that's ethan sam and joel clement from hillsborough secondary school 52.90 event number 50 the boys 400 meters dash into call 2023 Again, remind you that the top finisher, the first, the first place in each event, makes an automatically automatic qualification, and then the top two finishers, they go through. I can well imagine, Antoine, that if folks, wherever they are, while it is yet early days, there are some persons who don't, who don't wait for the, the, the meet, the championship to unfold. They, they come in with their own preconceived notions, their own natural biases, as you can well appreciate. And then there are those who certainly, they wait and see. But you, you hinted it just quite, quite nicely this morning as we wait for the introduction. Representing the Presentation Brothers College, Aidan McIntosh. Running over lane four, representing the Grenada Boys Secondary, Ethan Sam. Lane five, representing the Hillsborough Secondary, Jarrell Clement. Lane six, representing the Bishops College, Randy Jones. Lane seven, representing the St. John's Christian Secondary, Shady Augustine. And running out of lane eight, representing the J.W. Fletcher Catholic Secondary, Rodell Bowen. That's your starting lineup for the junior boys, heat four of four, 400 meter dash. On your mark. Heat four of four, prelims, 400 meters, juniors. This should be a good one. We have two Carifta selectees in this one. That's a clean start. They're up and they're off. The final of four heats, 400 meter dash, junior boys. On the outside, J.W. Fletcher Catholic secondary. On the inside, Hillsborough secondary. Grenada boys secondary. Presentation Brothers College is coming. They're going down the back straight. Hillsborough secondary making a move. Bishop's College chasing. 
We need a boys' secondary presentation, Brothers College. Come here on the bend. Come here on the bend. 150 to go. 400 meter dash. If they want to make it to the finals. 53 is the time to beat. Presentation, Brothers College. Here comes the GBSS. Here's Morris second on the outside. Bishop's College. But it's PBC. GBSS. PBC. GBSS. PBC. GBSS. GBSS. Unofficially taking this one. Ethan Sam of the Grenada Boys Secondary School. Qualifying automatically to this evening's finals. We await the time to see what the other qualifiers would look like. We await the time. Um it's one of those races, though, as we, as we look at the, at the replay, as they hit the top 100, it's sort of difficult. Everybody's well-measured presentation by this college is that GBSS in, in the mix, Hillsborough Secondary. And you're looking, though, and you're looking at um, Sam um, from the GBSS and McIntosh, where they, they're measuring each other. And you know what this was, that's what, what's giving rise to that? And we hinted to it, though. These are athletes that they... They've met each other. They understand each other's strength, um, Antoine. So officially, it's Ethan Sam. He stopped the clock at 51.10 seconds. And Aiden McIntosh of the Presentation Brothers College, 51.18. Randy Jones of Bishop's College, 51.99. Um, your winner and top two finishers for... Heat four or four of the boys, 400 meters dash and twine. Well, what we can safely say here in this, this was the fastest heat by, by a lot. This, <laughs> this was the fastest heat. And interestingly enough, in this race, both Sam and uh, Aiden McIntosh, they are both Carifta selectees and will be running in the four by 400 meters at, at Carifta, as, as well as um, our winner in, in heat one, uh, uh, Keelon Moses. And Nathan Hiller. That's our quartet right there. Nathan Hiller, Keelon Moses, Ethan Sam, and Aiden McIntosh. That's our four by four quartet for the for the Carifta games. And living up to their billings, they are all into the fa well. Um, Nathan Hiller seems to be on a bubble right now. Nathan Hiller seems to be on a bubble. We'd have to verify this if he's actually into the finals because the, the last heat heat four right. is in fact quite a, quite a quick heat but we are in fact going to wait for the official results as compiled by um the track by the game by the game's official and uh, Marcelo, we want to say thanks to you wherever you are you look at the intercall 2023 and within on screen now we are continuing with the boys shot put with the boys shot put again so happening simultaneously there is a short put uh, that is being taken that's taking place and we get a that's a shot now of the the bleachers um early early days yet for those of you that's probably questioning what in may your mind may unfold as a lack of interest in the sport it's and one we know that is the furthest thing from the truth it's tradition it is just tradition on day one and as you remember, it's day one, session, session one. And on day one, even as the, the day stretches on, you, you would recognize that more patrons, even more athletes, are going, to, are going to come in. But day two, we can tell you, it's going to tell a different story. A different story. And day three, well, it's, there's going to be a crescendo. Yeah, the tradition is that um, the, the young people would turn up on day one. Uh, it would be the form ones. Some form twos. Day three, form one, two, and three. And the third day, everybody. The whole full kit and kibbutz. Including past students. Including the, the past students. In the numbers. In the numbers, no doubt. Sometimes I feel, I, feel swear, I feel sorry for them. Just having to sit there. And it's not called the bleachers for no reasons. <laughs> they get a good bleaching. <laughs> a darkening more so though. But they, they come prepared for it. I think probably... By that, you say we continue to also keep our eyes. There's a short put that is in progress. That's a sh that's a short put. Uh, we, we'll give you an idea of um, who is in this event. It's a long list of young men in, in this event. It's a short put sub junior boys. We have 27 athletes in this one, 27, and they're representing all the schools. 
it's there it's where most of the schools I'm seeing maybe we have SATS, McDonald College, Gradient Christian Academy, JW Fletcher, Boca Secondary, SGI is in this one, St. Davis Catholic Secondary, Hillsborough Secondary, GBSS, uh, and PBC, and Westmoreland Secondary is also here. So Quite most of the schools are represented. Quite the field. Yes. Not in Gateway, but other than, other than Gateway, all all else seems to be represented here. Of course, on the male side, you're not going to see the St. Joseph convents in this one. But the build-up continu continues for what is anticipated to be three days of re excellence on the track and in the field. Intercall, the 55th edition of the championships. And we say thanks to Republic Bank, who's, who, certainly, who certainly has done an excellent job in ensuring that we get an opportunity to promote our young athletes on okay. the great stage. As soon as we get an update on the short put or the other field events that are taking place right now, is we have the sh short put for junior, sub-junior boys. And simultaneously, we have the girls' discuss throw for senior girls. That's that's also that's also be, um, happening at the same time with 25 athletes. Again, this is very 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 nourishing. 25 athletes among the senior ranks. It's it's, it's nourishing. Generally, we, we we don't have these numbers for senior senior athletes. Anyway, we are back on the track. We are back on the track. Event number 51. It's going to be heat one of four of the the girls' 400 meters dash in the senior division. Um, the game's record set by Kishara, Kishara George and back in 2001, 54.31 seconds. Are we on the track? Event 51, 400 meter dash, senior girls. Heat one of four. Running out of lane one, St. Mark's secondary, Kasima Langain. Lane two, representing St. Joseph's Convent, Grenville, Jadine Batiste. Lane four, representing St. Joseph's Convent, St. George's, Shante Augustine. Lane five, representing J.W. Fletcher Catholic secondary, Cargell Frederick. Lane 6, representing the Anglican High School, Rhea Flanders. And Lane 7, representing the Grenada Christian Academy, Daniel Crony. Those are the starters. Heat 1 of 4, 400 meter dash, senior girls. On your mark. Stand, everybody. Joseph Convent St. George. It's Shanti is uh, another of our Carifta selectees. And and they see coming with the fastest time. Back to the track. Event 51, the girls 400 meters. And as you said, Antoine, we keep our eyes peeled in the middle of the pack. Shanti Augustine. She comes into this one with a qualifying time of 57.21 seconds. Let's see. Shanti Augustine from the St. Joseph's Convent. 
Rhea Flanders is also making an early move for it. Running out of lane number six. Anglican High School, Flanders. Shanti Augustine, St. Joseph's Convent, St. George. Cool, well measured strides as she hit the top of the 100 meters. It's Augustine. Quite a cool, measured run from her, Antoine, as she heads for home. Nice, strong. Uh, no surprises in this one, um, Kado. Uh, we expected Shanti Augustine. She had, she have had a remarkable season to build up to this intercolon Carifta uh, games. In fact, um, and they. St. Joseph Convent St. George Sports. Uh, she, she broke a number of long standing records. Indeed, yes. So we, ex we expect good things from this young lady at the, at the, the Carifta Games. As you watch the replay, what I, what I like about, about her, she has a well measured, calm composure. She knows her, her ability, she understands what is happening on the field. And certainly, she's just a matter of executing on the day. And that is exactly what she did. And with all the noise, the, the at least from, from Rhea Flanders from Anakin High School, she had a good run also. Indeed, she had a, she had a good run so to complete the top two for Heat 1 of 4. 1 0 0 7 4. the 50 50 edition of the Republic Bank Intercall 2023. And certainly, uh, the ses session one, day number one, and we can assure you as the hours progress progresses and the days certainly as well, um, what we've seen today would be a tales of two different proportions uh, when you come to tomorrow and certainly Antoine on Friday, on Thursday, when the Calvaries, <laughs> they come out, they come out with their horns, their flutes, they Listen, the, I mean, I know you and I, we've had our own experiences of what it was years gone by, uh, but certainly, I, I think every school child ought to experience an intercall at some point in time or for their life in secondary school. I, sh I, I share that view. That's why it was so unfortunate that some kids would have gone through secondary school without experiencing an intercall, really, because we have been off real competitive intercall for about four years. Yes, but... If you miss it this year, it's no fault of your own. The pandemic as it is has given way. Um, and while we say it's not over in its entirety, COVID as it is, but certainly we're here enjoying the glorious, the, the picture setting of the Kirani James Athletic, Athletic Stadium for session one, day one, intercall 2023. High jump in progress. We have the short put also in progress. And as we look in to the immediate knee on the screen, we get it ready for heat. Two of four. The girls 400 meters dash in the senior division. Lane two, representing the McDonald College, Francesca Henry. Lane three, representing the Anglican High School, Curdine Phillip. Lane four, representing the St. Davis Catholic Secondary, Kamisha Dominic. Lane six, representing the J.W. Fletcher Catholic Secondary, Janisha Hosford. And lane seven, representing the St. Andrews Anglican Secondary, K.D. Simon. Those are your starters. He two of four in the senior girls, 400 meter dash. A reminder, one minute, 14.53 seconds is the bubble time you're trying to beat if you want to get into these finals. The record in this event, 54.53 seconds. On your mark. Event 51. In the senior division, the girls 400 meters. 
keep your eyes in lane number four. Kamisha Damnik. She has had a good season. She comes with a time of 58.20 seconds. And they're off. Clean start. 400 meters. 400 meters in the girls' senior. As you look at them, as they the race on falls, down the back stretch. From St. Davis Catholic, Kamisha. Yes, that's Kamisha Dominic. Also in there from the Anglican High School, it's Philip. McDonald's College's Francesca Henry is also in the mix. That's the top three. Let's see how this race unfolds. Uh, but it is the favorite in the race that continues continue to hold her own. Kamisha Dominic as they head for home. Dominic out of lane number four. It is Dominic out of lane number four. Trying to make a comeback, running out of lane um, number three. It is Philip, but I think it's going to be an easy one as she heads towards the finish line. Antoine, it's Kamisha Dominic out of lane number four, um, completing, pulling the tick, taking the, the, the top position in the seat. No surprise? No surprise. It's, it's true to form in this one. Uh, she has had a good season in the build up to, this, to these games. She has had a, she had a good season. Some they come, they deliver, others they disappoint. But as I was saying to someone, the intercall game, sports as it is, just participating is indeed its own reward. And for those just being here, as we look at the, at, at, at the replay, it was quite a cool, calm, measured, calculated run out of lane number four um, by the athletes from St. Davis Catholic, Commission Dominic, and Sydney Antoine. A you can good only time. assume, yes. And you can only assume that she, 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 she feels she will be pleased with her performance as she sets her eye on the final round. Yes, this is the fastest heat so far. 59.48. 59.48. And uh, McDonald's College's Francesca Henry. Um, the time of 100.77 0, 0 seconds. And Kadeen Phillip from the Anglican High School, 101.20 seconds. Now in this, in the next heat, the uh, Ali Agid Harry. This is an athlete who have had a remarkable season old show from St. David's Catholic Secondary. So we, we should expect good running from Agid uh, Harry in this third heat. And we sort of hinted to it, we continue to hint to it that up until now when we've gone through the heat, we've seen you can't in any way say this one school, Antoine, is going to win. It continues to be a mix. Uh, some we anticipated. Um, in the boys, there's there the the perennial contenders, the GBSS, the SAS, there's the Presentation Brothers College. You've seen the McDonald, the McDonald College, Boca Secondary. You look at what's what's happening in in the girls, convent in St Andrews as the defending champions, Anglican High High School as one of the perennial contenders, and certainly convent again. They continue to see that mix of athletes that certainly in no way form allows you to start gauging and saying too early. You know what? This is where the games are is, is, is actually heading. And I think it just really speaks well to the organizers and the owners of the game. So what Intercall has really and truly evolved itself into. And, and certainly for this edition, Third position. that is so true. We're back onto the track. we getting ready. Event number 51, the girls 400 meters dash. And certainly the man Jason Skeet is going to make his way back in just a bit. Event 51, girls 400 meters dash. The field events continue, the high jumps of junior boys in progress. The discus senior girls into their final rounds. The long jump junior girls making their paces and the sub junior shot put for the boys. But we continue on the track with the three of four senior girls. The three of four senior girls. 400 meter dash. Running out of lane two, representing the St. Andrews Anglican Secondary, Tara Joseph. Lane four, 
representing the St. Davis Catholic Secondary, Aliyah Gidari. Lane 5, representing the Hillsborough Secondary, Norlana Harry. Lane 6, representing the Happy Hill Secondary, Amia Harris. Lane 7, representing the St. Joseph's Convent, Grenville, Joshani Fortune. Those are the starters in heat three or four, senior girls, 400 meters. So that you have the late assignments for the upcoming event. Antoine, I'm not a man of luck and turns and, and bets, but if I had to make a reasonable, calculated <laughs> determination, I would probably, I think even Jason would probably even pitch in on this one. We probably would put our chances on young Gay Harry. That's a, that's a good one, actually. Um, and Gay Harry, incidentally, is one of our character selectees. Not in this event, but but one of our character selectees. In fact, she's down to do the javelin and the hep at, at Carifta. Good athlete. Had a very good season. Let's see. It's a girl's 400 meters dash. 400 meters as they. They make their way down the back stretch. It's Gihari running out of lane number four. Also in there from J.W. Fletcher. We have St. Davis is also there. Yes, that's Gihari in lane number four. Let's see as they hit the top of the and they make their way home. It's Gihari seems quite measured. Uh, not much seems to any challenge to be offered coming either from the left or from the right. And she's all on her own. 400 minutes. Gihari, and certainly it's just establishing her presence as she pulls away from the rest of the pack. Um, unofficially, it's an easy win there for her. Um, stopping at the clock, it went officially is 1 minute 0 1.7 seconds. We wait for the official time from the field. Uh, but indeed, she lived true to form, Antoine. True and to form. Came away with an easy victory. Easy victory. And as expected, pretty good athlete she, she is. And one of those athletes that do very well in the, in the multi-disciplines. So it's Intercall 2023. We're coming to you live along here from the King Randy James Athletic Stadium. And certainly, we're getting ready to, to make two changes. One, we're getting ready for a commercial break that, 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 that is due. And in the meantime, we make a change in the commentary team. Jason Skeet rejoins us as we continue our live coverage here at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium of Intercall 2023. But first, we take the commercial break. Have your family or friends ever needed cash now, but you are nowhere close to give it to them directly? With the cardless cash feature from Republic Bank Online and your mobile phone, it is hassle-free and convenient to send money to anyone, including yourself, using the Republic mobile app. Simply log into your account, access the cardless feature, enter the amount you want to transfer, and using the access code provided, the cash can be withdrawn instantly from a designated Republic Bank ATM without a card. Republic Bank Cardless Cash is convenient at your fingertips. To learn more about our cardless cash features, visit republicgrenada.com for more details. Special terms and conditions apply. Republic Bank, we're the one for you. Home is easy as one, two, three. Thinking about your new home? Think easy. Think a Republic Bank Home Easy Loan. Think affordable. Think convenience. Think Republic. Home is easy as one, two, three. Republic makes home easy. Wow, that was such a breeze. Oh, yeah. um, my name is Jason Skeet, together with Joseph Cador and a host of others into call 2023 live back at the National Stadium, the Kirani James Athletic Stadium in beautiful Spice Country, Grenada, the Mecca sporting event in this wonderful country. And so many superstars would have gone through these gates. We're getting ready now for the lane assignments of the 
third heat, I think it is, in the girls' 400 meters. It's Joseph Garot. The girls' 400 me meters. Um, Jason, thank you. and Welcome back. And as we continue with it, Interqual 2023. Finals, and the next best four times, the next best four times will join them in this evening's finals. Lena Simons, heat four of four. Running out of lane two, representing the McDonald College. Verandel Roberts, lane three, representing St. Andrews Anglican Secondary. Arona Cape, lane four, representing the St. Joseph's Convent, St. George's. Amir Samuel, and lane seven, representing the Boca Secondary School. Mary Manwaring, that's your start list for Heat 4 of 4. Senior girls, 400 meter dash. All right, so the Heat 4 of 4 in the girls' senior 400 meters. Don't forget the two fastest times from each heat will progress, and the finals will be ran off this afternoon. Uh, we've got some updates to bring to you in uh, the form of a new record which was established in the female category, St. David's Catholic Secondary School, of course, uh, the feature school right there in the first round of the Senior Girls Discuss. The Senior Girls Discuss, Jamila Nicholas, in the first round, she eclipsed everybody with a throw of 33.24, and then she went on to break the record, a long-standing record, uh, the record of 36.64 was eclipsed, and she did that by some distance, a new record 37.27 meters. So Jamila Nicholas of the St. Davis Catholic Secondary School in a fourth throw, breaking a 1996 established record by Kathy Ann Hopkins, and that record is now in the win, and it belongs to Jamelia Nicholas. Well, as anticipated, I did a call, come the day, come the athletes. Jason, there's always the expectation that records will be broken, and certainly as athletes, they come to set their mark on the games and etch their own little, in their own little way, uh, stamp their, their big history as it relates to Intercall 2023. The 55th edition, though, and certainly we have to say, Jason, that over the years it has developed quite a rich tradition and legacy. Of course, many folks, as we said earlier on, would be no doubt prized in understanding that they went through these gates. Even some of our international superstars would have gone through these gates. Anderson, Peters, Kurt, Felix, um, Josh Botan, Kirani James, Rondell Bartholomew, Arlene Francique, and a host of others who represented Grenada long before them didn't get to the medal podium on the international scene as they wanted to, but no doubt represented Grenada well. Uh, Eugene Licorice um, and a few others, Dylan and Twine, Dave Oliver, Dylan Oliver and Dave and Twine, remember those? Uh, also, we had folks like Brian Pitt back in the day, George Goatee Robinson. Quite uh, a luscious history. Yeah. Um, a few well. And uh, Leon DeCoto. Robbie Celestine, Rhonda Henry, uh, Hazel and Regis has done very well representing Grenada uh, on, on the international scene. And th all these uh, superstars would have gone through these gates right here uh, at the Intercall. Some of them are the old Queen's Park. That was, a, well, that's a whole other story <laughs> for another different day. But, um, you know, they would have gone through the gates of the Intercall. And uh, no doubt these young folks here will be looking to make their mark to stamp their place in history. I was just about to say, Jason, while many would think that you're 16, when you start referring to the old Queen's Park, it, it, it only what, exposes your hand when it comes to your age. We, we, we've, we've all had fond memories of the, old, of the old Queen's Park, and in one way or the other, the memories that's been etched in our minds as it relates to intercall. Each of us, individual memories that provides a kaleidoscope of really, really true excitement of colors for what is yet to un un unveil and unfold itself, Jason, over the next three days. All right. Well, um, we've uh, got a whole lot to talk about. Sherry Ann Noel is down on the field, and she, too, has a whole lot to talk about. Um, we just had a record being broken in the female discus. Sherry Ann, um, you've got talent with you? 
Of course, I have the first gold medalist of the day. I have with me Amelia Nicholas. She is one of the senior athletes out of the St. David's Catholic Secondary School. Now, Jamelia threw a record-breaking distance of 37.98 meters to erase Katyan Hopkins' 1996 record of 36.64 in the discus. Uh, congratulations to you and speak to us about this particular moment for you. Thank you very much. Um, well, this moment, um, I'm very happy. <laughs> yeah. How did you arrive at this stage? Um, speak to us about the process, the preparation, the coaches, the discipline. Okay. Well, I've been into throwing for well, since primary school, and. I did five years of training in the Anglican High School. I started training with the track blazers under Coach Paul Phillip. And in preparation for intercall games, we had training morning and evenings. So, yeah, I could say that the work paid off. It was difficult, but yeah, made it. What's next for Amelia? Well, I'm looking forward to going to Carifter, but. I didn't make the standard, so maybe next year, looking forward to it. Other games are looking forward to showing over 40. And yeah. <laughs> well, congratulations to you. And as you said, hard work definitely pays off. That was the first gold medalist of the 55th Republic Bank sponsored intersecondary school games. The athlete from the St. David's Catholic Secondary School, Amelia Nicholas, 37.98 meters. Girls, discuss senior. It's now back to our commentary team. Yeah, well, I remember Bernard um, Antoine saying earlier on that that record is a safe record when we had our little discourse earlier on in the, in the morning. And uh, well, <laughs> Well. Nothing is safe, clearly we can see nothing is safe because um, she, she went, I mean this is not a record that is broken just right there, I mean it, it cleared at least one meter, yes. so I mean she has actually shown that, and she's pretty young, she's still developing obviously, mm -hmm. and um, she has the, the potential clearly to do a whole lot more, so I do believe that she can you know, get into uh, the Carifta team next time around and even take this thing to another level, Jamelia, um, doing really good there the one thing that we, that we i think we all agree on is there's a there's a hunger there's a, a thirst there's an appetite for for victory for athletes to come to the fore and deliver come the day and i think what we've seen again what you think in terms of of a safe a safe record certainly with the appetite that these athletes are bringing to the games jason you know what the sky's the limits yeah all right, well, uh, a record that uh, stood there long enough, as a matter of fact, stood there from since 1996. And uh, Bernard Antoine will be beating himself right now because nothing is safe. Nothing um, is safe. sherry -Ann is going to give us some details a little bit later on about what we're seeing down on the pit now. It's the, we're still in the high jump for the senior boys, I think it is. Yes. And uh, sherry -Ann is, is following that, so she's going to give us an update in... A minute or two but in the meantime we've got some uh, track events to run off we're still waiting for the start of the fourth heat in the girls 400 meter yeah the girls 400 meter senior we're waiting on heat number four for that sitting in third from the anglican high school shifwana houston with a jump of 4.85 meters from the St. Joseph's Convent, St. Andrew, Zania Belfon. And currently leading the field with a jump of 4.89 meters from the Happy Hills Secondary School, Elena DiCotto. Ladies and gentlemen, your top eight finalists for the girls, Long Jump Junior. All right, so the, the sand pit is going to be activated in just a little bit. The girls' long jump is coming up, and uh, that, too, is going to be a very interesting one. No doubt. I mean, all the athletes, you see them, they seem quite pumped, quite ready uh, to represent their schools. And some of them, it just be, goes beyond the school. I mean, there are athletes who have their own personal um, desire for success beyond at intercall, and certainly they're here. Um, you've seen a lot, lot of the colors, uh, um, Jason, 
athletes are here to represent. And certainly, as you said, a little bit of excitement in the pits in just a while. We see here um, there's also some excitement taking place with the with the high jump. And we couldn't help uh, but acknowledging the earlier myself and, 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 and Antoine, um, the large field of contenders, Jason, that was, that's been competing um, in some of the non-traditional areas that would be televised as part of Intercall Games. Yeah, well, Intercall Games has definitely grown. I mean, uh, it has grown leaps and bounds. And, and many folks who would have started, as I mentioned, from the days of the old Queen's Park would, would, would know and understand that transition, the transition that we've made. And with, with the fact that Grenada, you know, now on the international scene, when it comes to uh, track and field, um, mm -hmm. I, I think anything really I is not a surprise anymore. Nothing's a surprise from the days of the, the wooden bleachers at Queen's Park to here an internationally acclaimed stadium, the Kirani James Athletic Stadium. It certainly says, shows that during the process, progress of time, we've grown and we've certainly we've allowing ourselves here in 2023 to provide you this coverage here of Intercall 2023 and um, pay-per-views. We want to say thanks to TNR Communications for ensuring and bringing this coverage to you live where you are. We see you getting a view of the bleachers, early days yet, some of the um, athletes that have come out. Um, I'm seeing a mix of uh, mostly athletes from the Anglican High School that's within our, within our view now, um, who are boasting themselves of having been here on day number one to be part of the of the intercall conversation. Uh, we seen within the review we high jump is all is in progress. And so then we'll as as time progresses we we take you down the field to get a better appreciation as to where uh, Jason, where the, the, the competitors and the jumpers where they are as it relates to the high jump. Uh, but no doubt as we inching closer to the end of s session one, day one of Intercall 2023. It's indeed shaping its itself up. Um, see the athletes there. He's just putting his mark for his run-up. Um, he gets it. And Jason, is this in, interesting as we as we look at it, we look at the athletes, we see some of them, they get into their pre-runs, their rituals, you know, and that's as to where and how they are going to deliver and attack the jump. And, but certainly, and for just being at Intercall, I mean, I say to very to a lot of athletes, just being at Intercall, Jason, and being able to participate, winning is one thing, but I think participation by itself, being part of the entire environment and that makes Intercall what it is, I mean, that is a success all by itself. Yeah, um, well, these are what the games are about, so, um, you know. The games are made of the participants. The, it's the sights, the songs, and the colors of Intercall 2023. In the Republic Bank, Intercall, 55 glorious years of excellence um, being unfolded right here at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium. Um, early days, it's day one, and we certainly we can well appreciate as the days advance to today advances itself and the other days it presents itself that we will be looking for some malt watering and really 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 superb and spectacular um, days of track and field excellence here at the Kiwani James Athletic Stadium. But so the you wherever you are again reminding you that the coverage is a pay-per-view one and you want to appreciate that you can ensure that you call a friend let them know that intercall wherever you are intercall is available pay-per-view and comes to you in the kind courtesy certainly of tnr communication you can either decide to get yourself a day pass or you get yourself a season pass uh for certainly what has been and what is really 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 um a really, really exciting build-up that is to the next couple of couple of couple of days. Um, great athletes, great anticipation of of excellence by the, by the different schools. And but Jason, while we 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 we, we look we look at the jump door, and I know each and every one of us, if you were to, you were to, were to go back the throwback, any 
what are some of the memories you've, you've had of, in, of Intercall in your days at the Presentation Brothers College? Going to Intercall and having fun. <laughs> That's a nice way. To, that's a nice way. To, a nice way to summarize it. Yeah, you know. going to Intercall, having fun, and um, just being there to support. Um, Intercall wasn't really my thing. I athletics was more fun for me. <laughs> um, I, I had my sights set on other sports. Okay, but I think for all of us, the ex the, ex the excitement and the anticipation of Intercall is something that lives on with us years after we've transitioned the walls of our various secondary schools. But high jump in progress. Fold attempt there, as indicated by the official. Wherever you are, you can f you can you can feel free to be part of this conversation. And let them know that Intercall 2023 is in fact on. It's a TNR communication production. And we're coming to you live from the world famous, the picturesque, um, Kirani James Athletics Stadium, nestled. Um, I think there's no arguments over the beauty that the Kirani James Athletic Stadium provides. We have the Dabo Hills, the, the ocean. Um, that constant breeze that covers the face of the blows through the, the pavilion and it really really and truly today's a bit of a cloud cover that just provides just about the adequate um, bit of a covering for the athletes down here at the national stadium we're keeping in mind three days Twenty six events. And we can promise you that as the day lengthens the meet stretches into other days that the students are going to be out, so too would be the supporters of the individual schools. But we get them ready to polarize on to activities back on the track. For what should be event number he four or four event number fifty one. That should be the final flight of the girls four hundred meters dash. All right, well we had the starters list already and uh, now the field has been cut down to one, two, three, four, five four actually from what we're seeing on screen so no one in lane five six and eight so we have uh roberts cape samuel and uh, man warren the final heat in the girls 400 meter senior and uh, cape seems to have some serious intentions, but uh, I'm quite sure Roberts of McDonald College, well, she's asking a few questions here now. Um, they, they're going to just um, run through this one because they understand that the top two who come through will go into, uh, into the finals. So um, clearly Roberts now, v uh, Vernandel Roberts, she's uh, clearly in command and with about uh, just uh, just uh, under 100 meters to go uh, she's going to slip into cruise control right now and just allow the momentum to carry her across the finish line no need to really pump and go through and exert any serious energy but it's basically a trot for her now a slow race <laughs> for that i could tell you yeah and uh, so nothing really surprising there because uh Vernandel roberts of mcdonald college um you know, she went into this one, this heat, uh, as the favorite. Doesn't even seem too jaded, really. Not at all. Just a walk in the park. I think a walk in the park is almost an understatement for what she just did. As you look at the, at, at the replay, hit it home, quite calm, well composed. Um, I like her awareness of appreciating where she is in the race. Um, she's clearly um, away from the rest of the pack. And all she needed to do was just to stroll away over the finish line to make it official 
for what was the final heat, heat four or five of event number 51. As you look at the official times, um, for Roberts of McDonald's College, a time of 1 minute 02.14 seconds. Manwarin um, in second place, 1 minute 07.96. And Amir Samuel of, of St. George's Convent, St. George, a time of 1 minute 08.63. Yes, so that was the official times there. The end of event number 51, the girls 400 meters dash in the senior category, Jason. Yeah, well, I think what was going to be interesting now is the, the times that uh, these young ladies would have run because uh, that is going to impact on the lane assignments. Correct. So um, right now, uh, Kamisha, Kamisha Dominique of the St. Davis Catholic Secondary School, she had one of the fastest qualifying times, 58.20, and uh, she would no doubt be looking at a nice comfortable middle lane for the finals. That's always a good position to find yourself in. So when you run in the, the preliminaries, it's basically, yes, to qualify, but you also want to make sure that you run to secure lane a assignments. good lane. Anywhere between lanes um, four and six is, is really a decent um, lane for you. We've got the, we the, the lane assignments for the boys 400 meters now coming up. In the senior, that's in the senior, senior, senior division. So we go to you wait for the lane assignment, so the upcoming event. We look for out of lane number one. It is Joel Ann Langine as you take the lane assignments. On your mark. All right, so Langine of Boca Secondary in one, Williams of Sass in two, Williams of uh, St. David's in three, Jules of uh, um, Jules in four, and uh, Holas of PBC in five, in, in, uh, in seven. So one, three, four, six, and seven. First heat, boys, 400-meter senior. Uh, the, 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 the time here coming in to this one, the boys are 400 meter dash senior. Elisha Williams of St. Davis Catholic Secondary School, 47.76 is uh, qualifying time. So, hmm, something to look forward there. Uh, St. Davis Catholic Secondary, that's Williams. Williams and uh, Williams, <laughs> Williams and Williams, Williams of Sass, Williams of St. Davis Catholic Secondary School. They both will qualify once they hold on to their own, but uh, Elisha Williams of St. Davis Catholic Secondary School wants to walk away with the bragging rights for the heats and find himself in a good position. He ran 47.76 to get into this one, and let's see what his time will be like in this first heat. Well, we look to see how it, how it unfolds. I remember seeing him at um, the National Champs, and certainly he offered a, a most watering delivery on that day. And we'll see as, as the evening unfolds, as we get into, into, into the finals, as to wait for the rest of the other events, the rest of the field, to do that delivery in the prelims. Uh, but certainly, as you look at him, Jason, certainly he understood what needed to be done. He came conserve a bit of energy because he, he, he understands that some of the other heats are really 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 going to go to go to offer some challenges as we look at heat number two where you have the likes of Tegan Peterkin and Kevin Martin from um, Wester Hall and the GBSS 48 and 27 seconds but the official time on for that one Elisha Williams from St. Davis Catholic Secondary 49.86 seconds Lennon Williams from SAS 52.31 Nathan Hollis of the PBC 53.50, you have Jordan Langine as we look at the replay on screen, um, and there um, with Williams. Easy run there for him.
All right, so we're getting ready for the second heat, the second of four heats. And this one, we've got some names worthy of being mentioned in this one. 48.27, take on Peterkin. Uh, he came through the ranks from the days of prep right up to where he's at now as senior. He, uh, he has always been a force to be reckoned with, Tegan Peterkin. And also we've got uh, Kevin Martin, 59.33 of uh, Westmoreland Secondary School. Um, so that right there is going to tell the story. Um, a, full, a full clip from one to seven. Uh, let's go down to the field now for the lane assignments. They, well, they already did that. Didn't even realize we missed it. But uh, St. Louis of GW Fletcher in one, Thomas of McDonald in two, Frederick of Happy Hill in three, Peter King of GBSS in four, Martin of Westmoreland in five, Sutton of PBC in six, and Dakota of uh, uh, Bishop's College in seven. This is going to be a quick one. Let's see how it unfalls. The... 400 meters so dash, senior. Next event on the track, the boys high jump. The field is now down to three athletes. On your mark. Peter Kin also being selected to represent Grenada at the upcoming Carifta Games. He's going to be yes. running the 4x1 and the 4x4. Four four. So this is really a pet event for him. an easy trot so far even Steven some separation there but uh, look out because um, this is where things are gonna start separating we're gonna start separating the speed from the slow now Peterkin seems to be in charge he seems to be in control of his race and himself it's a nice stride good comfortable confident stride stretching forward um, a challenge being mounted there by DeAndre uh, Louis St. Louis JW Fletcher but uh, Peter Kane is looking, all over, looking over his shoulders, just wanting to establish his position. <laughs> so I, think, I think he took, he took a little bit for granted there, Peter Kane. And he started to shut down just a little too early. And St. Louis of J.W. Fletcher yes. said, you know what? Um, nah, not today. But uh, all's well that ends well, he would think. But that should teach him a lesson. Should, in fact, teach him a lesson. It's never over. It's never over until you've crossed the finish line. And he seemed to have a difficulty in trying to position exactly where the athlete was. Shutting him a little, a little bit too early, Jason. And certainly, you would hope that that is something you would remedy as he goes into the second half. But we look for the offic official time on this one. Tegan Peterkin from the GBSS, 50.68 seconds. And DeAndre St. Louis of JW Fletcher, 50.94. Um, Thomas from McDonald's College, 51.78. Randy Frederick, 54.84 seconds. As you look on the replay, he was pushed again there from... J.W. Fletcher, and certainly you would assume as he goes into, makes his way to the final, that he would love appreciate that you have to run right through the tape. We also seen with an overview, there's the long jump for senior girls that's in progress. That field has been dwindled down to eight athletes. And we're also making our way back to see continued action on the tracks um, for the boys' 400 meters. And this, in fact, will be heat three or four. Again, reminding you that the top athlete in each of the flights of heats will advance, followed by the top two in each event, and the top four best times automatically they are going to go through. All right, so heat three, uh, Rohan Bernard, uh, Jahim Tika, Bishop's College, Shaquan Olive, St. Mark's Secondary, second Kyle Victor, GBSS, Chad Samuel, um, Hillsborough Secondary, 
Joshua Greenwich, J.W. Fletcher, and Junior Alexander. Grenville Secondary School in lane one, Rohan Bernard of the Grenadian Christian Academy. So you have a Grenada late assignments for the upcoming event. Again, it's always happy when you see some of the non-traditional schools that they have athletes that are representing, representing them. And Christian Academy, uh, certainly one of the newcomers to Interqual as it is in its traditional sense over 55 years. But Interqual 2023. The 55th edition, sponsored by Republic Bank. Bernard, Tika, Olive, Victor, Samuel, Greenwich, Alexander. Lane assignments for your upcoming event. Record on this one, Jason, 47.40. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. That Chad Samuel of the Hillsborough Secondary School in a tight situation he's between a rock and a hard place and he doesn't have a sledge ah this is not what he anticipated yep he uh, his weight was transferred too much in front of him and that induced the false start no way he was contemplating trying to jump the gun in a 400 meters it's not the type of race to even consider that but i think his his weight was just transferred just a little too much in front of him and he has found himself in a tight situation, being credited with the false start. I what does that mean for him? I think the agony, the, the anguish on his face tells the story all by itself as he awaits the official response on the field. <laughs> well, the, the anticipation of death is worse than death itself. So, no doubt, this is his dying moment. He is there waiting because he understands the story and what could very well be his fate. Uh, but the other athletes, uh, a wake-up call for them as well. Um, it, it's always, it's, it's, it's sometimes very unfortunate. It's just, just a transfer of weight, you know, trying to, to lunge forward and, uh, you know. So he's got a warning. He's got a warning. Another he's life got a warning. Life. It's uh, a green card, so he's got a warning. The red card would have spelled um, out you go, but uh, he's got the opportunity to make some amends, so he's got a green card. That's a warning, so no doubt. Um, hmm. He is going to thank his lucky stars. Oh, he's, received a, he's received a lifeline, as they say. Here's Borough Secondary School. That's... Uh, Chad Samuel in lane five. This time everything works well. 400 meter senior boys, um, heat number three of four. No major separation just yet. Out in lane seven, that's Alexander, but Alexander would know that he's in a very difficult lane. He's, so he is pushing and giving it just about everything he's got. Does he have it to sustain? Because uh, running out there in lane seven is a task, but clearly, clearly he is not taking anything for chance. And uh, Junior Alexander of Grenville Secondary. Finishes comfortably. He's followed by Kyle Victor of GBSS in lane four. So um, it was a, a quick race. I believe it's under a minute from, from what I can gather. But uh, this young man, he ran an 
awesome race, said Junior Alexander of Grenville Secondary School. He left nothing for chance, understood that it was a heat, and by the time he got to the top of the street away, heading into home, he was clearly out in front, um, exerted a little bit more energy than he, anticipated, than he wanted to, but um, when you run 49.76 in the heat to qualify out in lane 7, um, it means that you've worked yourself to getting a good, comfortable lane on the inside for the finals, and that's a good thing. Real monster run, no doubt. Stopping the clock at 49.76. Um, Kyle Victor, second place, 51.9 from 9.2. Um, Joshua Greenish from JW Fletcher, 53.68. I think if you ask me, Jason, he probably surprised the field. I, I think as running out of the outside lanes, you, you have to take something special. And we've seen it at the international level. Uh, running out of lane 8, 7. I think not much person they anticipated. That's okay. When we hit the band, he's, going, he's probably going to, he's, he's going to give in. But certainly he understood, listen, I'm going to run for my life. If that's what it takes, that's what I'm going to do. And you pull out a victory in the heat. We'll see how that translates into the finals. So that was a completion of heat 3 or 4. We get ready for the next heat on the, on the day. Completing the, uh, that suite of events in event number 52. Uh, the boys 400 meters dash in the 400 meters All right, well um, the time being of the essence so the house announcer is going to skip all the lane assignments so what we're looking at basically uh, Joshua Collins of Hillsborough Secondary School 52.70 we've got qualifying times also for uh, Pe Jimmy Penny of Boca Secondary School, 53.48. So um, they're two to watch. Um, Junior Alexander just ran 49.76. Um, they'll be looking at that. They understood that he had to run for his life coming up, running out of lane seven. And the anticipation is building because this finals this evening is going to tell, it's going to start to separate the men from the boys, so they say, yeah, well. the 400 meter finals. It's going to set a tone for what happens on day two as we end day number one, but we'll be quite a long way away from that, Jason. Nishon Hostin of uh, Happy Hill Secondary School in two. Nobody's in lane one. Ashton Daniel of St. David's Catholic Secondary in three. Joshua Collins of Hillsborough Secondary in four. Jamie Penny of Boca Secondary in five. Romel Charles of St. Rose Modern Secondary in six. And uh, Sass, Joachim Sylvester in seven so two through seven hosting daniel collins penny charles and sylvester official just offering some words of advice to to young collins who for some reason has opted not to use the status block. He ran 52, boys 400 meters dash. It's a good clean start. They are running up in the final heat before four. 53 is the time to meet in this one. They're chasing a spot in the final. Senior boys, 400 meter dash. Then I'm going to make a second year of one. Then Rose Warren, second year. Walker's there. Jimmy Penny. Happy in second year on the inside. Here's Moro, second year. Nice and smooth. Then David's Catholic, second year. It's a 200 meter mark. They come here with Sass on the outside. Sass on the outside. Joshua Sylvester. Then Rose Warren, second year. Another good run coming out of lane seven. Fantastic run coming out of lane seven from uh, Joachim Sylvester of Sass. Yeah, we just saw it and uh, here he comes. Uh, well, here we go again. And uh, lengthening the distance. And I uh, think he was running for a personal best there. He treated this one as if it was uh, a, a finals. He took nothing for chance. Joachim Sylvester of Sass uh, running out of lane seven and uh, stretching the field. 
and doing pretty well. Looks a little bit jaded, but he understood his position, was very aware of where he needed to be, didn't take anything for chance, and by the time he got to the straightaway, there was absolutely no catching him. We thought that he would have actually gone into cruise control, but uh, he saw, I'm quite sure, what happened to take on Peter King earlier on, where yes. Peter King had some fighting to do. So um, Sylvester said, no, not me, 49.07. And uh, that's the fastest qualifying time in the boys' 400 meter senior. 49.07 uh, for young Sylvester Hosting 452.11. I think what we've seen is the shifting tide of the 400. That should, where guys are not adapting. And um, we saw it, um, the South African, his name, the Kirk. Van Wade Kirk, Van Niekirk. Where he's opted, run, run for your life out of, out, out of lane number eight. Catch me if you can. Uh, two exceptional runs, um, well measured runs there, out of lane, the, out, the outer lane in the, that 400 meters. So 49.07 for Joim Sylvester and uh, 52.11 for Nishan Hostin of the Happy Hill Secondary School, rounding off the field right there. So um, the tone is set, the stage is set for the 400 meter final senior boys. And uh, the names to watch would uh, comprise of uh, Joachim Sylvester of uh, St. Andrew's Anglican Secondary School, Junior Alexander of the GBSS, also um, of Grenville Secondary School, actually. Junior is of Grenville Secondary School, and uh, Kyle Victor of GBSS. Also, Tegan Peterkin of GBSS, he ran 50.68. And uh, we are in for what could possibly be a sub-49 in the boys' senior 400 meters. Well, whatever the finish is, it's going to be a mouth-watering one. As we move to event number 47, girls 400 meters dash, sub-junior. Lanes are occupied. So Mahan in one, James in two, Campbell in three, Brown in four, St. Bernard in five, Regis in six, and uh, Regis in seven. Fletcher, St. Joseph's Convent, St. Andrew, Westmoreland Secondary, Boca Secondary, Happy Hill, and McDonald College. The field is stretched now. Clearly, there's some separation, but uh, Arisha Regis is uh, nowhere in this one, but this looks like Brown. Uh, this looks like Brown. Ananisa Brown, and uh, she's going to trot through now. Really, she's not going to take anything um, away from the other athletes, but uh, she got into cruise control a little bit early and uh, just kind of, you know, walked her way through to the, the finish line. So no real threat there for her. Um, Annalisa Brown of Boca Secondary School. A good measured run, 59.29 59 seconds. As we look at the replay, Jason, and she came through there as she hit the top of the 100 meters. She was quite... She was pretty much aware as to where she, where, she, where she was and comfortably ahead. And she just took a stroll away into the finish line just to ensure that she makes it official that she is qualified for the next round. No doubt, conserve quite a bit of energy um, to stop the clock again at 59.29. Event number 52. She was five seconds ahead of her closest rival in the person of uh, Monticia St. Bernard of Bishop's College. Uh, who came through in 1 minute 4.85 seconds, so a comfortable win there for Annalisa Brown. Uh, heat number two is coming up. Uh, just before we get to heat number two, I can tell you that uh, we've got some results coming from on the field. Sherry Ann Noel is down there and down to the final throw, the new, the, down to the final jump, I should say, the new height in the boys' sub-junior high jump, 1.74, Christoph Kalis of Sass, and uh, 
Nickel Abraham of GBSS going at it. 1.74 is the new height. So a battle there for silver and gold. So we're waiting to see what's going to happen. 1.74, Sherry Ann Noel is down there, and she's going to bring us up to speed. She's going to send up some more information to us as we go through waiting for the, the results of the boys' sub-junior high jump. In what continues to be clean sweeping commentary from all end to end, um, thanks to TNR Communication, as we continue to the live coverage of Intercall 2023, the 55th edition. Heat number two, girls 400 meter dash sub junior. Hannibal, Barry, Bain, Modest, Bethel, Durand, and Gresham. Sub junior girls, heat two or five. Making a move early. It's on the inside, mm. Grenville secondary, on the outside. The athlete of the Bishop's College making a move, Renise Bethel, J.W. Fletcher on the inside, Anakin High School, St. George's Institute is there, Grenville second on the inside, St. Mark's secondary on the inside, Bishop's College, Renise Bethel making an early state. Here comes the Anakin High School, J.W. Fletcher Catholic secondary, Grenville secondary on the inside, coming on the bend into the straight, Anglican High School, Denia Modest. Final 100 meters, sub junior girls, heat two or five. Anglican High School, Denia Modest, all the way to the finish line. Anglican High School, here comes the JW Fletcher Catholic Secondary, Bishops College, Granville Secondary. Unofficially, she should take this one. Anglican High School, Denia Modest, sub junior girls, 400 meter dash, all the way down, heat two. Of five. All right, so he two of five just completed. A snail pace, really, nothing to write home about there, but um, it's completed. And the athlete from the Anglican High School, uh, Denia Modest, <coughs> really trotting, just not feeling threatened at all in any way, really trotting. Well, she came in with, with the fastest time on paper, um, a minute zero, 1.54. And it was a slow race, but I think when you're looking at it in terms of the entry time, she understood what needed to be done. She understands, she knows what her, what her, her potential is really and truly is. And certainly, because uh, she did run much slower than her entry time, uh, she came in 1 minute zero one point five four. She come, she did this one in 1 minute zero four point five four. 0.54. Um, that was heat 2 of 5 as we continue through the girls' 400 meters dash in the sub-junior category. Quick results in the boys' sub-junior high jump. Nikhil Abraham, 1.71 meters of the Grenada Boys Secondary School. So he picks up the, the gold medal, and he's going to share that spot with Christoph Kalis, who leapt the same height, 1.71 meters, and Shane Phillip of uh, Westerhall Secondary, 1.68. So the final results in the boys' high jump. Abraham of GBSS, Kaliste and Kaliste of SAS, and uh, Philip of Westerhall Secondary School. One, two, three, one point seven one. Uh, nobody, they were attempting one point seven four, but uh, no, nobody really eclipsed that. So, one point seven one brought the gold medal for Nikel Abraham of the Grenada Boys Secondary School in the boys' sub junior high jump. Intercall and live here at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium, continuing with it on the track. Events in number 47, a girl's 400 meters dash, heat three of five, um, set um, in just a bit. On your mark. As they await the status orders. Officials just making sure that they take charge. Well, 
the officials would, would do that from time to time to make sure that everyone is settled if if there's any level of discomfort that, that they identify or that an athlete would identify. Just to ensure that everyone has a fair chance going into the event. So heat number three of five. The 400 meter girls sub-junior. Happy Hill Secondary School is uh, not in this one, but the Anglican High School in Amaya Henry is running out of lane four and uh, running out of lane four with a nice steady lunge leaning forward. Uh, she looks very comfortable. It looks as if she's going to, uh, you know, just take command of it and uh, cruise home. Nothing really bothering us from everything that we've seen coming around the bench. She seems to have a comfortable uh, position. Just under 150 meters to go now. And Henry out of lane four. Still in cruise control, no real need to step on the accelerator. Just a pretty much decent trot heading to the finish line. Um, so nothing to worry her too much. Definitely, Jason, nothing to worry her too much. She came in on um, uh, with the fastest qualifying time of 1.0. 1.0396 so she understands her capabilities and as we continue to look through the the those middle distance races um athletes being able to appreciate what their talent is as you look at the replay by the time she got to the 100 meter mark i mean she was pretty much aware how awareness of where her the other the other competitors were and as you said no need to step on the and on the accelerator certainly she'd want to conserve leave a little bit of something in the in, in the in, in the tank for later on as she cruised home to claim victory there in that event. The official time, 1.0301. Um, Amaya Henry of the Anglican High School, um, Samara Noel, St. Joseph Convent St. Andrew, 1 minute 04.71. Uh, Christiana Charles of SAS, 1 minute 07.14 to complete the top three, Jason. All right, well, we're getting ready now for heat number four or five because the officials are not going to be wasting any time really because uh, they have uh, i think we have sherry press for time up. sherry ann noel is on the field sherry ann we've got you you've got us and it's all yours all right well there seems to be just a little bit of a technical difficulty they're not hearing sherry ann clearly and uh, we're going to go back to her in just a little bit. If she's ready, we'll go back down to her. We're just going to wait word from our producer. But in the meantime, we're going to take a quick look. Uh, she's there now. sherry -Ann, we're hearing you Okay, now. so we, we're we here with the winner of the high jump sub-junior boys and Nicole uh, Abraham out of the Grenada Boys Secondary School. You cleared a height of 1.71 meters on your first go at it. And um, the actual record was 1.77, which you were going for, but you weren't able to clear the 1.74. Um, tell us about your preparation and the, and the feeling. Well, because we are, uh, I didn't take, it didn't take a, a long time for her to really learn how to jump. Like, you take a couple, like about three to four days to learn to jump, and I kind of started to feel comfortable with it jumping. So the coach asked the coach if I could jump, and he said, yeah. So I said, yeah. Then after, he teach the train me every day. Every day I go in training. The only once in a while, like maybe twice I just keep training. And then there, my highs, I was, I, was, I was about to reach seven, six. But as I was, I look a bit too tired to jump the four, so I kind of give up right there. Yeah. All right, thank you very much and congratulations. That was the winner of the sub junior boys high jump, Nickel uh, Abraham, out of the Grenada Boys Secondary School. We now head back up to our commentary team. All right, thank you very much, Sherry Ann, and congratulations to Nickel Abraham bringing in a gold medal for his school. The bragging rights are up for grabs in the Intercall Games 2023. In the meantime, we're looking at the girls' 400 meter dash, heat number four or five. And uh, Brianna Oliver, Brianna Oliver is running out of lane two for the St. Andrews Anglican Secondary School. Ayla Alexander of J.W. Fletcher, 
still tight, no real separation there, but uh, this one is going to go down to maybe the final 40 meters. Well, it, it wasn't a fast race by any means, but was it a tiring one? Sure, it showed that. Um, tactically, maybe a lot went wrong for everybody. I don't know. Um, just maybe everyone took um, everyone for granted. Uh, we don't know, but uh, that's the story. We saw who came through. Of uh, You had a Sam Olive from Olive McDonald, from McDonald, McDonald College. College. She taken it on, on, on the line. And I think it just goes back to show, as we can, we've been highlighting quite early, that there's no one school that is dominating. Early in, the, in it, it's quite balanced, as we see. Um, Olive from McDonald's College, 1 minute, 0.4.47 seconds. Uh, Khadija Walcott, um, Convent, um, 1 minute, 0.4.63. sherry -Ann Noel, you're with us again. sherry -Ann, what's the story? Okay, so I am here now with Shaim Phillips. Shaim Phillips placed third in the boys' uh, sub-junior high jump. He cleared a, a height of 1.68 meters. Uh, Shaim, you tried, you tried your best. You tried to cover the 1.71, but somehow you weren't able to get your techniques right. Um, speak to us about this morning's competition. Well, I was training, I trained mostly every day for it, but that was my best at the moment. But I think I could go higher. Just have back pains and also. So tell us a bit about your coach. Who coaches you in this, this discipline of the sport? Well, the coach is a very nice coach. He been training me hard. If I make a mistake, he, he go tell me, though he go cheer me up, he go say, I'll ah, play something. He wouldn't be like no other coach. Say, you come third and the coach will be satisfied. The coach is not like that. So, what next for you? Is it that you're going back to learn the various techniques so when you come again next time? Yes. I'll go and train harder. Thank you very much. That was the third place um, uh, from the Westerhall Secondary School, Shaim Philip, in the boys' sub-junior high job. 1.68 is the distance he cleared. All right. Well, 1.68 coming in third and uh, 1.71 uh, the... The gold medal time, the gold medal height. Gold medal height, no doubt, as we we do the final heat in this flight of races. The girls, the sub junior girls, 400 meters as they go down the back stretch. As we see how the race unfolds, we have the Anglican from St. George's Convent. Logie is in, is, 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 is in there. Let's see how the rest of the race, the race unfolds. There is Kyla Christopher in lane number four for St. David's Catholic Secondary. 400 meters, the final uh, flight in, in, uh, in the heats for this, the 400 meters. As they get to the 200 meters, as they head towards home, let's see how is it going to unfall. Out of lane number four, it is St. George's Convent. That's the lane number five, that is. St. George's Convent, Logie. There's also Macmillan, Ruth Macmillan. But as the rest of the legs, they tie away. It's, it is young. It is young Logie all by herself as she continues just to make a trek for it. Uh, St. David's Catholic Secondary, Christopher is trying to make a, a late push on the line, uh, but it's an easy victory there for Annie Logie from St. George's Convent, St. George. Uh, we will wait the official times, um, but certainly, um, Jason, as we're getting ready to wrap up the, for the, mornings, the morning session, certainly we've seen some quite mouth-watering um, Mount water and performances, and as you look at the final, this 400 meters there on the track, um, I think for some some way, young Christopher may have lost a stride somewhere, and you see she's trying to force a comeback as we head towards the line. Uh, but Logie had had done just enough to ensure that she made it through on to to the finish. The, the, the official times for this one: Annie Logie from Convent St George, one minute zero five point one six; Christopher St David's. Catholic Secondary, 1 minute 05.51, and Ruth Macmillan from Grenville Secondary, 1 minute 09.63, Jason. All right, so in preparation for more field, more track events, 
we've got coming up now the boys 400 meter sub junior and uh, this one is loaded with talent um, some some good times 57.344 sub juniors actually uh, 59.34 as well 58.40 some good times coming in for boys of sub junior level and uh, th I'm quite sure that uh, a lot of them would know that this is the big stage this is the big time so um, when you're running 57 and, and 58 you want to make sure and try to get that down to about 56 55 because this is where you're going to really show that you've got a chance remember the motivation is right there we've got some athletes going off to the Carifta games next week and um, so the motivation is right there if nothing else to tell you a we've got to do better times because we want to get there and the the character games always the the jump start for the exposing of real talent and giving the young folks across the caribbean really the opportunity to do very well heat number one um christian cato jw fletcher jamal jamal andrew boca secondary school keon jackasal pbc Kamal Joseph, GBSS, Kaelin Maloney, Westmoreland Secondary School, Kaim Hele of Happy Hill Secondary School, and uh, Raphael Kadu of the Grenville Secondary School. Lanes 1 to 7, those are the assignments. The house official not running the lane assignments because they're pressed for time. Because remember, we started just about an hour late this morning. It was a scheduled 9 o'clock start. We didn't get things rolling until just a little bit after 10. So uh, some ground to make up, obviously. So cutting out a whole lot of what might be looked at as, well, slightly uh, unnecessary to make up the time. So that's the reason why we're not getting much of the uh, late assignments coming in from the house and all. So we can do the late assignments here, but we've got so much to worry about. We've also got some events taking place down on the field. Sherry Ann is down there. She's going to be updating us constantly. Mm -hmm. So we're getting ready for... Heat event number 48, the boys 400 meter dash sub junior heat one. Lanes one through seven filled. And they are officially off. Nice clean start as we motor down the, uh, down the, the back stretch. 400 meters in the boys sub junior. Let's see how this one pans out for J.W. Fletcher. Kato is there. We're looking at out of lane number eight, where Kadu is also there. 400 meters. As they get up to it, it seems as though it'll be a, a, a race of two, but certainly as it, they make the bend, we'll see how the race unfolds. We're looking now at J Kamal Joseph from the GBSS as they head, as they head for home. It is GBSS, Kamal Joseph on the inside. Soto giving him a run for it from the presentation of British College is Jack Asal. Let's see who can steady each other shoulder to shoulder as they head towards the finish line. Let's see how this one's going to pan out. It is actually a victory for Joseph, second place to um, Jack Asal of the presentation of British College. The completion there of the boys' 400 meters, heat one of four. Jason, pretty competitive one. Uh, yeah, I mean, um, Joseph of GBSS seems the most composed there, and also Jack Asal of PBC, they seem the most composed there. there. It was just a real tussle just to see who would, uh, you know, come through first, but it was always one to either way. What I am looking at really is Jack Asal never really... Um, turned on any real power. He just kept his composure and allowed his momentum to carry him through the finish line because he understood one and two will go through to the next round. So um, 57.73 in, in, without, without any real rush is a little bit more dangerous than 57.60 when you want to press just to make sure you come in first. So that there could be um, a little bit of a deception coming in, but we're going to wait and see how it goes. They were the only two to really talk about. Everybody else ran over a minute, so um, n nothing really f from, from the rest of the field to worry them. For some athletes, it's always a win, and that's just the way that they do it. We'll see how that translates itself as they get into the final. Um, into call, it's, we're getting, we're inching closer to the wrap-up of session one, day number one, 
Um, heat number two, just a bit further, so event number 48, is the boys' 400 meet meters dash. We do the lane assignments for you. It is Kelis for Sass. Let's do Kelis Sass in lane one. Philip, Western Hall Secondary in lane two. Um, Javid Jaldu for McDonald College runs out of three. Roselle Ross in Hillsborough Secondary runs out of lane number four. We have Jones for St. David's Catholic is in five. Nathaniel Alfred runs out of lane number six. And Ethan Ogis, lane number seven for the presentation Brothers College. Kelis, Philip, Jaldu, Ross, Jones, Alfred, and Ogis. Lane assignments for heat two of four in the boys' 400 meter dash sub junior category. Again, reminding you, we're providing you full coverage of Intercol 2023, Republic Bank, the title sponsor uh, on the day one, which has seen a number of events, multiple events happening at the same time. remember seeing a lot of the big names uh, as we know it now coming through at this stage uh, Kirani James Rondell Bartholomew um, th this was part of their their pet events particularly Rondell uh, in the 400 meters Kirani did um, a lot more in the one the two the four um, you know but, but, but Rondell was more uh, a natural 400 meter and 200 meter runner well, let's see how it's, it's going to go for in this one, heat number two of four in the boys' 400 meters sub-junior. Um, the top one in each plus the next four best times will, will continue. So uh, now uh, you understand why um, Joseph of uh, GBSS wanted to make sure that he came through number one, but I'm um, quite sure that from uh, the way, it will take something very special actually for Kion Jackassel of PBC mm -hmm. to not come through because he ran 57.73. So um, I'm, I'm quite sure that barring anything major that um, they both will see each other again in the finals. In the meantime, this one, Roselle Ross, Roselle Ross of the Hillsborough Secondary School, 58.40. Running out of lane number four, look for him. And uh, Deshaun Jones of the St. Davis Catholic Secondary School um, came into this event with one minute point zero one, but he's a whole lot better than that. So um, I'm thinking that he too could run under a minute here. So um, if, if pushed. Yeah, th those are the two to really look forward to. Um, Ethan Auguste, not heard anything much about him. And uh, Christoph Caliste, um, another one to watch from the St. Andrew's Anglican Secondary School. This is heat number two of four of the boys' 400 meter sub-junior. Well, we've just seen a reset of the, the field. Bad. We get ready for the start of the event. So TNR communication production. And they are off 400 meters. Sub junior boys. Presentation Brothers College. Boca Secondary is there. Uh, let's see how the race unfolds as they tunnel away down their backstretch. Keep your eyes on them. It is Ethan Ogis from the Presentation Brothers College. And he's, he's making the early strides for it. Jones came in with a time of 1 minute 01.1 seconds. 
He's also in the mix. McDonald Colleges, um, Jaldu is also there. As they head to the 100 meter mark, let's see who can hold it on, who can hold form. Ogis on the outside. There is Jaldu in the middle for, Mac, for McDonald College. Who can hold strain? Who can steady the composure? And it seems as though, um, well, you said you didn't hear much about him, Jason. He must have heard you from way up here. And he must have said, listen, I didn't, I didn't talk much prior to this one, but I'm here and I've registered my victory. It's a win there for young Ogis running out of lane number six from the Presentation Brothers College. He says, Jason, well, now, now, now you know my name. Uh, well, I, I knew his name. I just didn't get any times from him, so I wasn't too sure of, of what he was able to produce here today. But he, a good run. Um, he ran out of uh, an outer lane. That is always a challenge, really and truly. Running out of lane seven, the third athlete for the day to run out of lane seven and win the heat. So that tells the story. They understand now that um, a little bit more stretching of the legs and a little bit more momentum and would take you through the first 300 meters and then you lock into cruise control and, and run one. So look at the time, 54.75. If that is for real, then we have a problem. The boys sub junior 400 meter is going to be a scorcher. Well, under the ideal conditions and with that sort, that sort of time, certainly the anticipation is ripe for what's going to unfold here this evening in the men's, in the, in the junior 400 meters. Um, running out, winning out of lane four, out of lane seven, Jason, always takes something e exceptional. You run in, you by yourself, you literally close your eyes and you run. It always takes some, something ex exceptional, as you said. We've seen three athletes running out of lane seven that has really produced some really, really majestic times um, for this, the, for this, the first session of Intercall Day Number One. Well, the finals is rich and ripe with anticipation, and we see how it translates itself. All right, so we're getting ready now for heat number three or four. Um, we're still peeping to see if Sherry Ann has anything down on the field there for us, but we haven't. Um, seen anything from her yet. We know there's some discus activity taking place down there. So um, very soon we could have some kind of update from Sherry Ann from down on the field. Um, so we're going to deal with that in just a little bit. But now we've got uh, the lane assignments for heat number three. And uh, Keston Bailey of the St. Davis Catholic Secondary School 59.02 is running out of lane four. And um, Giovanni Phillip of Westerhall Secondary School, Westmoreland Secondary School, sorry. One minute, nine seconds, seems like an eternity. He's running out of lane five. We've got uh, Grenville Secondary School, Keneal Charles, and uh, Happy Hill Secondary School, Kashmir Jones. So uh, Jones of Happy Hill is running out of lane one. Heat number three. The boys, 400 meters. McDonald College, Alan Albert. St. Davis Catholic Secondary is there. Keston Bailey, Westmoreland School, Giovanni Phillip. Happy Hill Secondary on the inside. Casimir Jones, come here on the bend into the final 100, trying to gain a spot automatically in these finals. St. Davis, Catholic Secondary, Keston Bailey, McDonald College on the outside, Alan Albert, St. Davis, MDC, St. Davis, McDonald College, Happy on the inside, St. Davis, McDonald College. Unofficially, we await the results to see who qualifies automatically well, 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 and who Bailey, waits for the next best time. Bailey Bailey came through. Getting across the line and the Westmoreland School all the way to the finish line to compete. The Bailey came through boys, uh, winning and uh, the eternity just ended with uh, Giovanni <laughs> Philip and uh, Giovanni Philip and of course Keston Bailey, yes, of the St. Davis Catholic Secondary School had a lot of pumping to do, um, seemed to be in a little bit of discomfort. Yes. Uh, that could very well tell the story for what will happen in the finals, but more importantly, lane seven, 
uh, running out of lane seven was um, Elon Albert, Albert of McDonald College, running out of lane seven, 57.99, and Bailey doing 57.88. So Bailey did a lot better than he came in with. Uh, he came in with 59.02, and I think he ran 57.88, uh, I think it was. So um, he did a whole lot better than his, his qualifying time to come in here. But as it's good to see that he's walking off the field of his own efforts um, come when given consideration to the sort of labored effort he, he actually put into completing the race. And it's always a heartbreak if anything happens to any of these athletes. So I'm happy to see him walking off his own efforts. Yes, the students, they start, they start to gather. Yeah, they're probably saying, well, I got here early and I'll be here for the next, for the next three days. Be getting ready for the final event of event number four, the track flight of in the prelims for the boys 400 meters dash in the sub junior category. The lane assignments, the lane assignments. Delaran John says is, is in one. Noel St. Marks runs out of two. Bartholomew for Bishop's College. GBSS Javed Noel runs out of four. He comes with a time of 59.34 seconds. David for Hillsborough Secondary runs out of lane number five. Bruno occupies lane six for J.W. Fletcher. Nestled in lane number seven next to him is for St. John's Christian Secondary is um, Timon J Joseph and completing the order from St. George's Institute, um, Adam Purcell, running of lane number eight. Lane assignments for next event on the track. Quick um, update here from the sub-junior girls short put. Naomi Augustine of St. David's Catholic Secondary School after the first round of competition, 9.82 meters. Uh, Nikelia Lawrence of Boca Secondary School, 8.18. And uh, Tabita Francis of St. David's Catholic Secondary School, 8.09. So that's the standing after the first round. The record 13.16 set back in 2014. The girls short put. Let's see how history responds to this one time. Remember, let's do this. 400 meters. You call it as you see, Jason. Final heat. 400 meter boys. Look for Delron John of SAS in this one. Also look for Javid Noel. Uh, Delron John of SAS is running out of lane one. John has really gone off. I mean, he's in lane one, so there's a lot of daylight there. There's a, a lot of daylight. He's gonna shut down now, really. There's no need for him to pump even more. He's gonna shut down now, yep, he's doing that. And he's gonna just let the momentum trot him through. He's not gonna worry too much about the time. I'm not sure if that shirt and long wife is a, a sign of anguish from seeing on his face. But either way. So, uh, Delron John of the St. Andrew's Anglican Secondary School um, ran a good 250 meters. And by the time he got to closing out on the back street, just as he entered into around just about 200 meters to go, understood clearly he was in command. And then by the time he got to the top of the 100 meter mark, uh, well, he really had to just lock it down and, uh, you know, looked around, realized, a hey, no real threat. And... Uh, Cruise control all the way. Chipping control, really. This is even slower than, than cruise control. Chipping control all the way to the finish line and literally walking over. And look at the time, 58.58. Now, when you shut down with about 80 meters to go, and it is 58.58, um, that there is reasons to ask questions. Delron John, a good runner. 
from the St. Andrews Anglican Secondary School. It's an excellent run, though, but while you, I we praise, we laud him for his effort, I saw a bit of anguish on him, and I'm, I'm a bit worried, though. Was that him shutting down, or was that his body telling him something is not right? Either way, I mean, it all goes well, he, he, he get, it, get, it gets him through. So, but I'm a bit concerned though as I look and I should probably as the race has ended, maybe the, the coaches, the team, the coaches will be looking at him and asking yourself the question because he didn't seem quite comfortable in completing the race as you would, you would, you would expect him to. But either way, um, at that event though, the 400 meters, um, it brings the curtains down on what Jason has been an excellent, really, really excellent session one of day number one of Intercall. Oh, yeah. In terms we, of on the track. Oh, and we, we had a couple of gold medals being dished out already um, not physically but um, we had a couple of those and then we had uh, a new record being established a, a crazy record really by uh, Jamila Nicholas in the female discus the senior female discus 37.97 meters eclipsing the old record by over a meter and from the what we've seen on screen and from how we've seen her we can tell that she has not even started her real development just yet because she still has um, the, the, the capability of adding some more muscle, adding some more strength, working on her technique. And when 37.97 is a walk in the park for you, well, well, not a walk in the park, but when it's a stone throw, mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that, that in itself is a good reason for Grenada to celebrate. And I think for most of the athletes at this level, this is an introductory offering for them. Um, it's not traditionally you've seen a lot of females taking part in short put and discuss and those sort of field, field events. But again, what we've seen is that continued growth in the programs, at the schools and at the clubs. And that has extended itself to what we've seen here at the Intercall. And some athletes just recognizing, Jason, you know what, it is possible. I can make a future, not just on the track, but also with events on the field. So, short put, this looks like short, short put sub junior girls. Yeah, that should be probably event number 27, should be short put sub junior girls. Get the athlete from St. Joseph's Convent. So the boys who we'd have seen this morning, 100 meter dash, they're doing their long jump as part of eight disciplines in the combined events. Also in progress, we have the heptathlon girls high jump taking place at the southern end. So it's the octathlon long jump for the boys, the heptathlon high jump for the girls, and the junior girls short put all in progress at this time. Have your family or friends ever needed cash now, but you are nowhere close to give it to them directly? With the cardless cash feature from Republic Bank Online and your mobile phone, it is hassle-free and convenient to send money to anyone, including yourself, using the Republic mobile app. Simply log into your account. 
access the cardless feature. Enter the amount you want to transfer and using the access code provided, the cash can be withdrawn instantly from a designated Republic Bank ATM without a card. Republic Bank Cardless Cash is convenient at your fingertips. To learn more about our cardless cash features, visit republicgrenada.com for more details. Special terms and conditions apply. Republic Bank, we're the one for you. Home is easy as one, two, three. Thinking about your new home? Think easy. Think a Republic Bank Home Easy Loan. Think affordable. Think convenience. Think Republic. Home is easy as one, two, three. Republic makes home easy. Wow, that was such a breeze. Own your home with ease. So whether laying that first brick or purchasing an existing home, we've got you covered. Republic Bank will get you those keys hassle-free in no time. Home is easy as one, two, three. Apply for a home easy loan today for a chance to win a cash prize. Getting your new home is easy with Republic Bank. Republic Bank, we're the one for you. Terms and conditions apply. Building or renovating your home or business? Why not use clean, renewable energy? Install solar panels to power your home and office and see your energy costs go down and your savings go up. Using renewable, solar-powered energy protects our environment, reduces our carbon footprint, and slows the devastating impact of climate change. Republic Bank can help to finance construction and renovations that make use of renewable energy. Visit any Republic Bank branch and ask about renewable energy financing options today. Republic Bank, we're the one for you. Have your family or friends ever needed cash now, but you are nowhere close to give it to them directly? With the cardless cash feature from Republic Bank Online and your mobile phone, it is hassle-free and convenient to send money to anyone, including yourself, using the Republic mobile app. Simply log into your account, access the cardless feature, enter the amount you want to transfer, and using the access code provided, the cash can be withdrawn instantly from a designated Republic Bank ATM without a card. Republic Bank Cardless Cash is convenient at your fingertips. To learn more about our cardless cash features, visit Republic... Joining me now is Deron Hazard. Deron is no stranger to the athletic scene. He is one of our former long distance champs here at the Intercall. He is now the coach, or I should say one of the coaches at the St. David's Catholic Secondary School. Um, Deron, so far you've picked up two gold medals for, for the day that I am aware of. You got a, a record breaking in terms of Jamelia in the a senior girls and you also got gold in the long jump um speak to us a, a bit about your group of athletes this year because you know people always look forward to st davis catholic center um, secondary school as one of the the schools that you have to come out to beat when you talk into call all right so this year so far I, what i can say about our athletes that compete already they are putting out their very best and we have a balanced team this year so it's going to be we're going to be pulling points from all our boys, so I'm telling you, this year is once, once for the ball. You being a former long-distance um, national athlete, um, St. Davis Catholic Secondary always had strength in those disciplines. Um, speak to us about the athletes who you'll be fielding in the various distance races. All right, so we have Alian coming up later in the 1500 meter. We expect a goal there. We have... Uh, Susie in the 1500 senior girls, so we expect a goal there also. They have been working hard at training, they have been constantly in training day in, day out. So I'm expecting uh, quite a performance later in the finals. On going now on the field, we have the high jump and the disc custom. We also have short puts at the other end. Um, interestingly, in 2023, you see we've seen the introduction of the oct and the hip. Um, do you have athletes participating in those disciplines? Yes, we have Denisha Scott and Talia Dusant in the heptathlon girls. They know they're currently doing high jump. They're, I can say that they would be in the top three for the high jump, and I'm expecting 
a lot of PBs in, in the discipline events for the, for the heptathlons today. As a former national athlete yourself, and I'm no coach, I'm no, what do you think about the introduction of these two um, disciplines? Well, I think it's good for our athletes to get a feel to see the different, different events and some of them are, they are new to some of them like the 100 huddle and I wasn't expecting that they would come here and win the 100 huddle but they put on a quite a performance and it's the first time trying it and I can say from after this we'll go back to the drawing board and we're gonna work on the weak areas so that next time we can get there and get some faster timings in whatever they're doing. It's early hours yet, but it's day one. We still have day two and three from, from the wins that you had thus far for the day. How, how does that make you feel as a coach and what's the atmosphere like within the camp of the SDCSS? All right, so the atmosphere is really thrilling. As you can see, the SDCSS, the, those that are not doing anything for today, they're up on the stands, they're cheering on the rest of the rest of athletes. And I can say that the vibes, you don't want to miss the vibes. So if you don't get a ticket yet, you can always come on down and get a ticket so you can be a part of it. And there goes the ad for Intercall. Remember, it is pay-per-view. Those of you, don't forget that you can pay and sit at the comfort of your home and view the games. We were speaking here with Darren Hazard, one of the coaches of the St. David's Catholic Secondary School. We now turn you back over to our commentary team. Well, thank you there, Darren. Thank you. Thanks to you, um, Lady Noel. And of course, certainly wherever you are, we reminded you that this is pay-per-view coverage, live coverage coming to you from the Kirani James Athletic Stadium. It is Intercall 2023, uh, the 55th edition of the Republic Bank Intercall Games. And certainly uh, what we've seen, we've had a really, really exciting session, first session. Um, presently, there's been a lull. We've had, there isn't any activities on the track, just a few um, winding up events um, in some of the multidisciplined area, the heptathlon and the and the oct, that's uh, certainly that's happening on the field, and there's been a continued cloud cover, um, while some of uh, some may have watched it with suspect eyes, uh, for the, for the athletes has been a little bit of the Lord's way of smiling on them that they, they do not have to to deal with the immediate exposure of the sun, and so it has provided really qu quite good cloud cover, um, nice gentle breeze continues to to flow across the national stadium. And some of the athletes, uh, they are, the students, they are here, um, reduced quite in their small numbers, though, as is ex was an, as expected. I don't think much was expected in of seeing a flood of athletes here on students, that is, on day number one. Uh, but we can promise you, as the evening stretches on, as the, the, the championships um, continues into second and third day, that you will see growing numbers of students making their way um, down here to be part of this really, 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 really building um, couple of days of in the call 2023. Uh, reminding you, pay per view, we say thanks to our team from TNR Communications and it's making this possible. And certainly, we want to say thanks to Republic Bank for ensuring that in the call 2023 is the success that it has been so far and that which um, Dave um, Antoine that we anticipate that the next couple of days is going to provide us down here at the Kiwani James Atle Athletic Stadium. The, the tradition dictates that day two will be good, day three will be fantastic. The yep. gods <laughs> <laughs> Heaven will rejoice on, Friday, on Thursday as we're going to celebrate three more one way or the other on Friday. Uh, but certainly, um, I think if this is the way that the organizers had envisioned, en envisioned it, I think the 400 meters finals, it has set itself up. It seems all poised to really, really be a really, 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 really crackers later on in the evening which is session two, 23 finals later on, Antoine? 23 finals. And the, you, you, I think you're hitting it right in the head. Just about all of the, the 400 meter finals, from sub-junior right up to senior, you have 
all been quite competitive in the heat. We saw we saw a number of um, really quite runs out of lane number seven. Um, a non-traditional. I think it was only in more recent times with Wade Van Niekerk that persons actually start realizing that you run the 400 in, in lane seven and, and lane eight. Over the years, we focus, the focus has been four, five, and six, and the rest of that history records it on paper. <laughs> yeah, I think a lot, lot of the traditional uh, um, thinking in track and field has just about disappeared. Of course, with the advent of the the the, the, the use in bolt with the, how tall that he was, because in times past, your typical sprinter used to be of a fairly short statue. Yes. And uh, with bulking muscles and so forth. That has changed. That has changed. They come in all size. A lot has changed. All yeah. shape. And I think what you, you find now is that a lot, because of the growing interest in the multidiscipline um, events, so you find a lot of the athletes, they become much more well-rounded because they participate, they're not just specialists in one event. I mean, even if you look Bolt himself, he was, he has an interest in basketball, he had an interest in, 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 a, in a football. And you look at the likes of Chiffon of Houston, a lot of the, 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 the other athletes, they jump in, they throw in. It helps to develop them or into more all-round athletes. And I think it's a good thing. It's a good thing, especially with the young athletes, the sub-juniors and so forth. L let them sample, as it were, the, the different events. And uh, eventually, they will land on one that suits them and the, the type of skills and talent that they, that they possess. Pigeonhole an athlete too early, I think that that's a danger in, in of itself. Well, I think you, while that might be an excellent point you make, and you have to do that, not at the, at the point of risking injuries, though. Because sometimes if they exert themselves, they extend themselves too much, that we've seen a lot of athletes... But coaching comes in, uh, rather than just doing anything. It, it, there was a, 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 I don't remember which, who the coach was, but there was a caution in terms of um, developing young athletes and the lifting of weights and so forth. These things are all scientific. They, they're really not, not guesswork. They, they, they're all scientific. And what has happened over the years is that more and more of coaches begin to study. They, they're going into the scientific trails of, of, of these events rather than just doing anything that has, that has long been passed. You yeah, think I mean, any, anybody, any, any coach that comes in and offers the hit and miss concept, I mean, the days of that have long gone. gone. I mean, it is long gone. I mean, the exposure that's there and Grenada, we, we have quite a quack a cadre of not just veteran coaches, but young coaches. And it's always good when you see athletes, they've gone through the system. We've had the likes of the McSween and the, 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 the veterans of it. But a lot of the young athletes now, the, the, at St. David's Catholic, was a former athlete, former student. And now you, these two, they're there now saying, you know what? The sport has given to me. Let me now take the opportunity to give back and pass some of the talents and the knowledge I've got and experience I've garnered over the years. I think all of that has just really, really done, when put together, has really done exceptionally, exceptionally well for track and field. Absolutely. The two of the, the, the brighter new clubs on Ireland, the Fusion Club, it's a young coach from PBC, um, club uh, coach Cato. And... Uh, the South City Rising Stars. It's another new club. Lee Coffey. Right. A and and you, you can see the, the, the fruits of the labor. Well, while we have the door, um, I have Sherry and Noel. She's done on with another interview in, in the wing. Sherry Ann, go, um, go ahead. Yes, continues. Yes, we will await. We will await. I'm, sh I'm, sh I'm sharing. Again, for those of you that's probably, if, you, if by chance you just you just joined in, uh, welcome to what is the live broadcast of Intercall 2023 at TNR Communication. And certainly, we want to say thanks to uh, Republic Bank. 55 years of, of this excellent game, and certainly, um, it only augurs well as to where Intercall is and where it can it's going to be in years, in years, in years to come. 
Um, we're getting ready to put the wrap on session one. And it's been a really, really, really excellent morning. Um, and you see some exceptional display of excellence, uh, both at in the track and on the field. And um, Antoine, it only really sets up a mouth-watering, really, really appetizing um, anticipation for what's going to unfold in the evening time. Absolutely. And you're not missing anything in the field right now. We were talking to earlier concerning the, 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 the younger coaches and the, the teams and the work that they have been putting in. Right. And, and these are all labors of love. And, and we, need to, we need to understand that. They're all labors of love. And uh, the, the team, and these are young teams. For example, the, 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 the team, the, the officials, the two coaches, that, the three coaches that are going to accompany our, our athletes at, at, at Carifta. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Wayne McSween, and he's a veteran. The veteran, he, he yes. He has been around for a long time. He's a head coach. Uh, Paul Phillip. Paul Phillip has been around for quite a while, and he is more into the field events. Right. And then you have a, a young coach in, in Lyndon Cato. Right. That's, just, that's from, from Fusion. From Fusion. Right. Uh, and, and you can see the fruit of these guys', these guys, these guys labor. And the athletes that you see representing us at, at Carifta and, and I think the jury is still out at what if we are going to have any CUT games this year, maybe a little later when um, one of our broadcasters was more directly in tune with what happens in the GUT, CUT, we'll probably let shed some light on this. But even from that budding stage with CUT, we have seen the growth of these young athletes, the, 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 the Ethan Sams and so forth, that they would have right. gone through the system. Well, folks, in terms of what's, what's, what's set to happen later on, uh, there is the ant anticipation of the official opening opening ceremony. Yes, in case you're wondering, that is so that is set for the evening time. Um, and then there's 23 malt water in the um, final so that is also set for the for the evening session. And certainly, it really sets up the an, an anticipation for what is going to be a really really appetizing uh, offerings as it relates to. Day one, session one of Intercall 2023, and certainly the fact that we say continue to say hats off to Republic Bank, um, Antoine, and who certainly, absolutely, and the number of really, really, as you said, watering events to look forward to. I am particularly interested in in in, in the 60 meter special invitational. The 60 meter special invitation would, 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 would come about in, in, in the afternoon session. You would have the javelin throw for sub juniors, the long jump for juniors, that's male, and then the female high jump for seniors. Uh, we continue with the HEP, uh, and the, that's a short put, and the, and the oct for the male, short put. And then we have a series of 1500 meter run. There, this is going to be some exciting races. Right through the mini meet, we have had some really interesting, exciting, exciting races at 1500 down to the wire. That's unusual, but it makes for good viewing. It makes for good viewing. So we are we are anticipating some some really exciting 1500 meter run later later on today, and that will be followed by high jump and the seniors long jump sub junior. And the discuss throw for sub juniors, short put for juniors, female, and another HEP event, another OCT event. That's a two and four hundred meters um, for the OCT and, and the HEP. And we are going to end the day with a series of mouth watering four hundred meters. Well, <laughs> I think the menu has been set before us. <laughs> uh, the menu has been laid out before us. The the uh, the executive chef is already in in kitchen. <laughs> the sous chef is also there. <laughs> abs, 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 absolutely. I can see the waiters and everybody is waiting to deliver what is really, really good, going to be uh, a, a really, 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 really appetizing, a malt watering. And I think for those of you, wherever you are, the anticipation is set. It is ripe um, for what's going to be a really decent uh, climax to day one of intercall but certainly it's early days yet so in case of you wondering this it is in fact early early, early days yet uh, I didn't think.
All right, we're here uh, with Nicholas Benjamin, um, as people call him for the short, Benji, the coach of the Grenada Boys Secondary School, the defending champs of Intercall in 2023. Um, the overall expectation, the overall grouping and, and the anticipation in the camp for these three days of keen rivalry? Yes, um, um, uh, the GBSS is ready to um, defend its championship. Uh, we're here today. I know it's going to be a hard day based on the spreading of the events. Um, however, our sub-junior boys went outside there this morning and already started delivering points for us. Um, the senior boys is outside on the field now in the, um, the senior discus, and I am confident enough that um, we're going to get adequate points. However, we're looking into three days of competition. This is only day one, so we, we, um, we got to make sure that we take it step by step. We don't want to push everything. Athletes um, need to get uh, rest. We're talking about outside, it's very humid, so we have to be able to control team management. And I think um, we are ready to defend our championships. You won gold in the sub-junior boys um, high jump, 1.71. I think the name was Nickel Abraham. He, in his interview, he said that um, jumping was new to him, but he seems to be a fast learner. What is it you saw in Nickel that you all you know, pushed him? Yes, well, funny enough is um, Nickel only came out uh, about approximately uh, two weeks ago. And we we had this um, this jump jumping jump through, and he showed um, the ability to jump. And we pull him in. And funny, funny enough is, as he said, he's a very fast learner. Uh, he went outside there this morning, even in the shot put um, last week. He even in the shot put and played second in the shot put. And you're all gonna surely see him in a javelin too. Very fast learner. Um, hats off to him. He went outside there and delivered for the school. Some of the exciting e events in Intercall, the 100, 200 sprint, the 400 meter, and so on. Um, who are some of the athletes that, you know, patrons can look forward to seeing perform in these events? You have to, you have to also um, remember that um, Ethan Sam is a uh, GBSS, um, Tarek Maxwin, GBSS. You're talking about um, Tegan Peter King, GBSS. You're talking about Emilio uh, Bishop, GBSS. And we have a lot of guys outside there. Um, not forgetting the, the um, extraordinary athletes from all the other schools. I think we are in for keen competition. Uh, the kids are outside here, they train hard. The coaches work hard. And we're going to get a good showdown for the Intercultural um, 2023. How do you feel as a coach? Um, with the introduction of the HEP and the OCT, I know apart from coaching GBSS, you also do other coaching privately. Um, how do you feel about the introduction of these two events in 2023? Yes, it is a good it is a good thing for Grenada. Um, notwithstanding, we have uh, Lyndon Victor and brother who excel in, in, in the um, international field. Um, it is also good that we have multi-event athletes here in Grenada and they're pursuing the multi-event. So I think it's a good one. And um, for the coaches in different school, maybe it has a task, but I think you have a, a, enough background here in Grenada as coaches to develop that that area of the athletics, and I think we will do very well. And I, I applaud it. The return of Intercall to three days. Um, I, I think I think it is a good thing um, based on based on the caliber of athletes that we have. Uh, the athletes will get sufficient rest. Um, um, it will give a, a little more keen competition, a little more something for the, 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 the viewers to look at and to look out for. And, and being honest, I, I am kind of glad that it is three days. Even us as coaches need rest too. So all in all, you are satisfied with, with your crop of athletes that you're feeling and you think that you're in a good position to defend? Yes, yes, we are in a good position to defend. I know it's not going to be easy. And as I always say, hats off to all the athletes and we're going to come with GBSS. This is GBSS and we come hard. That was coach of the Grenada Boys Secondary School, Nicholas Benjamin. It's now back to our commentary team. Well, thank you, Nicholas, and thank you to Sherry Ed. Um, confident coach Benjamin. Confident coach because he has to. He has to be confident. However, he, what he hit the nail in the head was that there's going to be keen competition to share. He, he was absolutely correct. There, especially in the, in the sprinting events, there are no clear favorites. Maybe with the exception of, of Ethan Sam in, in the junior category, the, the sub juniors as well as the seniors, I think they are wide open. Well, time will tell. Normally in cricket, we say it's never over until the fat lady sings, but we're getting ready. It's casterized on screen for the official torch run as part of the opening ceremony. It's a wonderful spectacle that you are witnessing on your screen now. 
and this is heading north, uh, the from a suddenly, suddenly a direction heading north into the into the stadium. It's a beautiful sight. What you would notice from viewers out there, you, you would notice that just about all around there is sand, there is sea, there is blue waters. It, this really is Grenada. And there's a sort of picturesque view that the Kiwati James National Stadium, it offers you. I mean, I think the location is ideal, nestled the mountains to one side, the oceans. It is just a spectacle as we, as we look here. Um, and we've come, we've really, really, really come really, really far, though. I mean, look at here, here we are live and you're getting um, that motorcade into making its entrance into the stadium. We get a nice um, open view, blazing view of the, f of the facility as it is. This is home. This is the Kiwani James a Athletic Stadium. And it is something that the young people ought to understand that um, up to maybe 10, 15 years ago, it was, it was just a dream. So that we, I, I join with you in saying we have come a, we have come a long way, and the, the facilities, the facilities that we know, that's now been offered to the young people for track and field, is of a high standard. The aerial view provided to us by a TNR communications team, quite exceptional as well. Quite exceptional. In fact, this this is this is good coverage. Good coverage, and what we are seeing, what, what we are seeing, and what we continue to see is, is the motorcade making its way into the Karani James Stadium. I think indeed we see technology on full on full display. Um, you've seen the full gambits and offering of the T of TNR communication, um, giving us shots from different vantage points, and this aerial shot here um, is just just quite telling. Is really and truly quite telling as we get a view uh, of the stadium as it is from overhead. Um, it is really, really, really the markings, the designs, the preparations um, for the meet. Um, it is just really, really, really exceptional. Technology on display. In Technology on display. We have the athlete in making coming into the official torch run. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, what you are witnessing there is the official torch run of of the inter-secondary school games of 2023, coming with a kind compliment to the sponsor by Republic Bank. Republic Bank and TNR Communications. I can remind you that the coverage is, it is, it is a pay-per-view uh, subscription that, can't, that you can, that you can, um, uh, provide, that you can have access to over the next, over the next three days. And there is, yes, the daily packs, and certainly you can also make allocations of your season, your season pass. Um, check out the team, TNR Communication, uh, to provide you full coverage. And as we talk about coverage, too, we can't help uh, but notice that in terms of growth, how we, we, we have been f providing that multiple scenery coverage um, simultaneously on the track and on the field. I mean, certainly it speaks well. Again, it, just to learn from one of our old songs, Calypso, and we've come a long way. We've seen that just during independence, but when it comes to broadcast, athletics, we have come a long way, and we say thanks to TNR Communications. Very much so, and today at track and field, they are the winners today. The young people who are carrying a torch, they must be, they must be doing so with a sense of pride. Yes. You, you, could almost, you could almost sense the pride that these young people are, these young people are, would, would, would take today in coming into the stadium before a crowd uh, on live TV. This really, for, for something that they would remember for a long, long time. So we are getting ready just a bit for to get to a medal presentation ceremony, and that's hap that's in progress right now. Four point nine one meters, and your gold medalist, Kamaya Telespada, St David's Catholic Secondary, five point zero one meters.
Event 28, boys short put sub junior. Bronze medalist Delron John, SAS. 11.50 meters. Silver medalist Nicole Abram, GBSS. 11.77 meters. And your gold medalist, Keston Bailey, St. David's Catholic Secondary, 11.97 meters. We can back up to event 19, girls, discus throw, senior, presenting your bronze medalist, Nathaniela Stafford, Anglican High. 25.69 meters, silver medalist, Akeda Maxween, St. David's Catholic Secondary, 27.72 meters. And your gold medalist, Jamelia Nicholas, St. David's Catholic Secondary, a distance of 37.98 meters. Event eight, boys high jump sub junior, presenting your bronze medalist, Shaim Philip, Westerhall secondary, 1.68 meters. Silver medalist, Christoph Kalis, SAS, 1.71 1 meters. And your gold medalist, Nicole Abram, GBSS. One point seven one meters. This is the end of the very first medal presentation of the day. Thank you very much, Bishop of St. George's, Clyde Martin Harvey. Thank you, sir.
action in the discus being taking place on the field as we continue with our live coverage of Intercall 2023, Republic Bank Intercall 2023. Um, again, this again, um, Antoine, another, uh, another glaring example of the growth when here in national television at Intercall, where you can, we can actually provide live coverage of these many of the events as they take place in the field, the discuss um, being one among, among many to highlight activities on the first session of play in day number one. Absolutely. It's one of the technical events and unfortunately many don't get an opportunity to witness simply because of the, the well it takes everything takes a backseat to to events on the track really. Right. Uh, but it, the discuss is one of those very technical showcase events and uh, we are witnessing now the male version of this. It's, 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 it's a discuss throw for seniors, senior males. And over the years, we have had some, we have had some successes on the regional scene. Correct, in particular, in yes. the discuss throwing. And again, we see not just the success, we've seen quite an extensive field, as with the other disciplines, the, um, the javelin, the high jump, the long jump, quite an extended field of athletes participating in it. And again, it just really augurs as well. It shows that there's growth, there's depth to our track and field program. And it really, really is one of the things that offers a really, really s a, a smile on our faces that we are doing something right when it comes to track and field on the island. Yes, the track and field has a good, faithful following on, 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 on island here. In fact, I think it, it's it's, it's right across the Caribbean. There's a good following. The these championships, if not the biggest or the largest attended event, it should be should be pretty close. I, th I think I can see where you're going, but you're going there quite guardedly. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. Yeah. I noticed you're... Sporting you're, you're event. Yeah. You, you, Let me make some correction. A sporting <laughs> event. <laughs> and you're trying not to upset the balance or, or get under anybody's skin uh, as to what it relates to, uh, what it offers. But I mean, when you, you, you look at Intercall as an event, um, I think the only sporting event in the Caribbean that comes anywhere close to it in terms of what it is offering and the excitement is, of course, um, champs out of out of Jamaica. Yeah, I mean, you see, football has its has its offering and its audience, but I think track and field, intercall, bar none, literally sets the bar uh, when it comes to secondary school. You have to, and for those who probably um, because of COVID may not have experienced um, or the full suite of the intercall experience for a full five years may think that they have they they've missed out but we say for those of you that's here to here now take make use of the opportunity absolutely. to be part of the 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 core games absolutely and just to keep you in tune we so far we have i think we have what we've been noticing we're getting ready for a display we see the the the, the drum core it's actually making its way on the field so we will be expecting some, some entertainment that is um in just a bit Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to say special thanks to our torchbearers and they are representing our last champions of Intercall, St. Joseph's Convent, Grenville, and the Grenada Boys Secondary School.
Our drum corps today comprises of students from the St. Joseph's Convent and the Presentation Brothers College. The drum major today, Giovanni St. Clair. And many times we forget our teachers. I'd like to say thank you to the teachers leading the drum corps uh, in the names of Mr. Marvin Phillip and Ms. Simone Roberts. Thank you so much for your contribution to the development of Grenada's youth. And of course, Mr. Cordell Halley from the Ministry of Culture, Ministry of Sports and Culture. Thank you so much. You've been contributing over the years and most times we forget to say thank you and today I want to say thank you for your contribution over the years. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting our sponsors, Republic Bank. Adorned in their colors and their flags. I'd like to welcome our special officials. Honorable Ron Redhead, Minister for Sports and Culture. Honorable David Andrew, Minister for Education. Mr. Dominic Jeremiah, Principal and Head of the Secondary School Principals Association. Bishop Clyde Harvey, Chairman of the Conference of Teachers, of Churches, sorry. Mrs. Naomi Diali, Manager of Republic Bank, teachers, athletes, welcome all. Intercall 2023. Ladies and gentlemen, I am honored to be your mistress of ceremonies. My name is Neela Etienne, and I'll take you through the opening ceremony of this year's Intercall Championship Games. I'd like to welcome you all uh, to this year's championship and I would like to invite God's presence and I'd like Miss Bishop Clyde Harvey to give me some assistance with that. Let's welcome our God's presence in our midst and please stand with me. As you stand, I want to invite you to shake a leg. And shake any other part of you that you want to shake. And recognize that you are alive today. That you are alive. You can walk. You can run. You can dance. You can sing. You are a human being. And as we celebrate these games today, we recognize that all energy comes from our God. To be alive and feeling free and to have everyone in your family to be alive in every way. Oh, how great it is to be alive, to be alive. Let us pray. Gracious God, after all the frustrations of the past few years, we come together today to celebrate the fact that we are physical human beings, that the bodies that you have given us can do great things, and that over the years we have seen our bodies do fantastic things. The bodies of Grenadians have astounded the world in every sport and so Lord as we come today to competition we ask one thing of you that each and every one of us here may do our best that every young person taking part 
and even the older folks who may run a leg or two will experience themselves as powerful, as able, even if sometimes they may be differently abled. Bless every event. We give you thanks and praise for all those who have gathered in long meetings over the past weeks to make these days possible. We thank you especially for the sponsors who have contributed out of their surplus to be able to be a part of these games. So help us to rejoice when there is reason to rejoice, when we feel the tensions between us at any time in these three days, let us be able to quiet our angers, our frustrations, and embrace the other as family, as friend, as fellow athlete. And so may the blessing of Almighty God, who put us into a garden when it all began, and who enabled us to move from the depths of Africa to the furthest corners of the world, truly be with us over these days, and may the fruits of these days enrich Grenada for many years to come. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Bishop. What a wonderful way to begin today. And we want to ask God for your continued blessing, Bishop. Thank you once again. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing with me as we pay homage to our country and to play the national anthem of Grenada. I'd like to welcome the orchestras from St. Andrew's Anglican Secondary School, Presentation Brothers College, St. Joseph's Convent, Grenville, and the Grenville Secondary School. Please stand at attention. Thank you. And the orchestra was led by Mr. Kenrick Harper of Harper Music Services. Again, the students represent four secondary schools, St. Andrews Anglican Secondary, Presentation Brothers College, St. Joseph's Convent, Grenville, and Grenville Secondary School. Excellent. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the parade of our athletes. Let's welcome all our athletes and to bring them forth the drum corps comprising of students from Presentation Brothers College and St. Joseph's Convent, St. George's. I'd now invite our officials on to have a seat. Our honored guest, that is.
believe Republic Bank probably wants to win the match pass today. They have their mascot out front, looking smart in his white outfit. Should I tell him there is no winner today?
Sports and Culture, responsibility for youth, sports and culture. Bishop Clyde Harvey, manager and representative of the Republic Bank. Uh, director of the Secondary Schools Principal Association, other principals, specially invited guests. Uh, please, ladies and gentlemen, friends, well wishes all. In this, the 50th, 55th edition of the Intercollegiate Games, it gives me extreme pleasure to be able to greet you briefly today. I am delighted to be able to address you in this capacity as Minister for Education, Sports and Culture. We are indeed happy to see the return of these games, Intercollegiate Games, after having a prolonged delay upon the dictates of the COVID-19 pandemic and other industrial unrest. Thanks to God Almighty, those days are behind us. I want to take a moment to salute the Association of Secondary School Principals, led by Mr. Dominic Jeremiah. Today, we acknowledge the planning and preparation that goes into staging and hosting and producing these games. And you have been doing that for a number of years, save the breaks we've had. And so we want to thank you and commend you for that. We take notice that these games, ladies and gentlemen, are pleased. These games are second to very few in the region. And this is something we ought to be proud of. Kudos to the Principal Association. To our title sponsors, Republic Bank, we thank you very much for your continued collaboration and partnership. It might be complicated that this is just a financial investment in these games. But it's much more than that. It's an investment into the future of these athletes we are looking at. And for many, it prevents them, it prevents social decay. For many, it brings hope. For many, it brings an avenue to a brighter future. You are investing into the next generation of future superstars, the next Kiranis, the next Anderson, the next Ali, the next Clint, the next Delon, the next Rounder, the next Josh, the next Lyndon, and the list can go on and on. The next Aislinn of the athletes who have passed here. And so your sponsorship does a lot in investing towards them. To our coaches, our trainers, our principals, teachers, volunteers, we thank you very much for your investment. You too are adding value to these athletes, the young men and women who are going to parade today. You see, sports and these games are part of the ministry's mandate and strategy to produce rounded and well-developed students and Canadian citizenry. And you see, for many, this at least this might be your pathway to a future career because sports promises and presents several career opportunities that you need to embrace and pursue. So for some of you, it might be your pathway to a future career. For others, it might just be your stage to shine. For others, it might just be your opportunity to be recognized. For some, it might just be your means of supporting. For some, it is a time to be entertained. But whatever it is, athletes are encouraged to compete keenly in the true spirit of sportsmanship and make your best do well and represent yourselves well. At this point, I think I will miss an opportunity to sound the warning and to ask all of you to commend yourselves and conduct yourselves decently. I do frown at the increasing incidences of inappropriate sexual acts being undertaken by minors and certainly in public spaces. And it is my hope that you will conduct yourselves in a manner that you can feel proud about, that your parents can feel proud about, that your schools can feel proud about. And so it's my distinct hope 
that none of these behaviors will be reflected here today. In fact, I want to register as Minister for Education my profound condemnation for those kinds of practices. And I hope it does not become named among us and among this meet in 2023. As much as I condemn the practice, I also want to condemn filming and circulating them because the persons who do that are sometimes equally guilty of perpetuating rather than helping to correct. So I want to sound a caution to all of us and I want us to enjoy these games thoroughly in a way that we can feel very respected and we can walk out of these games with our integrity and our respect still intact. I want to thank all of you and I want to encourage you to enjoy the games and may the best team triumph. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Minister for Education, Honorable David Andrew. And you heard his call, young people. Please take heed. It's an important one. Ladies and gentlemen, we are indeed honored to have another minister in our midst, Minister for Youth, Sports, and Culture. Let us welcome Minister Ron Redhead, Minister for Youth, Sports, and Culture, to make some brief remarks. All right, we're gonna switch things up a little bit. Thank you for your eagerness, Minister, to my call. At this time, I'd like to welcome our title sponsor, Republic Bank, and to make some remarks, the managing director, Mrs. Naomi Diali. Let's big her up today. Without Republic Bank, we may not have been here. Welcome. Thank you, Madam of Ceremonies. Distinguished guests, viewers in the digital sphere, and of course, our over 1,200 athletes assembled here today, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us for the 2023 Republic Bank Intercall Championships. As we celebrate the return to a three-day event we eagerly look forward to the display of skills on both the track and field. Over the next 72 hours, you will witness some of the finest athletes from 25 schools across our nation competing for the coveted title of Intercall Championships 2023. We commend the Grenada Association of Principals secondary schools, along with all the other stakeholders who have been working tirelessly to make today a reality. We also say hats off to the association for seeing it fit to introduce two new events and also feature some of our Paralympic athletes. Sorry. This speaks well for the growth and development of Grenada's premier track and field competition. The Intercall Championship is well aligned with Republic Bank's Power to Make a Difference program. PMAD, as it is often called, is designed to form powerful connections to help build a better tomorrow. The PMAD pillars, the power to help, care, learn and succeed will no, no doubt be evident here over the next few days. The power to help will be seen through the hundreds of volunteers who are here to give up their time, talent and expertise. In the midst of friendly rivalry, athletes will have the opportunity to display the power to care by fostering team spirit and forging new friendships across school lines. Make no mistake, while we may not be in physical classroom, the power to learn is present at this arena. Athletes, you will have the opportunity to learn life skills about leadership, teamwork, respect, and resilience, 
all of which will help shape your character and better prepare you for the world. And of course, the power to succeed will be most evident. As your discipline and training propels you towards your goal, remember, one of the keys to success is to be ready when your opportunity comes. I encourage you then to make the most of this moment. You have the power to make a difference for yourself, your team, and your future. Best wishes to each and every one of you as you aspire and achieve at Republic Bank Intercall Championships 2023. Thank you, Mrs. Diali. Indeed, you have the power to make a difference and the power to succeed. This should be a mantra going forward. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we'd like to make two special awards to principals who have made a contribution in education and sports and these two principals will be awarded posthumously, that is. And I'd like to make the first presentation to the late Brother George Wilson, past principal of the St. John's Christian Secondary School. This presentation will be made by Mrs. Diane Jeffrey. Brother George Wilson was the late and well-respected past principal of the St. John's Christian Secondary School. He served in the capacity from 1978 to 2004. Brother George consistently exhibited excellence, dedication, empathy, and love for God. He was one of our nation's outstanding educational leaders who was instrumental in the development of various sporting disciplines and by extension, these intercall games. Ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together for the late brother, George. And his daughter and son will be accepting this award in his absence. We want to say thank you on his behalf for all the contributions made. Ladies and gentlemen, our next award our next posthumous award goes to the late Sister Gabrielle Mason, a remarkable woman, religious sister of St. Joseph's of Cluny, teacher and past principal of St. Joseph's Convent, St. George's. She passionately embraced the mission of service in education and devoted 41 years of sterling contribution to holistic education. Sister Gabrielle served as principal of St. Joseph's Convent, St. George's from 1982 to 2001. She administrated with exuberance and zeal as she, as she was determined to inject new life into her students, responding to their many and various needs. Sister Gabrielle Mason was a woman of deep faith who, who believed in the fundamental goodness of every human person. Today, we honor her for her exceptional contribution to education. To accept this award, the principal, Mrs. Jill Filbert. The award is presented by Mr. Brian Lendo. I want us to give another round of applause for these two past principals. And I can say I'm not a convent student, but I've benefited from Sister Gabrielle's words of wisdom and educational leadership. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we're moving right along with our presentations. And at this time, I would like to invite our Minister for Youth, Sports and Culture, the Honorable Ron Redhead, to open officially these games. Thank you, Neela. And I do apologize for that false start. My colleague, Minister, Senator the Honorable David Andrew, Minister for Education, Republic Bank's Managing Director, Ms. Diali, Bishop Harvey, Principal Dominic Jeremiah, organizers, athletes, one and all, welcome and good evening. We have once again witnessed the successful opening of another local sporting activity. 2023 is indeed the year of the rebound indeed the year of transformation. It has seen both the start and the completion of some exciting events, and we are confident it will go a long way in stimulating our athletes to continue to succeed. This renewed energy is vital for sustained development programs in the areas of sports, which seeks to broaden our grassroots, community, school, and national efforts for the benefit of our athletes. At the same time, government is embarking upon the ambitious goal of building Grenada as a premium sports tourism destination in the Caribbean and will continue to support our local competitions in every way possible, demonstrating our genuine commitment. We also note the tremendous partnership between the private and public sectors in making these events a reality. We look forward to the continued growth and success of Intercol and other events such as these for many years to come. So today, at exactly six minutes to three p.m., we officially declare Intercol 2023, the Republic Bank Intercol 2023 officially opened and made a best team win. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Minister. And we all know the best team is my team. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we would like to invite a representative for, from the athletes. And this athlete, she will be doing the athlete's oath. And she hails from the St. Mark Secondary School. Let's welcome her as she makes the athlete's oath. This will be followed by our meet director, Mr. John L. Mitchell, for the official's oath. Thank you. Thanks, sir. On behalf of, oh, sorry. On behalf of all athletes, I pledge that we will participate in this, the 2023 Republic Bank Intersecondary Schools Athletic Championships in the true spirit of sportsmanship, abiding by the rules which govern them for the glory and honor of our schools and success of the games. I thank you. Kami David, everybody, from the St. Mark's Secondary School. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the meet director, Mr. John L. Mitchell. Thank you, Masters of Germany. On behalf of all officials, I pledge that we will part. Sorry. On behalf of all officials, I pledge that we will participate in these, the 2023 Republic Bank Intersecondary Schools Athletic Championships with complete impartiality, observing the rules which govern them to ensure the smooth running and high standards of the games. Thank you very much. Thank you for that pledge, ensuring our athletes and our officials are fair my sister likes to say, play fair, and today we will do just that. Ladies and gentlemen, every intercall, we hear a beautiful voice 
during our medal presentation. And today, we will be graced with the original singer of the Intercall song, or what we're calling the Intercall song, Miss Shireen Brizan. Looks like I'm helping. Sometimes they look at you and they don't. It's nothing more but this greatness in all of us. It's all stored in you. Yeah. And though they say things to your face, to break you down and mess away, oh no, don't let them win. And though they laugh and though they jeer, when you fail and no one cares, oh no, you can't give in. We are more, more than what they see. Come on, let your light shine through. We are more, we are more. Go ahead and live your dreams. Show them what it means. We are more. Sometimes you get so lost that you feel you can't go on. Sometimes things fall apart so that you can rebuild better than the start. Oh, oh be strong. And though they say things to your face to break you down, it mess away, oh no. Don't let them win, yeah, yeah. And though they laugh and though they jeer, when you fail and no one cares, oh no. You can't give in. We are more, more than what they see. Come on, let your light shine through. We are more. We are more, go ahead and live your dreams, show them what it means. We are more, mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. We are more, we are more. Listen, nobody said that the road, it was easy. Nobody said that the road, it was straight. Don't forget you have it all still within you. The power never dies once you are awake. They didn't realize what you had to go through. The things that didn't work, you stayed up late. Oh, you're the underdog. It's only up from here and you will never fall. We are more, more than what they see. Come on, let your light shine through. We are more. We are more. Go ahead and live your dreams. Show them what it means. We are more. More than what they see. Come on, let your light shine through. We are more. We are more. Go ahead and live your dreams. And show them what it means. We are more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are more, we are more. Thank you. Thank you, Shireen, for that beautiful tribute in song. And I do hope that you guys are encouraged. You are more, and you are indeed our future Olympians. And we look forward to seeing you on a much bigger stage than this one. Thank you so much. I want to say special thanks to all our officials, our, our specially invited guests. And thank you uh, to our ministers, Minister of Education, Minister of Sports, the Managing Director of our title sponsor, Republic Bank, 
uh, Bishop Clyde Harvey and to our amazing principals, thank you for the work you continue doing for our education system. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to invite the drum corps from St. Joseph's Convent and the Presentation Brothers College for our final striking up of their drums. And we will witness the departure of our athletes as we get ready for more action on the track. And we do have one more item on our program. And I'd like to invite the students of the Anglican High School and the Happy Hills Secondary School to stand by.
ladies and gentlemen, drum major today, Giovanni St. Clair. And our drum corps. Ladies and gentlemen, one thing I love about Intercall is that it brings us all together. And we will collaborate, our students are collaborating today to bring you some mass movement. Let us welcome the students of the Anakin High School and the Happy Hill Secondary School. Lots of talent. All right, all right, way to bust my bubble. All right. So apparently today we feature the students of the Anglican High School. And tomorrow we'll have another batch of students, am I correct? Well, thank you for that correction, thank you. And maybe on Thursday I will do my presentation. But it's not about me today, it's about the students. Ladies and gentlemen, our final presentation, let's welcome one more time the Anglican High School.
such as this one showcasing our youngsters for showcasing all the talents of Grenada. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to take this special opportunity to thank you once again for your attention. We have come to the end of our, our official opening ceremony. I am honored to be with you. My name is Neela Etienne, look, and we look forward to Three days of fantastic athletic sportsmanship and athletic fun and records being broken. Thank you, everybody, and I take you back trackside. Thank you very much, Neela Atia. Okay, good afternoon everybody and welcome back to the Grenada National Stadium, the Kirani James Athletic Stadium in beautiful Spice Country. Yes, well, based on everything that we've seen so far, the weather has held up true to form. Um, we were expected to max out to 31 degrees, it's feeling like 34 in the middle. Good time for records to be smashed, not too much of a heavy wind. And speaking about record smashing, we had one record going down this morning, which Amelia Nicholas, 37.97 in the female discus, impressive throw. She's young, she's energetic, and she's got a whole lot more in store for us. So we're back on the track this afternoon to round off day one. Interesting day it is. Not very many people, not a huge crowd in. Typical day one anticipation, but guess what? It is going to climb, especially from tomorrow, God's will, day two. So um, the point standings, we're going to get that for you in just a little bit because there was some final defense uh, which we had during the course of the morning. This afternoon, we've got about 17 final events to run off, and that is going to paint a picture. It's going to tell a story. It's going to create an atmosphere heading into day two. Jason Skeet is my name. Together with me is uh, Davis Adams. Davis Adams, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Jason. Good afternoon to the viewing public of... Um, for Intercol 2023 Championships. It's wonderful. It's a great pleasure to be with you and to carry you through to the sights and songs as well as the competition. Thank you, Jason, for having us. 
All right, well, uh, Intercore Games, powered by Republic Bank and uh, associate sponsors, Flow, Grenada uh, National Lotteries Authority, George F. Huggins, Saul E.C. Grenada Limited, and the Grenada Brewery, together with the T&R Communications. Good afternoon, everybody, no matter where you are. But uh, what you're seeing on the screen, you might see a little bit shade, but that's because it's way up to the top corner of the start of the 100 meters track, the top of the 100 meters. But anything from there, it is blazing, blistering sunshine out in the middle. We've got uh, an invitational race, two invitational races to run off this afternoon. And uh, one of them, of course, uh, getting ready to give you the details on that. Um, Adams, you had any opportunity, you know, chance to see or pay attention to anything during the course of the morning? Quickly? Yep. Yes, I did. And to me, um, so far, what I've seen is really, really encouraging um, from a Grenadian end. The fact that we have seen our athletes, first and foremost, being able to come out in a normal condition, minus the COVID period and industrial action, and to see all of those years being rolled back, it's indeed a, a, a pleasure just to be able to witness that, and I'm really, really privileged to be part of, uh, you know, um, bringing this to the Grenadian public, I'm Jason. All right, well, what we're seeing on your screen now is event number 75, the girls 100 meter dash special invitational open. Uh, Connie Smart in lane one, Kalia Lashington in lane two, Angelica Phillip in three, Deanne Grappi in four, Shelian A. Gard in five, uh, Niasha Fraser in six, and Shawnee Richardson in seven. The start of the 100 meter dash special invitation. And of course, we've got the boys' version as well. But uh, the Paralympians on show at the Intercall Games 2023. Yeah, and th the truth of the matter is what we have found is as time has rolled by, is the fact that inclusiveness has become the, the, the word of the day, the, the, the times that we are living in. And no one should be left because of having some special situations that they deal with, whether it's physically or um, intellectually. Um, we can all involve them in society. And so seeing them coming out to display and, and, and making them part of the, the, the whatever is happening is indeed extremely um, gratifying. I'm Jason to have them come out and to showcase the talent that God has blessed them with. As a matter of fact, you'd notice that throughout the world, Paralympics is probably one of the biggest um, games that we have now um, that the Olympics put on, Commonwealth Games put on, and much of the greater, uh, the bigger games that we have around the world, they also have the Paralympic um, Games to go with it so that we include each and every person. The Grenada Paralympic Committee relishes the opportunity given by the GSSGA to highlight the talent of our special education children. The primary objective of today's event is to expose different able, differently abled athletes to showcase their talent and above all create greater awareness and public appreciation for the Special Olympics and Paralympics. That's according to President of the Paralympics, Ray Roberts. Very good words and strong and powerful words coming in there from our brother Ray Roberts. Wonderful. And to see that we have so many other Grenadians paying special interest in our special boys and girls, whether in the varying degrees of physical challenges, coming to the fort and assisting them. People like Ray Roberts, who has um, been leading the way, and um, now you have Mr. Glenn Alexander with a whole committee of folks um, coming forward to support these people. It's indeed a wonderful um, activity to have. The athletes in this race ranging from ages 15 to 17. Shelly and Allard is 15, Deanne Grappi 15, uh, Shawnee Richardson 15, and uh, Keldon Joseph, she's 15 as well. Um, Kelson Manwarren 19, and Javon Wilson 17. So a lot of the athletes, um, participating today between the ages of 70, between 15 and 19. So uh, pretty good numbers there, good show and a good motivation. And a good age to get them so that they can continue to grow in this sport and be able to represent Grenada at a much higher level. Yeah, I remember uh, there was one Paralympian 
who was always consistent and always turning up and showing up and doing well. Uh, George, George, George. Yes, um, George. <laughs> George, uh, trying to get his name off the, the top of my head. His surname actually is George, um, but the surname we need to have, yes. Um, yeah, uh, it it will come. It just slipped me. But yeah, I mean, George, as yes, he was uh, affectionately called, always there, always there, o always there. And he ran with the able-bodied and was very proud, no matter what position he finished. Yeah. George Bullen. Yeah. George Bullen. That was it. George Bullen from um, Archibald Avenue. Cooper's Hill. From the top of Cooper's Hill. Yep. That was him. From the top of Cooper's Hill. Remember him now. He passed on recent. He passed on a few years ago, but uh, his memories, obviously, living another lifetime. Wonderful. So as we go through the afternoon, Sh uh, Sherry Ann Noel is down on the field and she's going to be bringing us up to speed. Of course, we've got a couple of field events that we're going to stay on top of. The javelin throw, sub-junior girls, the boys long jump. We've got uh, details on that to share with you, girls high jump and uh, the 100 meter dash special invitational. We're looking at that now, the start of that. We've got the boys to come, Daniel Charles and uh, Kellon Phillips. Kelson Man Warren, Cody Scott, Javon Wilson, and Keldon Joseph. Uh, that's uh, the field of for the male, the boy, the male 100 Invitational Open, special Invitational Open. We've also got the girls 1500 meter sub junior run, the boys 1500 meter sub junior, and uh, the 1500 meter junior boys and girls. That will be run off this afternoon. A couple of finals events, as uh, Antoine was alluding to earlier on today. One of the records that he said when we started the broadcast early this morning, Antoine looked at this uh, discus record and said, ah, ain't no way it's going to happen. And then it went, it went into the wind. It went with smoke, a record that stood from since 1994, I think it was. And today it was a good day for Jamila Nicholas. Young, talented, strong, still has a lot of developing to do. And with a throw of 37.97 meters, it means that she can only get a whole lot better. So we're monitoring that as well. And that's going to be, um, she's going to be around for at least another um, two, three years. And even at this age, this stage, even coming out after secondary school, she will still have the, 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 the time and the potential to do bigger things for Grenada. So we're monitoring that as well. One of the things that probably we, we can take note of, um, Jason, is the fact that um, what you call those events that at one time you would not have thought that the small islands would have excelled in, what you have found, not just Grenada, but other Caribbean islands, Trinidad, excelling in the field events. So you have um, from Trinidad, Javelin, you have from Grenada, Anderson Peters, and just recently the Grenada um, record for the javelin, I think it was held by Candisha Scott uh, for a while, uh, being broken by Jamar Al sometime last week at St. John's University, throwing just over 50. So the field events in Grenada is actually coming in into its own, and we have to give credit where credit is due. Um, people like Paul Phillip and, um, and our own Carl and Peters and all of the other um, secondary school coaches who have taken the time to nurture our budding field athletes, whether it's long jump, high jump, javelin, short put, discus, we are seeing our Grenadian athletes coming into their own. Oh, it's absolutely amazing. Fantastic. Don't know what the hold up is, but um, we will still monitor. Yeah, the start of the second session Start of the second session of uh, day one, Intercall Games 2023. The 55th Intercall Championships in beautiful Spice Country, Grenada. Uh, for those of you, well, you, we've got, we're on pay-per-view. Obviously, this is a pay-per-view broadcast. And for those of you who would just find for the first time, somebody would have told you about it. And you're going around, shopping around on the internet, finding Grenada. We're were commonly referred to as the Isle of Spice. Now we're pure Grenada, the Isle of Spice, still the Isle of Spice, but uh, located to the south of the, the, win the most southern of the Windward Islands, known for our spices, or spices, 
Yeah, we're known for that. We're known wo for a warm and friendly people. Correct. Yeah, our can culture, be, of course. Our culture can be a little bit imposing at times, but we mean well. <laughs> we will uh, be right there with you, for you, and by you all the time, no matter what. And this is the land of the world of famous oil down. For those of you wondering, the oil down, I can give you a brief synopsis. It's a mixture of ground provision cooked on a slow outside fire with coconut milk and assorted meats coming to a slow boil with pigtail, saltfish, callaloo, pumpkin and the works and it goes down. It can be eaten for the entire day and you will not want anything to eat for a while after having it. Jason, are you trying to convince yourself that you know how to cook oil down? Well, um, as I said, I was speaking to the folks <laughs> online and introducing them to beautiful Grenada. Short put is on the field. Sherry Ann Noel is down there. Sherry Ann, we're, we're, we're knowing that you're down on the field, so uh, we can, uh, you can give us an update as to what's happening there. We're seeing the short put. Is it short put? Um, junior girls. Junior girls, yeah. yes. Short put junior girls. Um, just trying to get the details here for you. The short put junior girls. We have the start list here. I think you might just want to um, run through the start list for the shot. But junior girls. If I can find it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can share. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, the short put junior girls. Yeah, short put junior girls. Uh, long list, 29 athletes. Would I run through the entire list? <laughs> not by any chance. Not, a lo not by a long shot. But I would tell you some of the names to look forward to. Um, Jovi Strawn, I think. Uh, well, we're going to get back to that in just a little bit. We're getting ready now for the start of the 100-meter uh, special invitation. Special invitational open. 100-meter special invitational open. Connie, Smart, Lashington, Philip, Grappy, Agard, Fraser, and Richardson. And they're off, and they're looking pretty good. It's a special invitational, and we can see the athlete in lane seven looking well, the athlete in lane five also looking well, really long strides, making it right so through to the end. Shelly and Agard uh, coming through, winning. Shelly and Agard, uh, not too much of a, a quick race, obviously, for those of you now finding the broadcast it was the special invitational uh, games for differently able for paralympians para, para athletes i should say and uh, shelly ann agard running out of lane five and uh, picking up the gold medal so uh, congratulations to her we also have the boys version of the 100 meters invitational open that's coming up in just a little bit, as soon as we're finished with this, we're going to head on down to Sherry Ann Noel, who is on the field. So she's monitoring us, of course. But uh, let's run through the start list quickly for the boys. We've got uh, Daniel Charles in lane one. Kellon Phillip in lane... No, Daniel Charles is in lane two, actually. Uh, Kellon Phillip is in three. Kelson Man Warren is in four. Cody Scott is in five. Javon Wilson is in six. And Keldon Joseph in seven. Keldon Joseph uh, seems to be uh, agile and eager, um, counting himself as, as the favorite for, for, for this one. Can't say that I've, I've seen any of them um, compete before, so I cannot uh, give you a synopsis of any of them uh, as it relates to their talents. But uh, from the starters list, and then you look in the middle, you see Cody Scott, the smallest of the lot. And uh, that could mean danger because when you're the smallest of the lot, people tend to overlook you. So uh, are we going to have a, a surprise here? Um, I'm looking at Scott in lane five or Joseph in seven. On the starters' orders. And they're off. Good, clean start for the athletes. And it's lane number two. Lane number four, it's very competitive actually, Jason. And we're seeing the athlete in lane number three really powering his way home. Followed by the athlete in lane number six, actually Javon Wilson, 
coming in second. But the athlete in lane number three, more than likely, Kelon Philip winning the race. And man, they're just giving each other a lot of dig at this time, enjoying themselves. Special race, special event, and inclusive of all our people in Grenada, Cary, Crumpity, Matnik. I'm sure you enjoyed this. All right, Sherry Ann, uh, you're with us. Sherry Ann is down on the field. We've got field events, and Sherry Ann is roaming about the place, having people with her. So uh, as soon as we get the cue from Sherry Ann, we're going to go down to her. She's uh, field side, so to speak. In progress, we've got the short put as well. I think we've got the boys short put. It looks like the boys, uh, sub the boys senior short put, I think. But we're going to get the details on that in just a little bit. So these young chaps still operating inside 12 meters. Um, you want to make a mark at this level. You've got to purpose yourself to throw anywhere over 12. Uh, still operating inside of 12 meters. All right, so uh, we've got Sherry Ann. Sherry Ann, you're there with us. Uh, speak to us, Sherry Ann. Okay, so we are live here and we are very privileged to have Joma Bain. Joma Bain is uh, one of the coaches for the differently abled children from St. Andrew and St. Mark who just ran the 100 meter race there in both the male and the female. Um, speak to us about the, the opportunity given to these special kids. Yes, I'm really happy to have this opportunity because this is the first time St. Andrew's School, well, any special education school have um, gotten the opportunity to take part in Intercall, and I'm very happy for that. Preparation of these athletes. The preparation for these athletes, they only got two days preparation prior to this event, so they did not get much opportunity, but from the, the period from practice to now was a big improvement, and I'm happy to see that the race came out successful. So is it that you would like to see more inclusion for these athletes in other sporting events? Oh, definitely, definitely. I'm happy to see more inclusion. I'm happy that we at least got the start and to show that the, the public that the, what these students are able to do. So I'm really looking forward to more inclusion in our events. Thank you very much. We are speaking here with Joma Bain. Joma is one of the coaches for the differently abled children from St. Andrew and St. Mark. We now go back to our commentary team. Thank you very much, Sherry Ann. Uh, Joma Bain doing, doing a lot of work there. He's uh, well assisted as well because there are a lot of folks working along with him. But he's got a good team and uh, he has been working very well with these uh, para-athletes. So congratulations to him and uh, the entire team. We have the junior boys long stand. We're looking for the start of the sub junior boys javelin on the far side. And also in progress, we have the shot put. The shot put for the octathlon boys. 
Reminder for new introductions, combined events this year. We have the heptathlon for the girls. Seven disciplines coming together to make one event. And the octathlon for the boys. Eight disciplines coming together to make one event. Hopefully from these we can find our future decathletes. As you know, our national athletes, Lyndon Victor and Kurt Felix, Olympians in the decathlon. It starts here, and we look forward to our octathletes and heptathletes as they prepare. Thank you so very much, Roland. We have a special prize giving ceremony for the winners of the special ed events at this point. Special prize given ceremony for the winners as well as participants of the special ed events. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a call for. Tyler Smith, please report to the ground floor of the stadium. Tyler Smith. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mrs. Naomi Diali, Managing Director of Republic Bank Grenada Limited. She's accompanied by Mr. Herman Mello Peters, former national athlete and football player. And Ms. Hilary Gabriel, coordinator, the National Council for the Disabled, Grenada National Council for the Disabled. The first place winners will receive, uh, will each receive a bouquet. And so we begin with the female, Diane Grappi. Congratulations, Diane. Well done. And the first place winner in the male category. Kellon Phillip. Diane also receives a trophy. Likewise, Kellon Phillip will receive a bouquet of flowers and a trophy. The rest of the participants will each receive a trophy. We begin with the female category, Connie Smith, presented by Ms. Hilary Gabriel, coordinator of Grenada National Council for the Disabled. Please remain there, Ms. Gabriel, thank you so much. Shelian Allard. Shawnee Richardson. Naisha Fraser. Kalila Lashington. And Angelica Phillip. We go now to the male participants. Keldon Joseph, we invite Mello, Mr. Herman Mello Peters, to present the next few trophies. Tyler Smith. 
Mr. Glenn Tellisford will receive on Tyler's behalf. Daniel Charles. Cody Scott. Javon Wilson. And Kelson Manwarren. Ladies and gents, a round of applause for all the participants of these special ed events. Thank you so very much. Mr. Herman Mello Peters, former national athlete and football player. Ms. Hilary Gabriel, coordinator of Grenada National Council for the Disabled. And Mrs. Naomi Diali. Managing Director, Republic Bank, Grenada Limited. Of course, Republic Bank, Grenada Limited, the title sponsor for the championships today, Intercall Championships, right here at the Karani James Athletic Stadium. It's day one. We wish to recognize additional sponsors, the National Lotteries Authority, Fruta, Star Malt, Flo, Glenel, Natural Spring Water, Lucozade, Soldanza, and Parade. Now let's head back to my colleague announcers, Roland and Twine and Russell John. And of course, Neela Atien is in the mix. Thank you very so much. So it's the girls 1500 meter sub junior intercall 2023. Four laps around the track, one lap being 300 meters. And generally, Jason, that is probably those races that I enjoy the most because I see strategy, I see thinking, I see planning in those races. And of course, you're looking for form, fitness, and endurance, and speed all combined in those um, races. So I enjoy the distance races quite a lot as we see uh, the athletes um, taking shape and getting to the end of the first lap around the track. Just a couple meters to go. thought something strange was going to happen didn't do well wasn't anticipating this um, this is a 1500 meters is not 300 meters not by a long shot so after a commanding lead coming around the first lap uh, the athlete I think from Boca secondary school decided well I'm home but not yet you're a long way from home three and a half laps really the 1500 meter sub junior girls it's an open event and uh, 27 Athletes scheduled to start off the event. Uh, some good times coming in, at, well, at their level. Uh, Shariah Phillip of Boca Secondary School, six minutes, 20 seconds, six, six, just over six minutes and 20 seconds. And also Annalisa Brown, also of Boca Secondary School, five minutes and uh, 23 seconds. And uh, there, Joselle Antoine, I think, from Happy Hill Secondary School, six and three quarter minutes. So um, it's not a quick race by all standards from the the female um, sub junior but um, well it's into call and uh, who knows something special might just happen it's a a cool afternoon um, overcast conditions the weather report earlier on this morning did in fact indicate that we will be having the odd shower especially during the course of the afternoon so it has been holding true to form because we've got more overcast conditions over the stadium now and a light drizzle 
greeting us. So something that they would love. And as a matter of fact, it might just be the, the motivation that these athletes need to pick up the pace just a little bit. But uh, let's see. In the meantime, we've got some high jump going on on the field. We've got some high jump going on on the field. And, of course, we've got um, events from the heptathlon. The boys have Tathlon, that too is happening. The short put, the boys have Tathlon, that's happening as well simultaneously. So a lot of activities on the field as we speak. Yes, Jason, and we see the race now taking shape, that 1500 meter race taking shape. Um, we've seen quite a few athletes are already establishing themselves. Um, the athlete from Anglican High School, the athlete from St. Joseph's Convent, St. George, and also that athlete from the Boca Secondary School um, taking it out front. We've seen a couple of athletes being distressed quite a bit because this is a grueling race to city list. But we're seeing the athletes from Boca Secondary and St. Joseph's Convent, St. George um, making the race, may, taking up the pace. And let's see what they have in them as they get to the um, bell lap. Um, the athlete from St. Joseph's Convent, St. George is now deciding that she probably can speed up, maybe to her distress a bit, Jason. But Boca Secondary School seemed to be comfortably going ahead, considering that the record for this race is 5 minutes 13.21 seconds by Kellyna Alexander set in 2014. So it's the athlete from Boca Secondary um, taking it out front. It's Boca Secondary followed by St. Joseph's Convent St. George, followed by the Anglican High School um, that's making the race. It's now... The final section of the race. And Boca Secondary is out front, followed by the St. Jo Joseph's Convent St. George as they hit the back straight. So, wow, it's a dominant display here. The crowd is really um, stirringly appreciating a good run by the athlete from the Boca Secondary who is going to lap one. This is not something you see very often, um, lapping of an athlete in the 1500. But the athlete from Boca, she is doing extremely well and powering away home. Final 30 meters to go. This is absolutely brilliant. I'm really enjoying this, and I hope you are at home. But this is a powerful run by the athlete from the Boca Secondary School, actually just dominating the field from start to finish. Um, and it seems as in second place would be the Anglican High School, followed by the athlete from, that looks like, is it Bishop's College? St. George, um, Kariku? Maybe not, but it's Anglican High School, and the athlete all in blue. So, it's almost a, a race that was almost a no contest in terms of the athlete from the Boca Secondary. We look forward to seeing the times, the record being 5 minutes, 13.21 seconds. We await the official results. Jason? Well, the distresses are showing up. Again, as I said, it's one of those grueling races that we have. Uh, and our athletes are, I mean, let, we believe that they've been training. Um, but of course, when you haven't had competition over the years, you can see what's happening, the results of those taking place, the form, the fitness might, might just be affected. But we were just really happy to see Intercall back on the calendar of events for Grenada. And I'm sure we are all enjoying the competition and the athletes are enjoying themselves. Of course, it's a distressing race if you are not fit, if you're not ready, but the athlete from Boca in a league of own just dominating from start to finish. All right, uh, very well said there. Uh, let's uh, see what Sherry Ann Newell has for us because Sherry Ann Newell is on the field. A lot of field events taking place simultaneously. Sherry Ann, what have you got? So with me now is the winner of the 1500 meter, uh, sub junior, Annalisa Brown from the Boca Secondary School, a time of 5 minutes 07.62 seconds. Um, how do you feel about the win this evening? It's good. 
how did you prepare yourself for today's event? I drink a lot of water. It's a um, station. How did you plan out the race? Because I realized you went at, at a certain pace and then coming to the end, you just left the pack with a lot of energy straight to the finish line. Yes, well, Mr. Stud, um, Miss when I run in, I take my time. And when I was there, I spent up. Do you have another distance restaurant? Maybe. I don't know yet. It's a little late. All right, thank you. That was the winner of the 1500 meter sub junior girls and Elisa Brown out of the Boca Secondary School. Back to our commentary team. Oh, Annalisa Brown was trying to, still trying to catch her breath. It was a good run, actually, and a tactical run, so to speak, just over five minutes, and uh, she did very well. It showed some acceleration coming down to the end, so it, it showed that she still has something in the tank, and if she were to be pushed, um, things could turn out to be a little bit dangerous. But what we're seeing now on your screen is the start of the boys' 1,500-meter sub-junior run as well. Yep, the boys 1500 meter sub junior run. And you have and under uh, 22 athletes in the event. Yeah, just under 22 athletes in the event. Um, and a good field. Um, the Boca Secondary School being represented again by two athletes uh, Trayvon Joseph and uh, Tejan Phillip. So, two athletes again represented for the Boca Secondary School. Um, what is interesting to note is that Phillip. A, a, he has run just under five minutes, four minutes, 59 seconds flat. And uh, from what I remember, he was not really challenged by that because um, his closest com um, competitor was over five minutes by maybe about 15 or 16 seconds. So um, it means that if um, Philip is pushed here this evening, we can see something special from him. We're going to let that race run through and... Uh, We've got uh, stuff still happening down on the field. Some heptathlon stuff still going on. So we're keeping an eye on that as well because um, these long events seems to now be the order of the day and everybody's talking about it. And sherri -Ann is going to continue to keep us up to date with that. I think she's going to be making her way over to see what information she can get because there are some field events taking place down there. But in the meantime, we're getting ready for the start of the boys' 1500 meters sub junior. Games record 4 minutes 32.28 seconds 2016. Kevin Roberts. And we hope that um, the athlete from the Boca Secondary School, Tejan um, Philip, can get close to it with competition. It looks to be a good race. 22 athletes represented all of the schools, or most of the schools represented here. And I believe we're going to have a good, excellent race for the boys of junior 1500 meters, Intercal 2023. Two, two athletes from the Wester Hall Secondary School, two athletes representing the Boca Secondary School. Uh, JW Fletcher Catholic Secondary has two athletes in this event as well. And the SAS, another pair, St. David's Catholic Secondary School, another pair, McDonald College. Uh, we're noticing one, two, I think is yeah, two athletes from McDonald College. PBC, um, uncharacteristically, has an athlete in uh, Caleb Alexander in this race as well. Um, um, Kavon James is there for GBSS. You know, two athletes from PBC actually. Uh, Joshua Tellisford is there. So um, a decent field. A decent field. Uh, most of the schools being represented in this race sending out two athletes. Generally in the 1500 meters what you find is that one athlete would go out, set the pace and, and uh, understanding his role, the, ma the, 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 the main athlete uh, the star of the two will then um, pick up and uh, be the surprise. And generally, that's how you end up with the one and two most of the time. So um, let's see what will happen, what will transpire. But uh, most of them, they've got two athletes in this race. PBC, GBSS, Boca Secondary School, Wester Hall Secondary, McDonald College, uh, Happy Hill, um, SAS. Most of the schools have two athletes. So just about 11 schools being represented in this event here. The boys, 1,500 meters sub-junior there at the top of the start. Getting ready, waiting for the gun. Cool evening, overcast conditions at the Karani James Athletic Stadium. Perfect conditions for the smashing 
of a record, especially in the long distance track event. Perfect conditions, absolutely perfect conditions on a track that has been labeled as one of the faster tracks in the region, the track here at the Karani James Athletic Stadium. We also have Hillsborough Secondary School represented um, from the style of Kariku. Can't forget them, Kariku and Piti Matnik. And of course, Bishop's College from Kariku and Piti Matnik also represented. Hillsborough Secondary School represented by two. Jalen John. So, here, so here's the start. Here's the start. Let's get the start. Here's the start. And they're off. Nice, clean, comfortable the start. No threat for anybody. No one is going to just make a move yet. Everyone is testing to see what the other person has. Generally, you don't find anybody being bold and brave to jump out just yet. Everybody feels their way around the first three, four, five hundred meters maximum and then the story starts to be told. The picture starts to be painted. Pay particular attention to it's either Philip or Joseph from the Boca Secondary School just idling back there, still in the middle of the pack, but uh, he's gone far ahead. This looks like uh, Nikhil Courtney in the, the light blue and black. Light blue and black represents which school, Adams? You might know the color scheme is right in front of you. You might know light blue, baby blue and black. I think uh, Bernard and Twine ran, ran through the, um, the color schemes for us this morning. Beacon High School, Royal Blue, Sky Blue, Bishop's College, Red and Royal Blue, Boca Secondary, Green and Black. So just, just, just the black and the blue. There are two schools in the, the baby blue and the black just the two schools in the black and there's one school in a baby blue and black st george's institute turkish turquoise green black with white gold yellow fluorescent green western hall royal blue and white west Moland secondary we cannot seem to get this one blue and black bam this is real And you know, yeah, well, our cameraman did the justice for us. So, uh, GCA, that's a Grenada Christian, Christian Academy. Academy. Mm. So, this looks like a Thomas, Thomas from the Grenada Christian Academy. And um, Keith Charles, no qualifying times for them to come into this event. We can't seem to get the number on on the on the t-shirt if we do get the number on the t-shirt then we'll be able to tell the story a better story actually it's either charles or courtney but representing the grenada christian academy and he's out in front some good distance there and he holds on to this then clearly if he has the opportunity to make a push then he could create some issue looking at the record the record is Four minutes, 32.28 seconds. I don't think the record is under threat. Kevon Roberts' record is still going to stand because um, a lot of time has elapsed. Uh, from what we've seen, they've gone just over two minutes already, closer to three minutes, and still, um, yeah, just about uh, three minutes and uh, four seconds gone and still some distance to cover. So the record seems to be safe. It's the final lap. So this is Keith Charles. Keith Charles it is. Yes, we picked him up. Keith Charles of the Grenada Christian Academy. He's out in front. Athlete wearing number 642. We picked it up quickly. Keith Charles. And he's out in front by some distance. Ah, doesn't seem as if he's going to be caught anytime soon. He's breathing well, pumping, and allowing his momentum to carry him through. And uh, he's just really going on momentum. Is he going to make a kick? And go after the record. The record is um, 432.28. We're running at 357. We're just at the top of uh, four minutes. Um, is he going to do that in all of that in 30 seconds? I doubt. So the record seems to be safe. The record is 432.28. He's basically running against himself now. He knows uh, he looked up at the clock and realized, nope, there's no chance I'm going to get this. 
417. He's got about, what, um, another 80 meters to go. And uh, the record is safe, 432.28. But Keith Charles is going to come through. He's pushing for it. He's not going to get it. 432, he's not going to get it. But he is going to get the gold medal. He stops the clock at 436.7. And that's good enough for him to get the gold medal. Not good enough for the record, but good enough for the gold medal. So congratulations to Keith Charles. And the rest of the field ambers across, ambles across. And uh, that's the curtains on the boys' 1,500-meter sub-junior run into call 2023. Johnson, um, Davis Adams, your, your take? Good run by Keith Charles. And w what's amazing about his run is that from the time he broke away into the second lap around for the 1500 meters, he was unchallenged. Hence, at f uh, doing it in under 450 tells me that if he was challenged, it is possible he could have gotten to Kevin's record of 432. So there is uh, um, a lot of potential there in Keith Charles, and um, we just want him to be challenged. So wonderful run from Keith. Um, the athlete from the St. Andrews Anglican Secondary came in second. And so the, the guys from the big parish, they have done extremely well. And you can see potential in Keith Charles. All right. So Boca Secondary School, you're well represented there. Uh, no, Grenada Christian Academy, I should say. You're well represented by Keith Charles picking up the gold medal. The six, wearing number 642. He did it in just uh, over four minutes and 37 seconds. So... Uh, Let's see how that goes. Four minutes, 36.72 seconds. Keith Charles of the Grenada Christian Academy. Very good run, Jason. It's a really good run. Because again, as you said, if he was, on, if he was challenged, I want to believe with a, a, a lap to go, that record could have gone this year. But nonetheless, Keith has another shot next year, please the Lord, God's will, to get it. Um, coming in first. Um, representing the Greener Christian Academy. Well done, guys. Uh, well, what is even interesting to note here now is that um, Keith, the, the game's record for the junior boys is 4 minutes 19 seconds, which was established in 2003. Now, Keith ran 4 minutes 36 seconds, and he's got some time to train and come back, and he's going to be bumping up to the, the junior level next year now. If he does that and he's challenged at in that uh, uh, capacity, it means that even the junior record could be well in his sights. Correct. Correct. Good run by the young man. The start of the event number 61, the girls 1500 meters junior. Um, again, pedestrian times here. We're seeing um, Kira... Cowich, um, just over six minutes, six and a half minutes, closer to seven really. Um, almost a lifetime there, but uh, we've got uh, athletes being represented from just about 11 schools. McDonald College with just uh, one athlete in this event in uh, Ronisha Kato. Uh, we've got the Grenville Secondary School with uh, one athlete as well in uh, Kemlin Julian. Wesley College with just one athlete, uh, Janique Belgrave, St. Joseph's Convent, St. Andrew with one athlete, uh, Sharice Alexander, St. Joseph's Convent, St. George, Azri Isaac, and uh, Sass with one. Happy Hill Secondary with one athlete in the person of Ashley Mitchell. So good representation across the field here now from the secondary schools. 18 um, athletes at the starters list. Will all 18 start? We can't say. It does look like it from the field. A quick check of the eyes tells us that it seems to be just about 18 of them. Yeah, about 20 of them. So there probably is one or two probably who we do not have here, but I count up 20 of those. Um, but we have the athletes also from Mr. Style, Bishop's College, and Hillsborough Secondary also represented from Bishop's College, McQueen Williams, um, who is running the junior, 1,500 meters, and really nice to see um, the athletes from the Sister Isle also represented. All right, well, you check the numbers on their thighs from the top to the bottom of your screen. 
18 athletes being represented in this the girls sub the girls junior 1500 meters open event St. Mark's Secondary School, Risha Lington is there. Happy Hill Secondary School, Rihanna Williams. Um, not quite sure. Um, I know Bernard and Twine had the opportunity to visit most of these schools at athletics championships. Um, I don't know if he has uh, recollection of any of them doing anything extra special. He doesn't seem to have any. He has shook his head in the negative. So... He said, nothing out of the ordinary. But the only time that we have registered in coming into the event, 6 minutes 36.3 seconds by Kira Kowich of the Westmoreland Secondary School. So if this race is going to go for over 6 minutes, then we've got time on our hands. Well, the record in this race, Jason, is 4 minutes, 40.30, 1999, Daniela Abraham of the St. Joseph's Convent, St. Andrew. And so we're hoping that we get a much faster race than the times that we would have seen. But they're off. All right, well, the, the time to beat, if you're looking to establish a record in this event, is 440.30. Um, the opening piece suggests that they're well on course for that. Um, is it going to happen? Is it uh, a flash in the pan? Is it something that's going to bubble down like uh, good old Callaloo in oil down Grenadian style? We wait and see. Is it something that's going to be steaming like hot pepper? Well, that too will tell the story. Let's see what's going to happen. The 1500 meter girls junior. In the meantime, Sherry Ann is uh, somewhere down there. We, we know that uh, they've got some high jump activity taking place on the field. Not quite sure whether it's part of the heptathlon for the, the girls or uh, the program would also tell us that there's some uh, high jump. The girls' high jump senior should be in progress. So we're going to monitor that and wait and see as well because our program is telling us that the girls' high jump uh, senior should be in progress as well. So they're into the second lap of the girls' 1500 meters, making their way down the back street. The athlete from Westerhall Secondary, the athlete from St. David's Catholic, and J.W. Fletcher Catholic Secondary. Those three athletes are making the running. And then you have Sass. Um, taking up the fourth place, followed by the athlete from the Wesley College. So they're settling into a really comfortable pace. As we said, it's good weather. Um, it's really um, asking for records to be set. But let's see if these athletes have what you call the necessary um, fitness and form to be able to establish those records. But it's a pretty slow pace that's been set by the athletes out front. It is happy, it is sorry, it is St. David's Catholic, J.W. Fletcher, and the Westerhall Secondary School, the Westerhall Iguanas. These are the athletes making the running. Two more laps to go. It's good to see the schools that are young in the intercall um, being part of the front running. That is the J.W. Fletcher Catholic, um, holding her end with the athlete from the St. David's Catholic Secondary School. So it's St. David's Catholic Secondary, it is J.W. Fletcher, and they are really um, setting the pace in this one here. They're going down the back straight for the second time. So Alian Gidari, Alian Gidari of the St. David's Catholic Secondary School, wearing tag 1856 is out there she is holding on to a hairline lead slim lead has bubbled down into a jog mostly so to speak so if there was ever the definition of a walk in the park this might just be it but uh we're waiting to see how it is going to play out maybe they're waiting for a huge burst to take us through the last uh, lap or so so it is still the athlete from the St. David's Catholic with the athlete from the J.W. Fletcher um, Catholic 
um, followed by the athlete from the Westerhart Secondary School. J.W. Fletcher, Riona Smith, were in 1352. So it's Riona Smith um, and the athlete from St. David's Catholic, Elian Gidari. Making the running, and this is a bell lap at this time. Another 25 meters to the final lap. St. David's, J.W., Westerhall Secondary. Uh, Shania Peters of the Westerhall Secondary School in third. Tried to make a run just a short while ago, but was pushed back by Alian Gadari and uh, Riona Smith. But out front, it's uh, Rihanna, Alian Gadari, and Riona Smith holding form, going uh, stride for stride. And uh, a slowing Shania Peters, uh, a slowing, waist holding, chipping Shania Peters in third position. But uh, it is turning out to be Gadari and Smith. Still matching strides. The time has gone now to 4 minutes and 53 seconds. Um, the record, huh, 4 minutes and, and 30 seconds. So that has gone through the door already. Um, they're not bothering at that because they've, we've crossed 5 minutes now going. But uh, it seems as though Gidari may just have the last little bit of energy to push forward. She seems the stouter of the two. But um, Smith, slim, slender Smith could make a final push. Is she going to do it? Well, it doesn't seem as though that is going to happen. So, uh, Gidari, Eliane Gidari of the St. Davis Catholic Secondary School will amble across the finish line. She's well inside six minutes, if that's the target. Uh, just about five minutes and uh, just under five minutes and 40 seconds. And... Uh, that's the, the pedestrian story of the girls 1500 meters junior. Well, they came, they performed, and what's important is the color of the medal at this time. The athlete from the St. David's Catholic Secondary, she wins the gold. The athlete from J.W. Fletcher Catholic Secondary, she wins the silver. And I, I am sure that they are all elated. The schools are related. St. David's has gotten another gold. J.W. Fletcher has gotten a silver. They are picking up the points. And this is what they came for, to come and to compete and to showcase the best that they have to offer. Well done to the schools. Um, you have made yourselves proud. You have represented well. And we're just happy to see you come out here and perform for Intercall Athletic Championship 2023. St. David's Catholic, J.W. Fletcher Catholic. All right, well, that's the story there. It's uh, a long story that was told, really. Um, six minutes of stories were told. And uh, we're going to leave that right there because that's now part of the history that would have made the Republic Bank into call 2023, the 55th edition, the success story that it has been. Now, let's get ready now and switch gears because uh, we're going to head to the... We're going to head to the, the girls, um, 1,500 meters... Junior, we've got that. We've still got the boys 1500 meter junior to run. So we're going to head to that in just a little bit. So coming first, Alien Gidari, second, Riona Smith, and from Bishop's College, Kariku, Kashona, um, 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 representing um, Bishop's College in Kariku. So the schools that we consider the, the small of the powerhouses have shown themselves here, um, coming and interrupt quite a bit here. That is the Carrico Bishop's College and the J.W. Fletcher Catholic Secondary School. We are now getting ready for, is it the girls? 1500 June, no. 1500 meter senior girls, it would seem here. More than likely, it's the girls, 1,500 meters senior. Another big field, and that's what we are noticing. Big fields in the 1,500 meters. I'm counting 19 here on the start list. Um, Grenada Christian Academy, St. Joseph's Convent, St. George, McDonald College, SAS, um, Boca Secondary, St. Joseph's Convent, St. Andrew, McDonald College, um, Hillsborough Secondary School, um, 
Anglican High School, um, St. David's Catholic Secondary School, Grenada Seventh-day Adventist Comprehensive, and Grenada Christian Academy. They are all represented in this, the 1,500-meter senior open girls, Kelly and Julian, Mia Samuel, Francesca Henry, Shalene Francois, Alana Charles, Kimberly McQueen, Nolana Harry, Irona Cape, Destiny Padmo, Kevilisha Joseph, Kasima Langain, Rachel Ferry, Ariana Williams, Kadona Mark, Anjali Matthew, Shamia Felix, um, Naela Hilaire, and Daniel Crony, Grenada Christian Academy. Naela Hilaire, Grenada Seventh day Adventist Comprehensive. Shamia Felix, um, St. Mark Secondary. Kadona Mark, Boca Secondary. Ariana Williams, St. Joseph's Convent, St. Andrew. Rachel Ferry, Anglican High School. Kasima Langain, St. Mark Secondary. Kevilisha Joseph, St. David's Catholic Secondary School. Destiny Padmore, um, St. Joseph's Convent, St. George. Erona Cape, St. Andrew's Anglican Secondary. Nolana Harry, Happy Hill Secondary. Kimberly McQueen, McDonald College. Naomi Alad, St. Joseph's Convent, St. Andrew. Alana Charles, Boca Secondary. Shalene Francois, St. Andrew's Anglican Secondary. Francesca Harry, McDonald College. Amia Samuel, St. Joseph's Convent, St. George. And rounding out the field, Kelly and Julian, Grenada Christian Academy. All represented here. To start that event, we also have to bring you up to speed with the girls' heptathlon open and the boys' octathlon open because uh, there are a number of events after, I can just give you the rundown quickly, after one, two, three, four events, um, after four events, we still got the long jump, the javelin throw uh, to, to go in the, the girls' heptathlon. We had the 100-meter hurdles, the high jump, and uh, we've also had the... Yeah, so after these events, St. Um, Shamari Joseph of St. John's Christian Secondary School is out in front on 1,477 1, points, and Destiny Langine of the Anglican High School following with 1,229 points, and uh, Thalia Desant of St. David's Catholic Secondary School with 1,212 points. Those are the top three with uh, still another four uh, events remaining in the girls have Thatlan. In the meantime, this 1500 meter, this looks like the, is this the 1500 meter junior girls? 1500 meter senior, senior girls. girls. Yes. yes. The 1500 meter senior girls. While that's happening, uh, the boys octathlon open after uh, what three events. We still have um, Shamar Fleming of the Boca Secondary School out with 1,765 points. Um, Aviel Junior Williams with uh, from the St. Andrews Anglican Secondary School SAS was one on 1,747 points. And uh, Zillon Cox of St. David's Catholic Secondary, 1,726 points. We've still got the, they still have the 110 hurdles, the high jump and the javelin throw and the 1,500 meters to go in the boys octathlon open so um another if you want to talk about grueling events the heptathlon and the octathlon two grueling events but the weather conditions making it absolutely perfect for them to get through especially if you're doing all these events the 110 hurdles the javelin throw and the 1500 meters you want to pay particular attention to that in the boys octathlon correct and so out front is the athlete from the mcdonald college followed by the athlete from Happy Hill Secondary School. They're making the running in the senior girls 1500 meters. The record for this event at this time is four minutes, 49.90 seconds set by no other than the great Stephanie Ferguson in 2001. That is 22 years ago, Jason. That's a long time and it has not been beat as yet. But it is the Happy Hill Secondary School making the runnings. So, Lorna Henry of Happy Hill Secondary School 
Nolana Henry of Happy Hill Secondary School out there representing well for her school. Um, slowing down just a little bit. Uh, just crossed the two minute mark, two minutes and 12 seconds and going. Uh, she has separated herself from the bunch. It doesn't look to be too comfortable. Uh, a little bit of a grimacing on her face. But, um, well, let's see what it will turn out to be in uh, Nolana Henry of the Happy Hill Secondary School. The girls, 1500 meter senior. The record, as you said, Adams, 4 minutes and 49 seconds. Um, they're not going to get this, not this afternoon, not for sure, because it was <laughs> just about uh, 2 minutes and 53 seconds into the event. Um, this, this record is no way going to happen. As a matter of fact, we may just very well have a new record set on the other end of the scale. So it's J.W. Fletcher in second, and then followed by the St. Joseph's Convent, St. George, um, and St. Joseph's Convent, St. Andrew. So those are the top four athletes that are in this 1500 meter senior girls. Um, nothing really to talk about in terms of pace and speed and, and energy, but of course, what counts at the end is the color of the medal that they will be able to possess. And um, I think right now it's the medal and not the time. All struggling, Jason. All well, struggling is putting it nicely. But uh, what is even more important now is that the, the athlete in third, St. Joseph's Convent, St. George, it seems to be uh, Amaya Samuel. You, you think it's St. Joseph's Convent, St. George? Yes, in it Amaya is Amaya Samuel, mm. she has moved up to third position. And uh, she seems to be looking the most comfortable in third. So is she going to... Uh, stretch forward she seems to be r running most comfortably no sort of a expression on her face just going through destiny so padmore it, it, it may very well mean that uh, oh this is destiny padmore yes yes padmore may very well be uh the one to watch this is the final lap and we've lapped the clock four minutes already four minutes and 25 seconds gone and uh, Padmo now seems to be making a run for it. Yep, she has moved into second place. Remember we said earlier on that there's no expression on her face, no grimace. So maybe she has something left in the tank. St. Joseph's Convent, St. George will be loving this. They will be loving this. Here comes Padmo. Smith of GW Fletcher is uh, right there out in front. But this is so it's J.W. Fletcher and it is St. Joseph's Convent, St. George. Saint at the Joseph's top of Convent. the hill and the bottom of the hill. St. Joseph's Convent, Destiny Padmore representing St. Joseph's Convent, St. George. Remember, just as she was in this position on the previous lap, we said look out for her because it seems as though she has what it takes. And yes, she has shown now some some power, some strength. She's going to power her way through. They're not going to catch her, not at all. She needs, for, well, she's going to have to have a cramp or something for, for it to be caught because she's going to power her way through. Uh, it doesn't seem as if it's going to happen. She's not going to get to the record. The record has miles gone, really. The record, 4 minutes and 49 seconds. That was an eternity away. But uh, the tussle really is for second place. And uh, Wesley College with the surprise pulling of second. So Wesley College surprising the pack. Coming in second in, in, in this event, trying to pick up the athlete's name from Wesley College. But, um, yeah. So, good run by Padmore of St. Joseph's Convent. St. George, good run by Padmore. Picking up the gold medal. She ran a very tactical race. Was nowhere in the mix until the last um, 400 meters, really. She kind of edged up, found a place, found a position held tight to it, didn't do anything outrageous, stuck to the plan because clearly she had a plan. And with just about um, 300 meters to go, then she started to push. And it was a calculated push as well. Yes, she understood that the, uh, the other athletes were right there in front of her, but she did nothing too extravagant, held on to it, kept the composure. And with about uh, 200 meters to go, she told the rest of the field, my name, you would remember my name, for gold. Denisha, Destiny Padmore. Mm. Destiny Padmore is my name. And with 80 meters to go, she created the separation. And uh, the gold medal was hers 
definitely from that point on. Uh, what, what was important to note for Destiny is that the athletes allowed her to be comfortable in her race. She's not fast, um, I mean, by any stretch of the imagination, but they allowed her to run a comfortable race. And because they allowed her to run a comfortable race, then they, uh, they allowed her to be able to, to um, come through in a, in, in a way that, you know, she was not hustled at all. Sarah Dowden of St. Joseph's Convent, St. George, actually, and not Padmore. So it is Sarah Dowden instead. So, Sarah, well done to you. Um, Angelic Belgrave, Wesley College, well done to you. And Kenaya Philip of St. Joseph's Convent, St. Andrew, also well done to you. The record being 449.90, not being close at all. Um, but nonetheless, at the end of the day, the fact that you got gold is what matters. You represented and you did the best you can. So it's a boys 1,500 meters at this time. All right, but just before we go down to that, David Adams, we also have to bring our viewers up to speed because uh, with the heptathlon and the octathlon happening on the field, um, the boys in the octathlon and uh, still out in front, 1,765 points from the Boca Secondary School, Shamar Fleming and uh, Aviel Jr. Williams, Aviel Williams Jr., um, 1,747 points in second place and three events remaining. Um, it, turns, it will turn down to be who is uh, the better of those events because uh, the point standings between, the point between one, two and three are not very far off. There's not much daylight there at all. So anything can happen and anything that can happen, will happen. Yeah, will happen. All right, in the girls, the girls have that long. Um, Shamar Joseph of St. John's Christian, 1,477. And the Destiny Langan of the Anglican High School, 1,229. And then a little bit of separation between the top two and uh, Thalia Desant of the St. David's Catholic Secondary School, 1,212 points. So uh, in the girls, heptathlon, one and two. They've got their little battle going on, and then um, the battle for third between three and four. Three, four, and five, really. Outside of that, um, daylight between everything else. So it's a big field in the boys, 1,500 meters senior, and most of the schools are represented in pairs. Um, GBSS, McDonald College, Boca Secondary, um, St. Andrew's Anglican Secondary, Presentation Brothers College, Hill, Happy Hill Secondary, um, Grenada Christian Academy, um, Boca Secondary, Gren Grenville Secondary. They're all represented here in the boys' 1500 meters. And hopefully, we are going to see a, a, a good race. The, the record being 357, set in 2003 by Kendall Simon, if you remember Kendall well. Um, and that's 20 years ago. And sure, Kendall must be saying, can someone break this record at this time? Well, Antoine Blackett of Presentation Brothers College is out the gate. And uh, is he out the gate to uh, lead from the start? Or is he out the gate hoping for the best and uh, trying to set some distance to at least grab a medal? Is he more purposeful than that? Time will tell. But uh, some separation of the field now between one and two and the rest of the pack. Um, a little bit of daylight between three and the rest of the pack as well. But uh, still very much a decent cluster. It's going to stretch out. It's going to stretch out as always. And uh, after the second lap, then by that time, we'll be able to get a clearer picture as to who's going to go where. Yes. So J.W. Fletcher has two athletes in this race. Nikki Fletcher, Nikki Bartholomew of J.W. Fletcher, is representing the school, and David Morell, one of them is out front. The athlete from the Presentation Brothers College is also there, and it's both athletes from Presentation Br Brothers College. You have Antoine Blackett, and you also have Nathan Holas. This one seems to be Nathan Holas in second position with the athlete from the Presentation Brothers College. So it, it is... It is the athlete from the J.W. Fletcher Catholic Secondary School and the athlete from, from the um, 
the presentation brothers college it is a boys sorry 1500 meters junior um boys 1500 meters junior race so we have the athlete from jw seon um seon boris and we also have shem smith so we got the wrong one but it's the junior boys 1500 meters so again it's beautiful to see that the athlete is actually from the happy hill secondary that's leading the race it's athlete from happy hill secondary leading the race so let's see it's quite a long distance ahead and the bunching up for second third fourth fifth and sixth um, hopefully they're going to extricate themselves but at present it is the happy hill secondary school out front in the boys junior 1500 meters race whether it's Deloney Patrice or whether it is um, Dennis John, Happy Hill Secondary School um, is leading the race at this time. Yes. 12. 12.03. It is Deloney Jeffrey, Deloney Patrice from the Happy Hill Secondary School. In second place now is the athlete from the St. David's Catholic Secondary School. St. David's Catholic taking up the running in second position at this time. So it is Happy Hill Secondary, it is St. David's Catholic Secondary School, and the Boca Secondary, followed by SAS. Boys Junior 1500 meter race. This is going to be interesting. Really going to be interesting. He's been taking up the running, he's been leading, and hopefully he would want to get the gold. But the St. David's Catholic Secondary athlete has now decided that it is time to take the lead. We're getting into the bell lap, St. David's Catholic Secondary, followed by the athlete from the Boca Secondary and the athlete from Happy Hill Secondary. This is the bell lap. The athlete from St. David's Catholic seems to be extremely strong. Um, that might be just be E.J. George, St. David's Catholic Secondary, Boca Secondary. Uh, St. David's Catholic, Boca Secondary, that is how it ends St. David's Catholic, Boca Secondary School, and followed by the athlete, it would seem, for like from GBSS. Good run by these guys. And then Happy Hill in fourth position after having set the table for the guys in the junior division. So boys, 1,500 meter junior. Let's see what the time is going to be. Games record 419, 2003, Nilon Joseph. 419, 2003, Nilon Joseph. Really golden days of running. E.J. George, St. David's Catholic Secondary School. Um, Nick, Nicholas Frederick, Boca Secondary. And Zaydon George, St. Andrews Anglican Secondary School. That's the position that they came in. So that's the second hit in the junior boys, 1500. E.J. George doing a pretty good time for St. David's Catholic in the first hit. And now we have hit number two, much smaller one than the first one.
EJ did 426 in hit number one. Remember, the record time is 419. Not a bad run by EJ George. So in this event, you're going to have hit number two, Kimon Williams, Sion Boris, John T. and Noel, Jadel, Etienne, Jalen, St. Louis, Tayshon Roberts, Dennis, John Jr., Yazid Richardson, Kieran John, and Anson Abedin, St. Mark's Secondary, Wesley College, McDonald College, Hillsborough Secondary, Secondary, Presentation Brothers College, the Grenada Boys Secondary School, Westerhall Secondary, St. David's Catholic Secondary, J.W. Fletcher Catholic Secondary, and St. Andrew's Anglican Secondary School, represented by Kimon Williams. The Iguanas, represented by Jadel Etienne. The only time we have here is Dennis John Jr. from the Hillsborough Secondary School. So let's see what he has to give at a bigger stage. So, as we said, the weather is really conducive for good runs. We just want to have our athletes perform at the best. And so far, um, while the times haven't been um, close to record times, but we believe and we are convinced they are giving the best that they have at this time. And most importantly, they are representing the spirit of Intercol, um, the spirit of the school, and going out there and showcasing what talent they have to offer. Ten athletes at the start of this one. Um, who are they, the ones to look forward to? Well, time will tell because uh, we haven't had much times really from, from, any, from, from any of them. Um, but let's wait and see. Generally, the, the athletes from St. David's Catholic Secondary School always uh, a threat in this one and he is uh, oh just as we spoke of him that's uh, uh johnita noel johnita noel of the saint david's catholic secondary school uh, setting the pace out in front and uh, let's wait and see but uh no no real times to speak of for for anyone so we're gonna have to go on um just uh, previous knowledge and then a little bit of anticipation here and there but uh, the pack pretty much still together uh, save and accept the last two down at the back so uh, the pack very much together Noel had a burst but uh, cool things down a little bit just dragged everyone with him but uh, I think he's playing uh, some mind games because now he's stretching them again and uh, he's gonna continue doing that I believe continue stretching them trying to put some daylight uh, the 1500 meter run always a tactical run it has moved from being just another long distant run to a more tactical run so to speak um, you would think that the kind of tactic that an athlete would employ in the 800 meters was really tactful 20 years ago now you're seeing that kind of tact being uh, employed here in the 1500 meters so uh, let's wait and see again the field comes together I um, think Noel is playing a little game He's stretching the field and uh, saying, all right, are you guys going to come? Then come, and he's waiting. But no one is really taking him on just yet. No one is taking him on just yet. Let's wait and see. So it is St. David's Catholic. It's McDonald College. It is St. St. Presentation Brothers College and St. Andrew's Anglican Secondary School. Oh, They're making the running. Yazid Richardson from McDonald College was uh, coming forward but uh, decided to hold back just a little bit he's in third noel has dropped back to second comfortable second um as he ran out of gas because he has slipped into third now uh, mcdonald college that's uh, yazid richardson the tallest in the field he's now 
stretching the field looking looking comfortable doesn't look as if he has too much of a bother but so too is everyone else around him um, no one showing any real signs of uh, uh, lethargy but uh, <laughs> Richardson is stretching the field he's got some long legs he's the tallest in the field he was on the outside to start and allowed the cluster to go their way he was in about fifth or sixth position at the start of the event but not really bothering too much St. Mark secondary Is it, this is St. Mark secondary. secondary yes St. Mark secondary all right so it's not Richardson but actually it's Aberdeen Anson Aberdeen St. Mark secondary you see all right so um, three minutes and 24 seconds gone this is the final lap um, the event Record was the event record, Adams. It is 419, 2003. Neil and Joseph. 419. It is not going to happen today. 419 is a long way off <laughs> for Anson Aberdeen, for sure. But um, he has his sights set on crossing the finish line first. And uh, unless something drastic happens, he's going to uh, stride across with ease and comfort. There's an athlete from GBSS. This looks like a St. Louis. Uh -oh. Yeah, Jalon St. Louis. <laughs> Jalon St. Louis came from out of nowhere like a rocket. <laughs> when, when you thought that Aberdeen had it, Jalon St. Louis came from out of nowhere like a bullet. <laughs> Coincidentally, Tantine bullets. <laughs> he came from out of nowhere like a bullet. And uh, Antoine... Uh, the person you were looking at from St. Davis Catholic Secondary School comes on the finish line. This, 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 was, this was like a show of rain. This, this event was like a show of rain. It was up, it was down, it started, it stopped. And the person who we thought, well, ran out of gas, so to speak, from, from the very top when he started, that's uh, John Eaton Noel, came back and won the race on the finish line. And nothing but... Um, Point two or point three of, of, of a second separating him. It's gonna be tight. And <laughs> <laughs> wow, separating him and St. Louis. Um, it's uh, it's up again. Let's take a look at it because St. Louis was gone. I mean, you would never think that uh, St. Louis was in any threat. Really, there were so many lead changes in in this event, and coming down to the wire with just about uh, 40 meters to go, 50 meters really. Um, Noel decided he's not going to lose and he powered his way through. What the takeaway from this is that Noel has some stuff left in the tank. Therefore, it means that if he's really challenged and he's pushed, it means that he can do something extraordinary. Um, 434, 435, the time, uh, the meet record 419, 419. Um, I don't think the meet record would be under threat, but I believe that Noel can do a whole lot better than 435. Nonetheless, uh, his time is not faster than, um, I think, the other athlete from St. David's Catholic. Um, he also did 430-odd. Um, so they're very, they're very close, um, um, my friend, in terms of their running. They probably train together. They are... They're good friends, and, and the times are really close. Dave, um, John T. Well from St. David and his other friend, E.J. George from St. David, both times are very similar, um, Jason. All right. Well, still early days. This is uh, day one, and uh, I can tell you in the female division, St. David's Catholic Secondary School is out on front with 64 points, followed by the Anglican High School on 31, and St. Joseph's Convent St. Andrew on 19, Bishop's College out of Caracuz on 16, and the Boca Secondary School on 14 points. Um, the St. Joseph's Convent St. George is right there on uh, 13 points in 6th position. Anybody else after that? Really in single digits. In the boys' category, it's a little bit tighter from between the top to the bottom, because in the girls, 64 points for St. David's Catholic, 31 
for Anglican High School in the boys. The story painted is just a little bit different. St. Andrew's Anglican Secondary SAS is out front on 37, but they're not too far ahead because St. Davis Catholic Secondary on 33 and uh, the GBSS on 30. So one, two, three, uh, still tight, very tight there, but still early days. I anything can change because we're not really starting to get into some finals. So a, a lot can change there. But just to bring you up to speed, those are the scores, the latest scores that we've got. And, and as you said, it's tight because a seven point difference between first and third. But Jason, when you look at it, one race in the individual category is 10 points. So if a school is represented in one race and another isn't represented, that there could be a 10 point swing very easily. Um, as well, both boys and girls. So it's early days yet, but um, St. David seem to be establishing, St. David's and the girls seem to be establishing themselves, but it's very early days yet. So many more events to go, um, but St. David should feel very, very enthused and confident of the start that they have on day one, and I'm sure the other schools will be trying to figure out what next for day two and three. All right, the girls 1,500 meter senior, heat one coming up. Um, we're going to look out for that in just a little. Here they are. We've got uh, 15 athletes, 15 young ladies on the at the top of the start for the girls' 1500 meter senior heat one. What's the record in this event? What's the time to beat? Stephanie Ferguson, 449.90-2001. You think it's under threat? Based on what I've seen thus far, um, the athletes 20 years and 22 years ago seem to have been extremely good. Um, Neilon Ferguson, Stephanie, um, Neilon Noel, Stephanie Ferguson, they seem to have been the, the, um, the, the, the shining light or the lighthouse of um, distance running in Grenada. And so we probably need another generation of those to come. Um, I don't know if we have them here as yet, but um, they are not showing that they are able to um, accede to those high heights of times so far. Let's hope this surprises us, Jason. All right, so I take that as a no. <laughs> so heat one of the girls' 1,500-meter senior run. good support uh, for the students, uh, from the students, good support for the athletes from their fellow students. Uh, the numbers are small, but uh, you wouldn't notice that from the, the background noise that you're hearing from the atmosphere that's coming to you. The numbers are small, as you can see, but um, they're loud. So when we get to the start of day two, when we're expecting a much larger audience, and then probably day three, um, it could be pandemonium. Um, we don't want to let any, we don't want to tell you, you, you're, still, you're still missing out if you're not here. But um, the, the real story is that's what's going to happen. It's uh, heading up to 5 o'clock, uh, a few minutes away. We've got a commercial break. We're going to wait for the queue from our friends over on the production side because we've got a commercial break to take. But I just want to remind you that the 55th Intercore Games comes to you compliments uh, uh, Republic Bank, title sponsors, Republic Bank, Grenada Limited. Yep, they're the title sponsor, sponsors and uh, associate sponsors are Flo, George of Huggins and Company, the Grenada Breweries Limited, Saul AC, um, our friends at uh, T&R Communications. And uh, we are in for excitement at the end of day one. Joseph Cador is uh, standing right behind me. He's going to come and take us through right after the commercial break. He's going to rally this uh, uh, broadcast to the end. So Joseph Cador is there. Uh, he had himself a long rest after uh, a huge lunch. And uh, he's going to come and take over. In the meantime, some separation on the field. Good afternoon to all those of you in beautiful Spice Country viewing the broadcast on a pay-per-view. Those of you who spent the entire day at work and uh, sneaking a peek ever so often because you, you bought the pay-per-view and you have it on your, your tablet or your, 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 your phone or wherever. And uh, 
you were enjoying it. To those of you who bought it secretly and not letting the boss know that you were looking at the Intercore games, good afternoon to you as well. You did a fantastic job because you got through the day. Uh, let's hope that you get the day off so that you can either come down or you can continue to purchase the link for days two and three and continue to enjoy uh, the broadcast here from the beautiful, sunshiny Spice Island of Grenada, home of superstar Kirani James at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium. Okay, so we're entering into the penultimate lap, and you have the athlete from St. Joseph's Convent, St. George, Boca Secondary, Grenville Secondary, and Happy Hill Secondary. They actually separated themselves from the pack, and this time, this is Destiny Padmore from the St. Joseph's Convent, St. George, and from the Boca Secondary School. Um, it more than likely is Kedona Mark or Alana Charles. We've got to see 2,300. Um, we'll find it out in a short while, but... Happy Hill Secondary School has now taken up the running, followed by St. Joseph's Convent, St. George, followed by the Boca Secondary School, and then the St. David's Catholic Secondary School, or St. Joseph's Convent, St. Andrew. Um, All right, so uh, we're heading closer to 5 o'clock. Don't forget we've got a commercial break coming up because, of course, we've got to remember to pay the bills. The bills keeps us on the air. Joseph Cador is ready. And uh, a little bit more from Davis Adams. And then it will be Joseph Cador. And uh, not too long after that, Bernard Antoine will join him. Is it Antoine or Antoine? So it is St. Joseph's Convent St. George. Um, Belgrave. She looks extremely well poised, comfortable. With the final 80 meters to go, St. Joseph's Convent, St. George. I think the school on the hill is proud to be able to see how they athlete really powering down the home straight and taking up the position, taking up the first hit in this first of two hits. So it is St. Joseph's Convent, St. George um, coming in comfortably in first position, followed by the athlete from the Happy Hill Secondary School, followed by Boca Secondary School, um, she comes in third and find the, find the fourth spot is taken up by, well, if she crosses the line, it would be St. Joseph's Convent, St. Andrew. Um, again, not a quick race for sure, over five minutes, considering the record in this event is um, four minutes 49. So um, it was a slow race, but nonetheless, it was... Nonetheless, it was very competitive, very competitive. So um, this is turning out to be a very good Intercall Championship 2023. Uh, just an update on the point standing. Welcome, brother Joe. Well, thank you, my dear old friend and colleague, <laughs> Davis Adams. <laughs> Indeed, it's a pleasure joining you here and the rest of the commentary team. Good afternoon to you, wherever you are uh, participating in this live coverage. Wonderful. Just good having you once again, um, remembering those good old times. Yeah. And back after four years. <laughs> We're here doing it all over again. <laughs> yes. You were uh, giving us some points update? Yes, let me give some points update. Um, let's start with the girls' division. Um, I think the St. David's Catholic would be in a good stead at the end of day one. At present, out front is the St. David's Catholic Secondary School performing as we all expect them to, Joe, on 64 points, followed by the girls from Tantine Anglican High School on 31 points. Right. But as you do say that, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna put a hold on that. We see the... So just let you know that there we have to have a commercial break that is set at the top of the hour. That is just in just about three minutes. So we can just, we'll take the points round up and then we'll take, we'll take a commercial break. Correct. And Anglican High School on 31 points. St. Joseph's Convent, St. Andrew, 19. Um, Bishop's College on 16. Boca Secondary School. Just beautiful to see Boca Secondary School in the hunt. On 14, St. Joseph's Convent, St. George in 6th place on 13. In 7th, St. Andrew's Anglican Secondary School on 9. J Hillsborough Secondary School, 8th on 8. And tied with J.W. Fletcher Catholic. In 10th position, Happy Hill Secondary on 6 with Wesley College. In 12th position, St. John's Christian Secondary on 4 with McDonald College. 
14th and 15th is Westerholland 2 and St. Max Secondary on 1. In the boys' event, much closer picture here, and which is what we always love. Um, really tense battles before as we get ready for the start of Heat 2, of Heat 1 of the boys' senior. Um, out front, St. David's Catholic Secondary School on 51 points, Joe. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is really interesting but both boys and girls st david's catholic secondary school in the boys division in second position second position is st andrew's anglican secondary school on 41 and the tantin outfit grenada boys secondary school in third position on 36 points and then you make up the places going down grenada christian academy in fourth on 18.5 mcdonald college fifth 15 boca secondary uh, in sixth on 12.5 Presentation Brothers College on 11 in 7th, Happy Hill Secondary on 9, and Westerhall, Westerhall Secondary on 6, and St. John's Christian Secondary on 5. That's the point standing after, um, so far into day 1. Point standing through to event number 62 down here at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium. Intercall 2023. Uh, the Republic Bank in the call that is. We are due for commercial break items, but we are going to take it after we go through the race that's about to, to, to run off. Event number 60, 60, 64, and that is the boys' 1500 meters run. The record, we're also going to make way for the man himself that's to take us through the rest of the afternoon. Thank you, Davis Adams. Um, Master Antoine is going to be joining us on uh, the commentary team. But there's excitement here down here at the Kimani James Athletic Stadium as we stretch into um, the latter part of day session two, day number one, Intercall 2023. Uh, and reminding you that this production is facilitated by TNR Communications. Getting ready, next event on the track, event number 64. Um, Antoine, the boys' 1500 meter run, the game's record, three minutes, 57. Um, second setback by Kendall Simon back in the year 20, um, 2003. We'll see how this one, how this one pans out. Um, we, 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 we got a little taste of update on the point standing. Your thoughts? The, the, girls, the girls competition is, is not as competitive as we thought it would be. Because St. Davis Catholic Secondary School is way out front with 64 points. However, in the, the boys category, it's a little closer. 51, 51 points again, St. St. Davis Catholic Secondary School and Sass is on 41. These, these points can be caught up quite easily with one victory here, one victory there. So it is yet early days, uh, but certainly I think folks are probably going to have to measure and gauge the excitement as to how they go through, um, they expend it as we go through day one and even on day number two of Intercall 2023, 20, Republic Bank, that is. We get a set for next event on the track, event number 64. It's the boys' 1500 meters run. We got Philip, Joseph, Alexis, Linton, Fabian, as for some reason, you notice there's been a lot, there's a lot of jitter, the anxieties, but races that traditionally you don't find. They tend not to be false starts for some reason. Um, you're getting, you're getting a few of those today, though. There is Alexander, Hilaire, Bernard, James, Williams, Blackett, Alexander, to make up a field of 15, Antoine, for the boys, 1,500 meters. Yes, and this, again, very well represented here. And this has been a feature of today's running. And they're off. They're going to do, they do four laps around the track, 1,500 meters. And the boys, 1,500 meters, early days yet. Um, you making any early, er, er, any early predictions? No early predictions in this one. Um, the, uh, the last race actually turned out to be a real doozy at the end. <laughs> <laughs> so no, indeed, 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 uh, no, indeed. no predictions yet. And, and it's PBC up front. Uh, followed by, looks like Boca Secondary. The numbers you can't make, but it seems to be Boca Secondary in the pursuit of Desron Williams. Uh, the presentation Brothers College out front quite early. Um, Antoine Blackett 
and we'll see how the rest of the field pans out as they continue on the little the little Tuesday afternoon trek around the Kirani James Athletic Stadium. Boca out front quite early in the person that's of Blackett. That's Williams, sorry. PBC out front making it early. Blackett out there. And he, of course, the rest of the pack trailing in, trailing behind. Sass is there as well. Devontae Hiller, he's also in there. Let's see, 1,500 meters. It's the boys. And if you manage, you need a final event, so as we, you can start tallying them as you go ahead. But in case you're just, you're just joining us, it's St. Davis Catholic out front early in both of the boys and the girls' division. So it's PBC followed by SAS and GBSS, happier secondary. Yes, it's Blackett, Hilaire, out there, right there, from J.W. Fletcher, represented by Nick Bartholomew. So that's the three, the top three. Although PBC is Antoine Blackett, is sort of pulling himself away. But it's Blackett, Williams, Bartholomew. As he has opened up about 25 meters lead right now, Blackett has. The question is how deep is his, his, his resolve? Does he have the strength and what it takes to carry him home? 1,500 meters as we stretch late into the afternoon. Um, a few events left on the cards. And I guess by virtue of the late start, we'll see exactly how we progress through the rest of the evening. But McDonough College in fourth position looks quite strong. Nice, steady strides as he has overtaken the athlete there from Happy in secondary. So and now here comes, here comes Sass. Sass, Devontae, Devontae Hilaire. He slipped, he's just of course overtaken the lead from PBC's Antoine Blackett. So Hilaire, Blackett. GBSS now coming in into the view. Colin Alexander. Also in there, McDonald College's Nathaniel Fabian. That's the top four. As they take the bell lap. As they head to the 300 meters, it is still Blackett. Blackett is in there. As the country to throw up down the backstretch, Devonta Hillier. Here comes is the Western Hall secondary. Western Hall secondary trying to make a surge. That's Elon, Elon Alexis. Who is going, who has enough depth and merit? They have the metal to dig deep to pull this one out. Presentation Brothers College, that's Blackett. But coach inching up, as they get, inching up on his shoulders as they head towards the 200 meter mark. It is Nathaniel Fabian. Fabian from McDonald College. Alexander. But it's a toss. Let's go. It is presentation by the scholars. GBSS, McDonald College. Antoine Blackett trying to make a pullback on it. Uh, McDonald's College. Fabian is easing up. He seems to be suffering some sort of injury. But pulling up as may have nipped him on the line. There from the Grenada Boys Secondary School. Colin Alexander. Uh, but unofficially, unofficially, it's Blackett from the Presentation Brothers College. And there's a question to ask on the line. Uh, that's between... Um, Fabian and B Fabian and Alexander on the line. Excellent run there. It's quite a good run and very tactical it seems to from Antoine Blackett. Uh, um, we, we, we would have had quite a few lead changes in this one. Uh, again, testimony to testimony to what has been happening all day. You there's no clear favorite right at, right at the start in some of these races and this was one of them. Antoine Blackett did start in the lead and he finished in first position, but twice within that race he was he was in second position. Well, I can promise that you can promise the you the audience that the seesaw um, is going to is going to make his way deep into day number three. In case you're assuming it is just something that's prevalent on only on day one, it's, there's going to be no shortage of it as we're going to wait to the official results. So it's four minutes, twenty-eight point three. 
three, six seconds. Some aware of from the game's record of three minutes, 57 seconds flat, like Kendall Simon. And, and that was in 2003. So officially, it is Blackett. Um, Antoine Blackett of the Presentation Brothers College in a time of 4 minutes, 28.36. Colin Alexander from the GBSS, 4 minutes, 30.62. And Nathaniel Fabian of McDonald's College, 4 minutes, 30.64 seconds. Rounding on the top three in event number 64, the boys' 1,500-meter run. Um, and that was, that was the first of two sections. So that was in section one. And now we get ready for section two. We're going to get section two. It's going to come up in, in just a bit. Uh, let's just give you the lean assignment. Well, not lean assignments, but the, the principles for, the, for section two. Forsyth from St. John's Christian Secondary. Holas for PBC. Smith for Wester Hall Secondary. Charles for St. Rose Modern Secondary. Lane for Hillsborough Secondary. Felix for GBSS. Matthews for Bishop's College. Happy Hill Secondary represented there by Renny Frederick. St. Davis Catholic is in the mix. Jadon Williams. Morell represents J.W. Fletcher. Sass is represented by Zaid Douglas. There's Nikel John for McDonald's College. St. Mark's Secondaries. Alex Bartholomew is in the mix. And for Grenville Secondary, Joshua Cadet. A field of 14. 14, and back again. Great representation right throughout all afternoon. All day, in, in fact. Great representation. So that Heat or section number two of the 1500 meters boys, 1500 meters boys senior section two. Let's see how this one pans out. D section two, day one, Republic Bank Intercall 2023, coming to you live from the Kirani James Athletic Stadium and the place that we call home. Others just call it this, the Isle of Spice. We call it paradise. Thanks for those of you just joining us via the live feed, facilitated by TNR Communications. Always one of those showcase um, events, 1,500 meters, um, boys or girls. And in 2003, the record was set in this event, as I said, at 3 minutes, 57 seconds flat. Let's see how they're doing this one. Indeed, Antoine. We'll see how this one pans out as you stretch into the evening right here at the q and James Athletic Stadium. We see the feather banners, they fly the flailing in the wind in the back, not excessively, um, but just, of course, reminding you that of the sort of breeze and sort of environment that exists here, the presence of the boys of the presentation by this college, St. Julius Convent, section of the school contingent that we anticipate is going to grow as we head into deeper into the games. Well behaved today too, I might have. No, not much to misbehave about. <laughs> <laughs> they are not clearly identified as favorites in this one coming in because there are no real times given here. So on paper, all equal, let's see how this one goes. We'll see how it goes. Again, keep in mind that Davis Catholic Secondary, they've made the early surge in both the boys and the girls division. In 64 and 51 points. Um, if we go with tradition, um, Joseph, we would, look, we would look at McDonald College, Nickel John. McDonald College usually represents very well in the middle and long distances. Middle distances. We await the start. It's official, the start of the, the boys. Second batch, 1,500 meters. 14 athletes, four laps around the track. The first section was won by Blackett of the Presentation Brothers College. We see McDonald College's Nickel John taking the early lead. We'll see whether or not your reference to tradition holds through or somebody is going to throw a spanner into the works. But early days yet. McDonald College, GBSS. Happy Hill is in there. Wesley College is in there. Hillsborough Secondary is in there. Represented. 
by Gershon Lane. And let's see how this one pans out. We've learned to be quite modest and moderate in our callings. These middle distance races takes a combination of speed, tactic. The question is, Antoine, it's not just about having a game plan, but it's also being able to execute. Execution. Execution. Send Saint Rose Martin secondary is doing a good running in this one. They have been quiet so far for the day. A quiet storm. And they are also known for the middle and long distances. So it's it's McDonald College followed by Saint Rose Martin's secondary. Into call, stretching deep into the evening. Section session two, day number one. The Republic Bank Games for twenty twenty three it's into its fifty fifth year. In third position is is Grenville's secondary. All three schools traditionally do very well in the middle and long distances. McDonald College and Rosemont in secondary and Grenville secondary. Sass is in fourth position. And now coming up in fifth position is Westerhall's secondary school. We'll see how it pans out as they continue to motor along gingerly, conserving energy, maintaining positions, keeping the stride and the form in place as they make their way down the back stretch again let's see the approach in the 200 meter mark it is mcdonald's college nickel john that has taken the early lead also in there with him from st rose modern secondary it's roman charles charles if you just joining us we say thanks for being part of the of today's event, day one, session two of Intercall 2023. We feast in our eyes at present on the boys' 1500 meters. How does this one pan out? Now, here. that's the bell lap, Antoine. Here comes Granville Secondary School at the bell, taking that's, the lead. That's Cadet. Cadet moves into first place. He's followed by St. Mark. St. Mark Secondary, Alex Bartholomew, McDonald College, Nicole John is there. Cadet, John, Bartholomew, following in that order, Grenville Secondary, St. Rose, more than secondary. That's Romel Charles, my apology. They continue to play that tactical cat and mouse interchange of positions. Yeah, but as they make way for the 200 meters mark, the 100 meters mark, that is, it is McDonald's College, Nikhil John. John separating himself from the rest of the pack. Um, St. Rose's Charles is there. And GBSS, uh, that's Javon Felix is coming into the mix as they head home. Um, McDonald's College is almost saying, catch me if you can. Catch me if you can. Um, but quite a decent run there. They, I mean, we, we saw what we've seen there is a question of execution, tactics. Um, and we'll await the, offic the official results. A very strange way to end the race at McDonald College. Now, now someone, someone need to pull this young man one side and tell him, finish the race, run through the line. You have to. I'm not sure exactly what the intentions were. Um, complacency, I'm not sure. I'm really, oh, maybe it's, maybe he was suffering some form of in, maybe some form of discomfort now that wasn't obvious to us. But he came to the, the top of the 100 meter mark quite comfortably. He started to accelerate to make his final, to his final thrust. Um, there's a bit of a grimace on his face. And he sees the pack is coming. He's looking back. And I thought it was more initially that of catch me if you can. And you would think, maybe, I'm not sure, he could get onto the line. Well, just about. Just about. Just about. So victory there for McDonald College in the person of Nickel, Nickel John. Second place on officially was the Grinder Boys Secondary School. Um, secondary School. And Romel Charles for St. Rose Modern Secondary. Filling, take, excuse me, taking the third spot. Um, Joshua Cadet for Grenville Secondary in position number four. Jay Smith for, Bish for Bishop's College for Booker Secondary in a time of four minutes, 38.38 .38 seconds. So that was 
Section two. Section two of the boys, 1,500 meters run. Of the boys, 1,500 meters run. Senior. Have a look at a look at a cross section of the. It's always good to see the mixed expressions, <laughs> as you look as you as you you look through the arena. Always a mix of expressions and body languages. Yes, we're reminding you that simultaneously there is also action in the discus as well as the javelin and that's taking take taking place so i hope you of course you got you were getting an appreciation of the coverage that's being brought to you multi multifaceted coverage um, and allowing you to get the appreciation of the different events that's taking place here at the Kiran and James Athletic Stadium. Kisses being sent, mixed faces. I can well imagine. What I'm happy to see, though, as well, is the strong presence of the Royal Grenada Police Force on day one. It is obvious that they've left nothing to chance in terms of ensuring the safety of the students and the patrons. Um, they have been quite visible. They have been quite a visible, and the visibility sometimes is, the, is probably the, the best deterrent. Yeah, there they are. They continue to make their presence felt and certainly want to maintain the high standard and quality. It's because safety, certainly, and the Games has a rich history of while they deliver on the track of ensuring the safety of the patrons and, and each and every one that attends uh, attends a game. The only thing I remember a bit of this, a bit of a, of a, of a tr border in my mind, though, I've seen a lot of the athletes, um, not just at Intercall, from, from, from a few of the other sports meet, where they seem to collapse in. And the end. yes, I know a lot of the, the, the meets are 1,500, they, they're tiring, but you'd assume, you'd assume reasonably that they're prepared for it. But I'm not sure. It, it, it's a question of um, regular comp competition, really. I, I think that's what it is, regular competition. It's, it's not as easy as riding a bike, as they would say. They, with more competition, one becomes more ready right. and, and able to cope, with, um, to, to cope with the stress and strain of... Training is one thing. Right. Competition is, 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 is a whole different... It's a whole different sphere that one enters into. A lot of it has to do with this, this psychological intent, really, in, in, in competition. And sometimes that in of itself would add to the, to the tiredness, add to the fatigue, and so forth. But you want to say, of course, the, um, the weather has been gracious to us in terms of sufficient cloud cover, so they don't have the direct assault of the, of the, of, of the sun? It's another beautiful day in paradise. And if you uh, if you are looking at us, pay per view. If you are looking at looking at us um, away from the Caribbean, this is normal weather for us. So this is good weather. This is good weather, and uh, it has been like this all day. In fact, because there was some, somewhat of a cloud cover earlier, uh, the the intensity of the heat was not as it was forecast to be. And so you, you could have seen even with, on the bleachers. The young people who were on the bleachers, they, they, there were no visible sign of, of stress and strain and much umbrellas and so forth. So we, we have had a good day. We're going to take our, our attention down to field side. We'll be getting ready for the start of another medal presentation ceremony. Five minutes, 28.21 seconds. Silver medalists. Shania Nelson, Anglican High. Five minutes, 26.81 seconds. And your gold medalist, Annalisa Brown, Boca Secondary. Five minutes, 07.62 seconds. Event 60, boys, 1500 meters, sub junior. Bronze medalists, Rogel Cummins, McDonald College. Four minutes, 53.20 seconds. Silver medalists, Robinho Phillip, SAS. 
4 minutes 51.33 seconds. And your gold medalist, Keith Charles, Grenada Christian Academy. 4 minutes 36.72 seconds. Event 61, girls, 1500 meters, junior. Presenting your bronze medalists, Keisha Williams McQueen, Bishop's College. Five minutes, 47.85 seconds. Silver medalists, Rihanna Smith, the JW Fletcher Catholic Secondary, Five minutes, 44.42 seconds. And your gold medalist, Alien Kid Harry, St. David's Catholic Secondary, a time of five minutes, 39.31 seconds. Event 62, boys, 1500 meters junior. Presenting your bronze medalist, John T. And Noel, St. David's Catholic Secondary, 4 minutes 35.04 seconds. Silver medalist, Nicholas Frederick, Boca Secondary, 4 minutes 28.64 seconds. And your gold medalist, E.J. George, St. David's Catholic Secondary, a time of 4 minutes, 26.62 seconds. Event 63. Girls, girls, 1500 meters senior. Presenting your bronze medalist, Kaydonna Mark, Boca Secondary, five minutes, 41.48 seconds. Silver medalist, Francesca Henry, McDonald College, five minutes, 37.84 seconds. And your gold medalist, Amaya Samuel, St. Joseph's Convent, St. George's. Five minutes, 27.68 seconds. We can back up to event 27, girls, short put sub junior. Here's your bronze medalist, Soria Charles, SAS. Eight. Actually, we moved to event 20. We moved to event 20, boys, discus throw senior. And uh, your bronze medalist, Ashar Date, representing SAS. 32.55 meters. Your silver medalist, Elisha Williams, St. David's Catholic Secondary, 33.58 meters. And your gold medalist, Tyron and Twine, also representing St. David's Catholic Secondary, 36.52 meters.
We move now to girls high jump senior. Bronze medalist, Jemmy Neptune, Anglican High. One point four five meters. Silver medalist, Kayla Williams, St. Joseph's Convent, Grenville. One point four eight meters. And your gold medalist, Aaliyah Gid Harry, St. David's Catholic Secondary. A height of 1.56 meters. We can move now to boys, 1500 meters senior. Announcing your bronze medalist, Romel Charles, St. Rose Modern Secondary. A time of 4 minutes 30.51 seconds. Silver medalist, Kyle Victor, GBSS. 4 minutes 29.38 seconds. And your gold medalist, Antoine Blackett, PBC. 4 minutes 28.36 seconds. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the end of this medal presentation. Thank you so very much. The Honorable Andy Williams, Minister for Mobilization, Implementation and Transformation. So we just came to start the end of another medal presentation ceremony being facilitated by the Minister of MIT, um, Andy Williams. And certainly um, you can see and to end the excitement, the joy, the expressions of, you know, just appreciation of having come. They came, they participate, pitied, and they have been rewarded, Julie. Oh, most definitely. And uh, on the evidence that we have seen today, uh, the, uh, the medal presentation just now would have, would have demonstrated that in part. St. Davis Catholic Secondary School, they, they are doing quite well, both the boys' division and the girls' division. In case you would have just joined us and you need to have an idea of how the points are scored, uh, here they are. For first position, it's 12 points. For second position, it's eight points. Third position is six points. Four, five position for fourth. For fifth is four points. Three points for sixth position. Two points for seven. And once you make the final, you get a point for your school. So it's, it goes from 12 for the winner to one point in the eighth position. So the points are stretched down the table. So it means well, what needs to be done is understanding the points table and continue work with the strategy of continually picking the points as you, pro as you, pro as you progress. As Absolutely. You and, and there comes the importance of... We talked about that this morning, the importance of finishing the race. Once you enter the finals, in an eight-person final, you finish the race, you get a point for your score. Indeed, indeed, indeed. You have to make sure that you take, the, you take the fight right to the end to ensure that you give your team, um, yourself, the best possibility of winning the goal and give your team the best possibility of amassing maximum points. The last point standing that we had, I, I wanted to point out... Um, how well this small school is doing, the Greater Christian Academy. Uh, in the last point standing, we, we, we had sent, this is in the male section, we had St. Andrew's Anglican Secondary School with on 37 points, and St. David's Catholic Secondary at 33, and GBSS on 30. But in the fourth position was Greater Christian Academy at 18 and a half points. Well, we're going we, we, we're gonna to dissect our way, our way through the points table table it in just a bit uh, but we we look at action has continued on the track um, let's just make sure we 
put this one into perspective where we are as we take the lane assignments. Hillsborough Secondary School, lane two, Keshwana Rogers, Sass. Lane three, Leticia Williams, Sass. Lane four, Andean Courtney. Lane five, Destiny Langang, AHS. Lane six, Shamari Joseph, SJCSS. Lane seven, Denisha Scott, St. David's Catholic. And lane eight, Talia Dayson, St. David's Catholic. So Those just, were the lane assignments for event number 33, the Heptathlon Girls 200 meter dash open. So the lane assignment for the event number 33, the Hept 200, the 200 meters dash, and persons need to appreciate that these are multiple discipline ev events, and the athletes they amass points as they go along. So the strategy: some athletes they have strength, they have their strengths and weaknesses. So there is always a, a question of, of course, where they are in terms of points. They, 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 they take the amass it in, in areas of strength, and they allow themselves to ensure that they at least compete and make it through. So the head, the girls, 200 meters dash open. Absolutely. Bristol, yes. Rogers from Sass, Williams, Courtney, Langine, Joseph, Scott, and Descent as they await the status orders. And they are off, nice clean, even, even start as we look at, at the center from St. David's Catholic, running out of lane number eight, of course, trying to make an early pull at it to both athletes from lane number, from St. David's Catholic. But it's Anglican High in the middle of the pack in terms of Destiny Langine. But it's from out of lane number seven. It is Scott running out of lane number seven that's going to run away with this one for St. For St. David's Catholic Secondary. And um, that's Denisha Scott for St. David's Cath Catholic Secondary. Um, she's crossing the finish line in the first position and certainly and again as you said while well, she's, she's won in the hept to appreciate it athletes their mass points so as you look at the replay they took the, the, the 100 meter spent quite nicely as uh, caught out of lane number seven anglican high out of lane number lane number four um you also had bishop's college they went out of lane number six but it was an eventual win Put it away for number seven, um, Scott. On lane number six at the St. John Christian Secondary School. The, 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 the for those of you that are not fully informed, it's, 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 it's ran over or it's competed for over two days. It's a multi, it's a multi-discipline event, seven disciplines over two days. And as we wind down for day number one, I think this is the last event for the day for the HEP. They, they would continue. They would continue into day two. They would continue into day two. I think we have Sherry somewhere down on the field that we're trying to make a link up with her. There she is. Go ahead, Sherry Ann. Okay, so we're live here now with Amaya Samuel. Amaya is the winner of the 1500 meter senior girls. We did it in a time of 5 minutes 27.68 seconds. Um, speak to us ab about the uh, strategy for that particular race. Yes, it was just uh, in that way, okay, start off good, get a good couple of times, and then know when to kick off, time the race properly, do what I need to do. Prior to running the race, you told me to look out for you in that particular event. You ran, you kept close to the first two positions, and at the last hundred meter, you just separated yourself. Yes, that was a that was a plan going in. That was a plan going in. It was just to keep a good pace, time the race well, kick out when I needed to, and execute fully, I guess. 527.68. Um, is that your best time in the 15? No miss. Um, it was 5.23, 5.25. That was that was my best time. I mean, I could have done better in this race, but it's okay. I did well. Is it that if you had more of a competition, you thought you may have get 5.23 or less? That could be, that could be the case, yes. So what's next for you on, on the tracks in day two and three? Miss, miss the 800, the 3000, the relays, 
just to go there and do my best yes, yes. in those distances. Yes. Thank you very much. We are speaking here with the winner of the, the 1500 meter senior girls, Amaya Samuel, the student out of St. Joseph's Convent, St. George's. Thank you, Sherry, and thank congratulations to young Amaya. She has quite an active schedule, to, I mean, to fulfill there. Antoine. You tend to get an overload when certain institutions. <laughs> when the participation among the students is not as it, as it should be. So you get one or two good athletes and they are just scattered. But she coped well. I, actually, that, that was a pretty good run by, 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 young, um, by the young lady. It was, a, it was a very good run. It seems to be tactically done. Well, what we just see there, um, shot put, and that's in, yes, the girls shot put. It's quite a large field that they have to filter. They have to filter through. Ah, but certainly, we would hope for, for the purpose of time, time management, that we could get through quite a number of those uh, events. So the next event on the track would be the OCT, the 400 meters for boys, and in lane number two, Caleb Lane, in lane number three, Rhonda John, Jared Stafford, in lane number four, Aviel Junior Williams, in lane number five, and Cade Lewis from the descent of his Catholic secondary school in lane six. Four, athletes, five athletes in this one. We're looking at the short put athlete from the Anglican High School. The Anglican High School, they have two athletes in there. Okay, the short put is loaded. Quite loaded. It's 29 athletes registered here. And we can only assume, Antoine, that for the purpose of managing time as to avoid any wastage, or necessary, that is, delays, that you would see um, quite a pickup of speed advancing in the, by the officials in the field because we've gone past, um, it's almost nearing 6 o'clock as it is. So... So we await the start of uh, the 400 meters for boys in the up as well. That's from that would be heat one or section one of two. Yes. There are two sections in this one here. And while that is happening, we have the high jump for senior boys. That's ongoing. And we are looking on, on screen now. We are looking at the short put for sub junior girls for the girls sub not sub junior but junior girls junior girls and i think once we do we do that i think that would interest closer to the end of the end of play the end of the events of day one but certainly we continue to monitor the events right here and say and say thank you and welcome to those of you that be has been an active participant in today's exercise the 55th edition of the Republic Bank Intercall Games uh, coming to you live from the Kirani James Athletic Stadium from downtown St. George. And indeed, um, we enjoy and bask in the glory of what we call home in the picturesque Kirani James Ath Athletic Stadium. We become an envy among many. Who would have imagined? We, we, we have, we have, and it's, it's, it's not a bad position to be, especially as a small island nation. When you are being envied for good qualities, it's actually, it's actually quite a welcome thing. 
it is a well it is indeed a welcome thing so we're looking at the discus shot put, shot, put. shot put sorry that's the girls that's the juniors shot put we also have in the oct for the boys the 400 meters dash and we have the boys and the girls so certainly that's the lineup that's the lineup so the 400 meters open in the octathlon for the boys and then there's the individuals 400 meters dash in the junior girls and in the junior boys now we are going to close the day today with these 400 meters with yeah probably a bang finishing so at 400, 400 meters so we are getting ready for action on the track and we look at the lane assignments lane two Caleb Lane for the Presentation Brothers College occupies lane number two. Rondell John, Boca Secondary is in lane two. Jared Stafford, GBSS, Williams for SAS occupies lane four. And nestled in lane number six, it's Cale Lewis for St. Davis Catholic Secondary. PBC, Boca, GBSS, SAS, St. David's Catholic Secondary. As you line up for the next event on the track, event number 34, and the minor you do that's in the Octathlon for the boys. Um, we'll see how this one prevails. And I know most of the athletes, um, they're probably just going through the motions because indeed it has been a rather long day for them. Grueling day. <laughs> Grueling day. But they've had the luxury, though, of the blessings of, of nature, or the cloud cover. So at least they have not had to endure the direct blast of the of the sun because we know that by itself can of course does that will take the wind out of you we just saw their successful jump um we're going to give you the details Rick. but before we do that we go into the boys the 400 meters boys of Thotland, as they continue to pick up point size they go along antoine pvc boca gbss sas san david Let's see how this one pans out. He, he, section one of two. Section one of two. Let's see how it pans out. As they get a clean start, clean start indeed. As they motor down the back stretch, running, we see an early lead there by by Sass, Aviel, Aviel Williams, out of lane number five. He's motoring away, literally going licks and bites all or full throttle as he heads down the back stretch. Uh, GBSS is there by this time. Um, that's Jared Stafford, uh, but is the athlete from SAS, Williams. That is literally as he approaches the top of the 100 meters bend. It is Williams. Williams is he's been chased by Stafford. Stafford from the GBSS and stretching him also is Randall John from Boca Secondary. Let's see how this one pans out. Williams, SAS. Jared Stafford, GBSS, Rondell from Boca Secondary. Sass, GBSS, Boca Secondary. And that's the final call from it. It is Williams, Stafford, Rondell, John of Boca Secondary. Fine run indeed. Uh, there from start to finish, the, that race was run with particular intent. From the young man from Sass. Uh, he must be conscious of what his score is going into the, into this race because he was determined he was. to finish in position number one, but or rather to get a to get a, a good time. So he, and it's the last event of the day for him yes. for today. So he laid everything on the line. So that was Ariel Junior Williams of SAS. So we see the official time: fifty-four point four five seconds for for Ariel Junior Williams. From Sass, Jared Stafford from the GBSS, 54.61. Randall John, um, Boca Secondary. Lewis from St. Davis Catholic. And Caleb Lane from the Presentation Brothers College. I think what has this done for him, it gives him in his mind, not, we're not sure exactly where he is, we confirm that. But it gives you sort of emotional edge. You tell yourself, it's the last event of the day. I want to go into my slumber tonight being at least being appreciative of the fact that I give it all on the final on the final event of the day. Let's go track seven for the lane assignments of section two. The way you do the lane assignments. Let's take it in. Lane 
So we have another five athletes as we do the lane assignment. Edmund, Hillsborough Secondary, Fleming, Bishop from Boca Secondary, Newton from GBSS, Cox, St. Davis Catholic, Lewis out of Sass in lane six, and we have for Happy Hill Secondary, um, Sheen Lett. The lane assignments for the upcoming event, Happy Hill, Boca, um, Bishop's Boca Secondary, GBSS, St. Davis Catholic, Sass, Happy Hill Secondary, Section 2 of event number 34, the boys 400 meters dash in the art. That's their final event of the day and certainly they want to be able to go into second day having a pretty good appreciation that they have done, they have represented and they have given it the all Antoine. Yes, come, come back and take a good rest tonight, come back fresh tomorrow and start it all over again. Start it all over again indeed. As you stretch you see the shadows starting to, to stretch across the uh, the face of the arena but Lena Simons Hillsborough Bishops College GBSS St. David's Secondary SAS Happy Hill Secondary your Lena Simons for event number 32 section 2 of that event the boys 400 meters dash in the octathlon it's their final event of the day as the well the applause that you hear in is it's for let's get ready for the next event So is the heat two of the 400 meters, the boys up and they are off quite an even, clean, even start. Uh, let's see how this one translates itself as they make their way down the back stretch. Let's see, SAS is in there, GBSS is there, Happy Hill Secondary is there, SAS is also in there. Let's see how, how this one pans out, again it is heat two, the boys 400 meters dash, final event of the Octathlon for them. As we continue to monitor them, Happy Hill is on the outside and that of Let, but as they make it into the home stretch, out of lane number six, it is Lewis, Lewis from, from Sass, that is more terrain away. Um, Happy Hillsborough is secondary, is trying to make a comeback out in lane number two. So too is Fleming from, um, from Boca. It is Fleming from Boca that is literally has he came out of nowhere Fleming he came in there Fleming came, came in there from Boca Secondary School to nip it on the line we await the official results but what we just saw there was the completion of each two um, of event number 34 event number 34 in the boys Atotland Atotland and which is in fact their final event of the day yep. You can you could actually sense the stress and stream in this last and final day's event for for these young men, uh, but that's a pretty good run by Boca there. Pretty good run. So we look at that is Fleming, Shermer Fleming, Fleming, a fifty-three point zero five, and, and again a respectable time. Quite a respectable time as they continue to pick up points. Um, on this for this is final event on day day one and going into the day two I mean having an appreciation that they have li literally extended themselves well on day one as we they go into an evening of rest in the cold day number s session two day number one and certainly has been a really 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 great day thus far we've had the threat of rain and has presented itself at random times but nothing to be alarmed about nothing to be in, in fact i don't think anybody moved <laughs> he tried but but we called it bluff 
<laughs> we call we call him Bluff. The next event on the track uh, would be event number 47. That's the girls 400 meters sub junior. Event number 47, 400 meters girls sub junior. We are getting into a series of 400 meter finals now. First, it will be the sub junior girls, followed by the sub junior boys, the junior boys, the junior girls, followed by the junior boys, and then the senior boys and girls. That series of 400 meters that's coming up to bring the curtains down on the track for the day. We still have a num uh, one or two field events yes. ongoing, so that will continue to, to their completion. But we, we provide you the lane assignments. Bishop's College, out of one. Convent, St. George is in lane two. K. Olive, McDonald College, occupies lane number three. Brown for um, Walker Secondary, runs out of lane number four. Henry for the Anglican High, occupies lane number five. Nestled on a, outside in lane number six is Modest for the Anglican High School. Two there, that Anglican High in, f in five and six. And Walcott for St. Joseph's Convent, St. George, is cradled in lane number seven. And on the outside in lane number eight, it's Shamara Noel for St. Joseph's Convent, St. Andrew. The lane assignments for the upcoming event, event number 47, Antoine, at the girls' 400 meters dash. It, it should be a very competitive one. The athlete coming with the best time in, into this event is in lane number four from the Boca Secondary School, Alicia Brown in, with 59.29 seconds. That's, she's wearing a uh, black bottom and a gray top. So look for the running in lane number four. That's Brown for Boca Secondary. Again, as we await and we seem to have had a scratch in lane number five for Henry from Anglican High School. Uh, that lane is vacant at this time. Indeed, the lane's vacant. So, we await the status orders. Event number 47. The girls' 400 meters dash. As we continue deep into the Session two on day one of Intercall. All eyes as we look on Brown. Of lane number four. Happening simultaneously is the high jump. The shadows continue to stretch. And what has been a relatively cool day. Um, nothing to worry ourselves about in terms of that the hot sun bearing down on us, on them that is. But we await. The girls 400 minutes dash is a final. Bishop's College, Convent St. George, McDonald College, Boca, Anglican High, Convent. And they are off. It's a nice clean start to so the girls' 400 meters dash. These are all final events. So let's see how this event, how it, how it pans out. We're keeping our eyes on Brown in the middle of the pack. Also in there, you have Anglican High School is there. Convent St. George. How is this one going to play its, itself? A convent St. George is also out at St. Andrew. Running out of lane number eight. That is Shamara Noel. But here comes trying to reel things back in, running out of the middle of the pack from as she went in there with the best time as we continue to monitor, see how the race unfolds. It is Brown from Boca Secondary as she hits at the top of the 100 meter mark, quite comfortably and in charge with it. On the outside in lane number one from Bishop's College, it is Sen Bernard. But we continue to watch the race as it unfolds down the middle of the pack from Boca Secondary, literally. A race all by herself as she running away as she hits the tape right now. It is Young Brown, as we anticipated. You called it right, Antoine? With the form book, uh, Brown did a slow time this uh, in the finals here. She, she ran at 59.29, get into the finals, but it was relatively easy run. 
not much of a competition from, from about what 80, 80, 80 meters 80 or so. meters out Disappointing, though? You, you thought it might have been a little bit I more thought competitive? Was, I thought it was going to be much more competitive based on the times that everybody came, came in with. But of course, uh, it's late in the day. The young ladies are obviously, obviously tired, exhausted, and they must have, some would have had a number of events, not just this one race. So that, that, that in itself can be, can be expected. But uh, with the form books, it's, it's brown. Officially, it is it is it is Brown, and she she wins the gold medal, and she wins. She goes into day two with the bragging rights of having won her final event on the day, and uh, she and that she has won the four hundred meters. We look at the the time, Brown, a minute zero one point one one seconds. Saint Bernard from Bishop's College, a minute zero three point one eight, and Shamara Noel of Convent Saint Andrew, uh, that ran out of lane. On the outside lane, um, one minute zero three point two four. And up next on the track, with the boys' version of of, of the of this race, the four hundred meters sub junior boys. Coming in with the best time is from PBC Ethan Auguste. Ethan Auguste at fifty four point seven five seconds. We expect this one to be pretty close, pretty even. Stevens after Ethan Ethan Auguste fifty fifty four point seven five. All the other times are this day and there about fifty uh, sevens and and so forth. So the the lane assignments: Albert from McDonald College, Jal Mac from McDonald College, Keston Bailey from St David's Catholic is in three. Ethan Ogis Ogis from the Presentation Brothers College occupies lane number four. Cradle in lane number five from the GBSS. Kamal Joseph, Daniel Deleron John is sits next to him on the outside, his outside shoulder. In lane number seven, um, for Sass, Christoph Kellis, that's two for for Sass, that's in there. Um, sits, occupies lane number seven, and Keon Jackasal of the Presentation Brothers College is in lane number eight. Two from the Presentation Brothers College, two from Sass. This one sets itself up as quite a mouth-watering, appetizing one, and we'll see how it pans itself out as we go deep into the evening. Session two, day number one. I can I get the sense that Adams has his own has his own take on that. Jason is probably trying to measure himself, not to get a little bit too overly anxious. Yes, but we called it quite early when we saw the qualifiers that we did say that the four hundred, the finals. This is going to be, be this is going to be good. A real cracker. Yes, this one especially. The times are so close in here. This is going to be a good one. McDonald College is in one and two. St. David's Catholic is in three. PBC is in four. GBSS is in five. SAS occupies lane six and seven. And PBC also runs out of lane number eight. Two McDonald College. Two PBC. Two SAS. Let's see how this goes. Well, it's literally, it's literally St. David's, PBC, SAS, GBSS. <laughs> That's the way it's going to unfold. Let me get some predictions from Joseph here. Let's see the form book. The form book actually states true. Let's see. There's a gentle hush, that sense of anticipation. Let's to get the final instructions. Albert. Jaldu, Bailey, Ogis, Joseph, John, Kelis, Jackasau. Boys, 400 meters dash. Event 48. It's a nice clean start, and everybody's up and off as uh, the final event. Of course, final 400 meters dash in the sub junior boys. As we see them as they motor away down the back stretch. Uh, there is John from SAS, Christoph uh, Kellis from SAS as well. Let's see how this one pans out from the presentation Brothers College. Running out of lane number number eight, Ogi Jackasal is there. Let's see how the race unfolds as they head to just about the 200 meter mark. As they, they come through the top of the 100, we're looking at the outside, McDonald College. Um, Jaldu is on the outside. Jaldu is on the outside. We have 
from Sass. Christoph is on the inside, but of course, you're looking out of lane number two. It is Javid Jaldu, but of course, look, you have PBC's, he, um, PBC's Ogis is trying to make a pull. Oh, well, there on the outside. Uh, <laughs> I think we all may have probably may have probably forgotten that he was he was he was participating in the race. Sass, uh, that's Delaran John came in there on the outside and very quietly quietly <laughs> he crept up he crept up on them. We'll wait for the official times on this one. I mean, we did say it was going to provide some some excitement, and there was no shortage of that. No shortage. The, the rain. The race. For some time, was just in the middle of the middle of the track, and then Sass moved up so nicely on the outside. Well, there you have it, the the official time. Um, Christoph, as you say, literally snuck up on him, um, snuck up on them. Christoph from Sass, 55.44. Jaldu from McDonald College, 55.64. August from the Presentation Brothers College, um, 55.73. Um, Joseph from the GBSS, 56.92. And you have. Um, Jack Asal from the Presentation Brothers College, 57.32. Then you have um, John Bailey and Albert taking up the rest of the position. Of a minute, one minute, 0, 1.23. A minute, 0, 2.53. A minute, 0, 9.25. Disappointed or did it live through? No, this is, this is, we thought it was going to be close. We thought it was going to be competitive. It was all of that and more. Because it was a surprise. I got the sense, though, it seems to have a bit still befuddled. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, Joseph, I'm, I'm going to hand off to Adams and uh, listeners, viewers. I'm going to. This is where I take my exit for the day. I'll see you tomorrow. Scott's willing. So we just saw the, fi the final day of the boys um, 400. We continue. We're moving through. We move to the. The opposite number now, that's the girls 400 meters dash in the same similar distance. We look at the lane assignments as provided for us. McIntosh, Anglican High runs out of one. Abigail Williams from McDonald College is in two. Kamali Phillip runs out of three for St. Joseph's Convent, St. George. In the middle of the pack, Shafonia Houston for Anglican High School. Noel for St. John's Christian Secondary occupies lane number five. Sabina Lewis for Grenada Christian Academy. Peter Spanchu for McDonald College. And Kamaya Tellisford for St. David's Catholic Secondary Adams. The lane assignments for the upcoming one. This one. It's going to be good, Joe. I can assure you it's going to be good. I saw Shishwanya run a uh, four by four um, relay leg. And she destroyed the competition at National Champs in a relay. And should she bring that form with her, I, I, I believe it's going to be an excellent race. And should she come first, I would not be surprised. But should another one beat her, they would have brought the best, which is what we want anyhow. So it's going to be a good race. And I'm looking forward to um, excellent time. Well, the anticipation is ripe. The atmosphere is red. We are ready for it. For those of you that's home, I know you're probably sitting at the edge of your seat as you wait for the unfolding of this event number 49. All focused as it gets into the pre race rituals. Anglican High, McDonald College, Convent St. George, Chiffonia Houston, out of lane number four, Noel, Lewis, Panchu, Telesford. And they're off. Nice clean start. Nobody's going willing to call it yet too early. It is yet at early stages in this one. St. David's on the outside. You have Panchu from McDonald College. Christian Academy, as they pro they make their way down the back stretch, too early yet to call it. Who is it going to be? But of course, everybody's keeping their eyes on the middle of the pack out of lane at number four for Shavonia Houston as she gets ready for character games. Is she going to hold true to form as Adams has predicted, or is there yet another twist in this plot? But from all ends, what we've seen is an easy one. Um, it is Houston from the middle of the pack, and uh, that is just holding, holding a. Ho Holding her own, not much of any competition for her. I think it's an easy, easy, easy walk in the park. Uh, where we can probably decide to throw up a coin toss for. It's for second, third, and fourth. And quite an easy win. Good 70 meters win there for her. We're looking at Phillips from Convent running out of lane number three. And you had 
Um, Noel for St. John's Christian Secondary taking in position number four. But unofficially, it is your girl, um, Shifona Adams. Then. Yep. Uh, not surprised, actually. I, I looked at her run in the past, I, and she looks pretty good. She has the power. She has the speed. She has strength. Um, once she gets a farm <laughs> doing better than what she's doing at this time, then I suspect Shefone has a world ahead of her. Um, her time is just, I mean, she just blew them out of the waters, 57.50. The next person is 61.53. Um, and that's an excellent time for Shefonia. Um It shows you that she's head and shoulders above her competition at this time in the 400 meter dash girls junior. And we're looking forward to great things from Shefonia. Indeed we are, as we go to the official timestamp, 55.50 for, for hosting. Um, one minute, 01.53, second place for Philip from St. Joseph's Convent, St. George. And we had a young Noel from St. John's Christian Secondary, a minute, 03, capture, completing the top three. And it's always happy when you see schools, some of the non-traditional school perennial contenders like um, St. John's Christian Secondary and those schools making their way into the mix items. Yes, um, for me, th those are the things I like to pay attention to. Those Davids, as we would call them, who have been just there or thereabout. And so when you look at Grenada Christian Academy, Boca Secondary, St. John's Christian Secondary, um, when I see them, I feel pretty good about the fact that these schools can also produce St. Mark's Secondary. And, and so that is why I am very happy when I see those smaller schools coming forward and really showing that they've got the same talent. As we move to the boys 400 meter dash, and we have in the finals, um, in lane number one, Quanell Peer, GBSS, Aiden McIntosh, PBC, Killon Moses, St. David's Catholic Secondary, Ethan Sam, GBSS, Nicholas Frederick, Boca Secondary School, Anson Aberdeen, St. Mark's Secondary School, Randy Jones, Bishop's College, and Jurel Clement, um, Hillsborough Secondary School. So we see Two schools from Karako Pity Matnik in the finals also. Um, we've got to look out for um, athletes like Ethan Sam of GBSS, who has been doing a tremendous amount of work and running really good times um, over the last couple of weeks that we have seen him. So we're really looking forward to seeing those guys do their best. And we're looking for good times. So Pierre, McIntosh, Moses, Sam, Frederick, Aberdeen, Jones, Clement, Bishop's College, Hillsborough Secondary School. How this one pans out. Event 50. As they await to these status orders. Pierre, McIntosh, Moses, Sam, Frederick, Aberdeen, Jones, Clement. This one promises to be a cracker of an event. The boys 400 meters dash it's final and it's a clean start guns loaded and off and we see look at how this one on fours Boca secondary St. Marks Sam Moses let's see how this one is going to unfold we have Aberdeen in there from St. Marks secondary running out of lane number eight from Hillsborough secondary we have Clement Clement, but we look at the middle of the pack. Let's see how this one unfolds. And this one we did say is going to really, really create a bit of a, a, some serious turns and twists as they hit the 100 meter mark. They come down. It is Ethan Sam in the middle. Send Moses from St. Davis Catholic Secondary. But of course, he's almost like separating the men from the boys. It's an easy win there from Sam of running out of lane, out of lane four. Moses from St. Davis Catholic took the, took, took the second place. But this one, it's a sub-50, Joe. I mean, it's a brilliant time. I mean, it's, an, it's a, a wonderful race by Ethan Sam Let's just take the replay. Let's just take the replay here. Quite ease, poise, confidence as the race unfolds. I mean, being able to appreciate your positions, knowing where you are. Folks, he's ready for character. He is ready for character. I, I mean, if there's one thing I can critique, 
in the race, Joe, is the fact that he allowed on the final bend for himself to be cut behind and then having to make up the ground on, the, on Moses in front of him, which I think is a slight strategic error that he made. Because should he run his bends well, I, I think the time would be even better. So there's some bits and pieces to work out for him in terms of his training, understanding his finish. But I can tell you, Ethan Sam looks good, sub-50 as a junior, an excellent time return excellent. on time for him. And really, really um, looking forward to see Ethan Sam continue to grow and become what we would want him to be. A uh, victory there for, for young Sam from the Grenada Boys Secondary School. Sub-50, as we said, 49.52. Uh, Moses from St. David's Catholic Secondary, 50.15 seconds. Aidan McIntosh from the Presentation Brothers College, 50.36. Um, you have Quanel Pear from the GBSS, 50.85. We continue down uh, Bishop's College. Randy Jones, 52.91. And you have St. Mark's Secondary, um, Aberdeen. 59.47 and we can only assume that Clement did not complete the race. But it's good to see Bishop's College, Randy Jones um, really um, doing well. Um, Boca Secondary doing well. St. Mark's doing well. Um, but once again, the star of the race, Ethan Sam, GBSS, sub-50 and we just hope that he will continue to grow and, and, and do extremely well. He ran a controlled race. He ran a really brilliant race. Uh, as I said, if there's any one critique we can make, is allowing himself to be caught on the final bend and then having to press to, to get to the front. Um, once he walks out those little kinks in terms of strategy, um, the sky's the limit for Ethan Sam. Sky's indeed the limit. They're doing, um, delivering a sub 50 here in the, in the final. Uh, we ran number 50, the boys, 400 meters, 100 meters dash, 49.52. Congratulations, GBSS St. Davis Catholic, Presentation Brothers College, and GBSS in number four as we, com we complete it. So, so there you have it. We continue, of course, as we wind down the evening for you for the next event on the track. It's the girls' 400 meters dash that is on its way. That would be the 400 meters senior girls. Um, let's see. But certainly we, we, await the, we await the particulars on it, on screen, in just a bit. It's the 400 meters senior. Indeed, it's the senior girls. Let's call it. Lane assignment. Rhea Flanders occupies lane number one. Henry, McDonald College, runs out of two. Gihari, St. David's, occupies lane three. Dominique, for St. David's Catholic, out of four. Shanti Augustine occupies lane number five. Roberts is cradled next to her in lane number six. Um, Harris, Happy Hill Secondary, lane number seven. And running on the outside of lane number eight for the Anglican High School is young Philip. Who wants to call it? Are you big, bold, brave enough? This is going to be an excellent race. Um, we know the quality of Shanti Augustine, but the St. David's outfit has been doing extremely well. Both Dominic and Githari. And I suspect that this is going to have a pretty good time um, coming to the end. I'm looking forward to seeing that race. We know Shante has been one of the athletes that have uh, excelled at both primary level. Um, of course, we had the COVID um, interference. And now we're back and I'm hoping she's healthy. Let's see what, if we can get the best out of her. But Aliyah Gidari and Kenisha Dominic will have to say, will have something to say in this race. They are going to challenge. They are going to run. St. David's outfit, they don't give up one single bit. They're well coached, they're well uh, managed, uh, they're well advised. Um, they have it on the track. That is St. David's outfit. So let's see how it's going to pan out at this time. We get it. It's a sort of clean start. As the, the, it's a start of the seniors girls. 400 meters dash. Flanders, Henry, Gihari, Dominic, Augustine, Roberts, Harris, Philip. As they make their way down the back stretch, taking an early lead out there. You see Dominique from St. David's Catholic Secondary still in the mix. Shanti, Shanti Augustine. How does she respond? You have Roberts from McDonald College also in there. Oh, let's see how this one pans out. 400 meters dash. Is this one going to be a taste of a tale that brings a different twist to it? Well, you have out of lane number four. It is 
from St. David's Catholic. It is Dominique that is literally running away with it. She's also chased down. Um, it almost seems, but here we come. Is there another twist to this one? Is there another twist out of lane number five? Shante Augustine. And there's a hush. There is a hush. Now, somebody wants to tell me what did we just witness here? A ju a just a brilliant race, Joe. I Antoine mean, still seems to be in, in, in a daze. Yeah. And, and actually, I'm not surprised. Let's, let's, let's just take a look at the replay. I mean, just under 80 millimeters to go, you would have thought at least that Dominic had this race all but covered. Steady, composed, and she just shifted into a different gear. Grenada, I think, into call. I think this is what is special ab about this meet. So we look at the official time. At the official time, Shante Augustine from St. Joseph's Convent, St. George. She stopped the clock at 58.82 seconds. Gihari from St. David's Catholic, 59.14. Flanders, that's Rhea Flanders of the Anglican High School, a minute 03.12. And you had Henry from McDonald College, a minute 11.81. Shante she seemed at one time as though she lost her way and then as though somebody got she got a touch by the, a, a magical wand and there she was and she just powered her way from about the next 50 or 60 meters yeah. but joe i mean shanti ran a controlled race and i think that's what stood out for her uh, she didn't exert herself too much so she had enough to come through to the finish i think what happened Gidari and flanders the not Flanders, not Gidari and Augustine, um, Gidari and Dominic, they really pushed it out. And I think they knew who they were running against and they thought that they would run her out of the race. But she came back, she controlled the race and she produced the finish. I mean, in the times compared to the record, not what you would want, you'd want it to be a bit lower because in record at the 400 for that race is still 54 plus by um, no other than Kishara George all the way in um, 2001. But nonetheless, it shows that Shante is, still has it. She still has the potential to do extremely well and with more training, more coaching, I suspect those times will go down. And maybe we may just see Shante um, going much further than Grenada as she continues her, 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 her career in we, track and field. We're getting ready for some more fires, fire on the track. Let's see, as we stretch late into session two, day number one, it's the boys, 400 meters dash, seniors, lane assignments, lane one, Kyle Victor of the Grenada Boys Secondary School, DeAndre St. Louis, J.W. Fletcher occupies lane number two, Elisha Williams from St. David's Catholic. Uh, he runs out of lane number three. Sylvester for Sass is in four. Alexander for Grenville Secondary. Peterkin, that's Tegan, Thomas, and Hostin. The final lineup. GBS, that's J.W. Fletcher. St. David's Catholic, Sass, Grenville Secondary. Another one, Peterkin, McDonald College, Happy Hill Secondary. Yeah, this race is going to be good too because we know the quality of Peterkin. We know he has... Um, excellent 400 meter uh, um, quality um, but the athletes from St. From Sass and St. David's Catholic they are going to do well and they're off it's a nice clean start Peter King in lane number five followed by Elisha Williams of St. David's Catholic Secondary School but it is Victor in lane number one it is St. Louis J.W. Fletcher Elisha Williams St. David's Catholic let's see going down the back straight the athlete from GBSS it is Tegan Pitekin, he's looking pretty good, but the athlete in lane number three, that is Elisha Williams of St. David's Catholic, is also giving, doing the running, so it is Pitekin. It is Pitekin straightening up around the bend, and he's in third place, Sass in second. Um, it's Pitekin, it's the athlete from St. David's Catholic Secondary School, that's Elisha Williams that's going to win it. He's going to run through to the end, so it's, it's St. Elisha Pitekin. Peterkin St. David's Catholic Secondary. Tegan is in third position. And the athlete from SAS, that is, um, can't recall the name, he's in second position. But a good run from Sylvester. the athlete from St. David's. You know, if, if I had my own way, 
it would have been easy for me to call it a little school. But following through from what I saw at National Champs, how um, in Williams, Elisha has been delivering. I mean, certainly, he ran an excellent race, and I'm not surprised. The guy's a monster. He's just big and strong, and, and he's running extremely well. When I looked at him at National Champs, I saw the quality. And knowing that Peterkin is no slouch, I, am, I actually am not surprised as to the result that the athlete from St. David's Catholic as well, that's Elisha Williams. Well. This gentleman has tremendous potential, and I'm looking forward to seeing him doing well. 48.05, 48.32, 48.84, tremendous time for seniors. I'm here in Grenada, and we are looking forward to them dropping those times. Well, as they grow the, and they develop into the craft, you certainly would appreciate as time progresses that they will become better at, at their trade. So it's a goal for um, Elisha Williams. I don't think many would, would have any issues with that. Um, it's goal for Elisha Williams for St. David's Catholic Secondary. Sylvester in Sass from Sass, 48.32. Tegan Peterkin from the Grenada Boys Secondary School, 48.32. 8-4, and we continue to highlight the fact because uh, if the persons um, Antoine was sharing on that, understanding the point system and how you gather points accumulatively as you go through the meet items. Yeah, and, and in the individual events, it's 10 points. Right. And, and that's quite a lot of points. And I think second position is 8 or 6 um, um, for and the... And Trent is going to furnish. But yes. it's important when you, you watch, you, you look at the dynamics. And sometimes you can see it. So you may have, we, as we, as we, uh, and Trent is going to, going to furnish us with it. But if you, you get athletes into the final, it is possible you get that while you may not necessarily at any given time win an event, if you continue to pick up points as you go down with two or three with two athletes, you pick up a second place. Correct. A fourth place. Correct. You would realize... <laughs> The, okay, how is it? I can't remember him winning a race. I can't remember them winning gold medals. Mm -hmm. But the idea is that participation, get your athletes out there, mass participation. So that's 12 points. Four more um, than, than in second place is eight. Third place is six. So you find, and then you have points go right down right to down number the eight, the eighth position. So once you come eighth, you get a point. So once you make the final, you're guaranteed. So the more you have into the final, you are guaranteed to, uh, to have points. But <laughs> we cannot lose sight of the fact that Elisha Williams has done a tremendous job. 48 or 5, we would have liked to see it go under 48. Nonetheless, there is the potential. He's big, he's strong, he has form. He has speed. He has all that it takes for a tremendous 400 athlete. Look at his size. He reminds you of um, Rondell Bartholomew. He reminds you of Kirani James. He reminds you of Dylan Felix. The size. They're big and strong. Indeed, quite an excellent performance from, from him uh, to wrap up events on the track. Uh, there's still action on the field. Uh, we have the long jump that is still in action. The high um, jump. High jump, sorry. We still some, we're supposed to, it's about just about 6.30, bordering 6.30 here, um, the Kirani James Athletic Stadium. Um, some, I think, all things considered, and I'm, I'm probably, probably looking to get out of here by at least maybe the next half an hour, we probably hope. But your thoughts, though, at home? Um, the day has the day one was managed well let me say it this way i first and foremost is the product the fact that intercall athletic championship is back so the fact that the product is is, is back i am happy i'm also very very happy with the with the quality of broadcast that's going out from grenada to the world um that for me again is another um, tremendous achievement, a plus for Grenada, the quality that we're able to produce. And then let's go to the competition. Having not been there for the last couple of years, what we are seeing is the athletes are slowly, um, with repetition, they are coming back. And I believe better times will be, will be in store for better times next year. The, the, uh, the organization has been pretty good from what I see. Again, what we have available, replays and, and slow motions and and um, so we're having everything that we think that the outside world alone will have, Joe. So, all things considered, Intercall Athletic Champ 2023 is indeed a success. 
But we end this meeting, we're going heading down to Sherry in just a bit with an interview in the waiting. But what we are fallen to be looking at here now is the high jump. Um, that's into it's the latter stages. We're not able to get confirmation from um, the team on the, at the bottom, Sherry and others, as to exactly where uh, exactly the competition is positioned. A field attempt there. Um, St. John's from Christian. I, more and more, I can keep saying, you've, we've seen the presence. I don't want to say the emergence because they've always been there. But you've seen the presence of some of the non-perennial contenders that's making the way to the fore. We've seen St. Mark's. We've seen, we've seen we've got a couple occasions. We've seen St. John Christian Secondary. McDonald College has been a perennial contender. We've always known that the GBSS, the SAS, the Presentation Brothers College, um, it would be just good to see you. Um, Day one as it is, we'll go through the summary later on as we go. We look at another an attempt here, quite a decent, excellent attempt here from the GBSS. Um, like I said, it is late, in, late into the evening, and Adams, and you know that the, the GBSS contingent, the, I mean, all schools always come and come to support, but there's some schools like the, they walk, it's like the, 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 the English, the cricket, they walk with the, the army. It doesn't matter, Joe. Yeah. Win, lose, or draw, the, uh, GBSS is there, yeah, there with their support the squad, contingent. with their contingent, with their whatever you call them, they are there no matter what. So come win, lose, or draw. We expect GBSS to be loud, to be energetic, to be excited. And that's what I enjoy about the GBSS outfit. Of course, um, the other schools, St. David's and the Anglican High School, there's a pride that goes with following. And so it's really nice to see them even coming to the end of the day in such high energies. Indeed, the energy has been there and continues to exert itself um, late into the evening. That's day, day one, session number two. Um, again, we continue to see the presence of the Royal Grenada Police Force uh, provide an excellent exemplary service in terms of security. I'm not sure if that was... It's almost like he went... Went back old days, old yeah. school, the scissors. <laughs> yeah, I, but I, I, I got the sense, though, that he probably he opted for it at the last minute. You got the sense. <laughs> yes. You know, he opted for it at the last minute. Yes. But it's good to see these athletes, these young athletes as they are... Um, Applying the trade, we have an attempt from the athletes from McDonald College. Uh, we will attempt to get the height for you that they are attempting. But these athletes, I mean, certainly, it's been a long day as we're getting ready for another medal presentation ceremony at somewhere in the making. And there's an Sherian also has an interview as we get ready to pull the curtains down on day two. Day one, sorry. Intercall. Excellent, excellent, excellent. And that's the athlete from the Westerhaus Secondary. So far, we've seen two athletes um, go over the high, GBSS and Westerhaus Secondary. Um, so we can see they can rest until the height goes up again. The they others would have to make another try. And it's interesting, these sort of track, tr track events, um, field events, you know, it can take quite a while, eh? If athletes, when they get in, into the groove. But what we get in, we get in ready for, it's a medal presentation ceremony that is in train right about now. And the presence there of our Olympian, Aline Francique, to assist. Double Indo 400 meter champion. And of course, coach of world champion. And 100 meters. We back up to event four, boys long jump junior. Bronze medalist, Randy Jones, Bishop's College. 4.10. So that's bronze medalist. We move to silver medalist, Kyle Ned Sass. 6.22 meters.
And your gold medalist, Michael Campbell, GBSS. A distance of 6.33 meters. We move now to event 22, boys javelin throw, sub junior, bronze medalists, Roy Jean Charles, Hillsborough secondary, 39.70 meters. Silver medalist, Caleb Alexander, PBC. 46.76 meters. Your gold medalist, Delron John, uh, SAS. 51.69 meters. Event 47, girls 400 meters sub junior. Presenting your bronze medalist, Samara Noel, St. Joseph's Convent, Grenville. One minute, 04.71 seconds. Silver medalist, Monticia St. Bernard, Bishop's College. One minute, 04.85 seconds. And your gold medalist, Annalisa Brown, uh, Boca Secondary, 1 minute 01.11 seconds. Event 49, girls 400 meters junior, bronze medalist Maya Noel, St. Joseph's Convent, St. John, St. John's Christian Secondary, 1 minute 02.04 seconds. Silver medalist, Camille Phillip, St. Joseph's Convent, St. George's, 1 minute 01.53 seconds. And your gold medalist, Shafonia Houston, the Anglican High. A time of 57.50 seconds. Event 50, boys 400 meters junior. Presenting your bronze medalist, Aidan McIntosh, PBC. 50.36 seconds. Silver medalist, Keelan Moses, St. David's Catholic Secondary, 50.15 seconds. And your gold medalist, Ethan Sam, GBSS. A time of 49.52 seconds. Event 51, girls 400 meters, senior division. Presenting your bronze medalist, Rhea Flanders, the Anglican High. One minute, zero three point one two seconds. Silver medalist, Aliyah Gid Harry, St. David's Catholic Secondary, 59.40 seconds.
Now it's time for your gold medalist, Shante Augustine. St. Joseph's Convent, St. George's, 58.82 seconds. Event 52, boys, 400 meters, senior division. Bronze medalists, Tegon Peterkin, GBSS, 48.84 seconds. Silver medalists, Joshem Sylvester Sass. 48.32 seconds. And your gold medalist, Elisha Williams, representing St. David's Catholic Secondary, 48.05 seconds. This is the end of this medal presentation. Thank you very much, Mr. Lean Francique, OBE. Mr. Francique, double Indo 400 meter champion. He's also the coach of a world champion, just saying. Congratulations and thanks for being here today. Just to back up to event 47, girls 400 meters sub junior. Bronze medalist Samara Noel, St. Joseph, St. John's, St. Joseph's Convent, St. Uh, Grenville. Samara Noel, St. Joseph's Convent, Grenville, a time of 1 minute 03.24 seconds. Silver medalist Monticia St. Bernard, Bishop's College, a time of 1 minute 03.18 seconds. And your gold medalist, Annalisa Brown representing Boca Secondary, a time of 1 minute 01.11 seconds. So there you've had it, the end of another medal presentation ceremony as we go late into day number two, number one, Jason, and certainly as we're getting ready to wrap, it has been a really, really exciting day. Highs and lows, the mix and the unfolding of, of what is going to be a really excellent um, uh, two more days of intercall. Yeah, well, I think the stage was set from earlier on, from jump. Um, yeah, we had a late start, um, at just about 60, 62 minutes. But um, really and truly, it, it turned out to be an awesome day. We had one record being broken. Um, the conditions were absolutely perfect for more records to be broken, especially in the track events, the longer distance events. Um, that didn't happen. Some of the times were really pedestrian. But um, I think a lot of it also had to do with the anticipation and the excitement of day one of uh, the, the return of intercore games in its full glory um, so I think a lot of that had to do with it and then of course the fact that uh, these athletes are still you know excited about you know come getting in and getting into the competition many of them it, it would be their very f it would have been their first intercall championships right so um, it, it's not that they they were here before you know so uh, but but generally I would tell you that um, all things considered, we had a really good day. Um, we had our challenges, but um, you wouldn't know because we got through it and we got through it smoothly. Um, yeah, so that kind of sets the stage for what is going to come on day two and day three. Um, we look at the point standings and uh, we notice uh, the, the more dominant schools out there in front as usual, but um, with the, the points that can be gained from events as you go through the next couple of days, it, it's still, still really wide open. It's still too difficult to call, you know, to see, well, you know, this is going to happen or that is going to happen. It's still too early to call. And you continue, you continue to see that sort of seesaw in, in, terms of, in terms of position. The day started off one way. But before we get to that, though, let us, if we can, just spend the time on uh, the multiple disciplinary e events, the HEPT and, and, and the OPT, and the reception that it has received from most of the schools on island? Yeah, well, I, I tell you what, um, these, these events in particular, um, folks are growing to learn and growing to love these events now because 
um, with Grenada being placed on the map and what we're hearing a lot of Kurt, Felix and Lyndon Victor, um, it has brought some level of awareness of these longer um, events, so to speak. Yes, yeah, so the anticipation is there. Folks know about it now. And then the, the younger ones are more um, eager to get involved in it. And that augurs well for, for the development uh, of sports. The disadvantage that we may have here in Grenada is that we're a smaller nation, so we've got less people participating, which means the, the competition pool is going to be a little bit smaller, which means it's not going to you know, have as much push from athletes. The, comp the competition is, is going to you know, be compromised just a little bit. But when you do get one or two coming through, it is going to be a good one or two. So generally, um, these longer events augurs well for, for the competition, yeah? We talked about the anticipation that it is ripe. The excitement is rich in the air. It is rich in the air. Uh, but do you have any, any concerns? I have a hint of it regarding some of the fitness, where these athletes are in terms of the fitness and, prepar and, and preparedness? Yeah, well, um, we, we've seen fitness being an issue um, with the, the junior and the, some of the senior athletes in particular. And you could understand why. Being a senior athlete in Intercall means that you've got to balance athletics and academics, right? Because now um, Form 4, Form 5, you, you, you're studying CXC, preparation for CXC and all of that, and you have to balance that with training. So fitness will always be an issue, um, taking into consideration as well that um, training was not as on the front burner right. as it should have been, especially coming out of the COVID-19. So we are here now that. with uh, John L. Mitchell. John L. is the meet director. Um, we're just about wrapping up day one. Um, in terms of, of the events, we see, saw some 27 events thus far. We still have the high jump and so on um, on the field. Um, just up, how did you think today went, day one? Um, despite the minor hiccups that we've had, I believe that we've seen some high po good performances coming out from our athletes, both on, on the track and on the field. Um, one of the challenges, though, we've noticed, and I believe it is something that we have to look at moving forward, is to probably doing heats for some of our middle distances, like the 1500 meters. Um, we've noticed that we had some, in some cases, 40 something athletes registering. But because um, of our set schedule that we've already made and the deadline for our entries, that in itself kind of hindered us in, prepare, in early preparation for that. So moving forward, it is something that we're gonna look at. We were able to finish, yes, just within an hour or so of our, our time. Um, expected well maybe about an hour there after the time we wanted to finish with the track but I believe that all in all we've had a, a good day and um, I'm expecting greater things tomorrow on the track and both on on the fields we saw uh, a, earlier on in the day the breaking of the the record in terms of the senior girls I'm, I'm discussing so um, one of the concerns though was um, the run sheet in terms of how the events w were placed are you satisfied that the way the events were structured for today, that it ran off the way that you wanted it to? I, I believe we did. Huh? Outside, as I said, of some of the minor glitches um, that we've had, what we need to, as I said, look at is um, putting a number of measures in place next year, please the Lord, because there is nothing that we can really do about it currently. So when it comes to probably setting standards for entry or having a qualification mark, so all of these things, we will lessen on the numbers going forward. So we'd have top 12 qualifying after they've made that standard mark. So it's a number of things that we have to look at. I believe the way the program was set, um, that things were executed well. It was in the benefit of the athletes and the, comp the coaches themselves, they, they were in tune with what's happening and they complimented the fact that most of the athletes were getting enough rest between events. So I, I think it is something we have to um, consider going forward as to how we best structure to get better um, gains in, in the meets. Um, and as we wrap though, just, just, just a quick note on what to expect in day two. So on day two, we have the finals of the 200 meters. We have the 800 meters. That's in the, in the, um, on the track. Also, we have a 3000 coming up. Likewise, we continue with the octathlon and the heptathlon and uh, some other major field events coming up in all of the categories. So we anticipate a good day of events tomorrow. 
Thank you very much. We were speaking there with the meat director, John L. Mitchell, giving us a little insight as to what happened in day one and what's to come in day two. However, we're going to go back up to our commentary team who would, you know, take you through the final events and wrap today's program. Well, thank you, Sherry, and thank you there to the director of the games. Um, your thoughts, you've listened to him. Um, I think they've done relatively well, barring what we, 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 we highlighted, the delayed start. I think day one, Jason, went re relatively okay. I give them a, a, a 70. I, I can't say anything more than what um, Mitchell has said. I think Mitchell really said it all. Quite excellent, excellent, sets a tone. So here we are. Day one is almost but it ended. We're waiting for, of course, the athletes, different, just the final wrap. But your general thoughts, though, in terms of the highs and lows and some of what made day number one, um, Jason, what it was. No lows, if you ask me. All highs, really and truly. Um, the athletes came out. The, the restart of Intercall, as we know it, three days of competition, all highs. Um, athletes coming forward, giving their best, all highs. Um, a syndicated broadcast, a pay-per-view broadcast, all highs. So I, I have no lows on today's event, really. Um, all highs. And I think from tomorrow, God's willing, moving forward for the next um, 48 hours, we will go higher. Give me your appreciation. 27 events today, one record. Uh, but let's touch on the addition of the para events. An excellent addition to the meet? Of course, always. I mean, para events uh, have uh, are taken over. Um, you know, they're getting their rightful place. Uh, the Paralympics, again, showing that, you know, they're right there, even with uh, the, the Summer Olympics and uh, the Winter Olympics. So th they've, they've, you know, been getting their fair share on the international scene as well. So um, I think what we're doing here now by making sure that they have a spot to at least showcase their talent at the Intercore Games, it is something that is long overdue, if you ask me. Any athletes, male, female, that's... Standout athlete, breakout athlete in, in, in your mind for day one? Um, no, not really. Not just yet. I think it's too early to call day one. Um, not really, unless somebody does something really exceptional out of the way. But uh, generally, I think um, we're going to see standout and breakout and, and the true definition of that from day two. Your thoughts? Set, set the tone, anticipation in full gear for us for an early start tomorrow? Yeah, um, we're looking forward to it, and I believe, uh, weather permitting, we're going to have that. Um, no real threat of rain from what I gathered when I looked at the three-day forecast. Um, yes, a little drizzle here and there. We may have some overcast conditions, but I think tomorrow is going to be a little bit hotter than today. So um, tomorrow is uh, going to be a challenge for the athletes. Staying hydrated is, of going, is going to be of paramount importance. As we go into the rest mode, what do you think is some of the conversations that can be coming from some of, some, from some of the camps? Um, go to bed, get a good rest, um, replace those electrolytes, and come ready for tomorrow. Go get, get replace some electrolytes, come ready for, for, for tomorrow. Um, certainly, it has been a really, really great day number, day number one. We say thanks to Republic Bank. We can't overemphasize, uh, Jason, the role that they have played in ensuring the success and continuity of Intercall. It is 55th year. Yeah, well... There's nothing more you could really say after that because uh, Republic Bank, they have shown their commitment, they've shown their continued commitment. And of course, we've got some other sponsors as well, some other partners as well, Georgia Huggins and Company, the National Lotteries Authority, Grenada Breweries Limited. Uh, we have Sol ECT and our communications. Um, yeah, so flow. So um, a lot of corporate Grenada is really showing up and showing out and showing off. Not just for the individual sponsorship of the games, but even for the different schools. They have established their presence. Of course. Yeah. Indeed, they have. It shows it only augurs well for the growth of the game, and it shows that corporate Grenada persons are getting an appreciation and understanding that in order for a track and field to grow, there must be some level of capital injection from corporate Grenada yeah. to ensure the success. Well, well, you said it all. Well, folks, there you have it. Um, the wrap on day number one. We're looking forward to an early start tomorrow. On behalf of the entire team, um, boy Joseph Cado, Jason, and the rest of the team, Mr. Adams and uh, Mr. Antoine, we say so long from the Kirani James Athletic Stadium, the home of Spice Country, Kirani James and others. Until then, so long, everybody. 
Have your family or friends ever needed cash now? But you are nowhere close to give it to them directly? With the cardless cash feature from Republic Bank Online and your mobile phone, it is hassle-free and convenient to send money to anyone, including yourself, using the Republic mobile app. Simply log into your account, access the cardless feature, enter the amount you want to transfer, and using the access code provided, the cash can be withdrawn instantly from a designated Republic Bank ATM without a card. Republic Bank Cardless Cash is convenient at your fingertips. To learn more about our cardless cash features, visit republicgrenada.com for more details. Special terms and conditions apply. Republic Bank, we're the one for you. Home is easy as one, two, three. Thinking about your new home? Think easy. Think a Republic Bank Home Easy Loan. Think affordable. Think convenience. Think Republic. Home is easy as one, two, three. Republic makes home easy. Wow, that was such a breeze. Own your home with ease. So whether laying that first brick or purchasing an existing home, we've got you covered. Republic Bank will get you those keys hassle-free in no time. Home is easy as one, two, three. Apply for a home easy loan today for a chance to win a cash prize. Getting your new home is easy with Republic Bank. Republic Bank, we're the one for you. Terms and conditions apply. Building or renovating your home or business? Why not use clean, renewable energy? Install solar panels to power your home and office and see your energy costs go down and your savings go up. Using renewable, solar-powered energy protects our environment, reduces our carbon footprint, and slows the devastating impact of climate change. Republic Bank can help to finance construction and renovations that make use of renewable energy. Visit any Republic Bank branch and ask about renewable energy financing options today. Republic Bank, we're the one for you. Have your family...